Hello, everybody, and welcome back to IESF 15th World Esports Championship. This is the playoffs of our Dota 2 competition. Winner's bracket round two, and boy, oh boy, do we have a good matchup coming up for you. It's going to be Myanmar, who defeated and upset the United States team. That's actually Nouns, a team that qualified for the international. And they're going to be going up against a red-hot Jordan squad who's been playing on fire. They, of course, took home a 2-0 to zero victory against Bulgaria in round one. Just some other bracket updates for y'all. In the loser's bracket, the United States did, did bounce back against Bulgaria. They 2 owed Bulgaria as well. Bulgaria is out of the competition. U.S. advances in the loser's bracket. But in the winner's bracket, we got some good matchups, and we're going to be kicking off with this one, as mentioned. Myanmar playing a really, really unique and different type of team composition and style. Playing against a Jordan squad featuring some top-tier talent like Afromoosh and others. Nonetheless, it's going to be a great matchup. My name is Fallout. Hope you enjoy the action at home, because guess what? we got two great casters to call the action, and it's my honor to throw it on over to my two good friends, none other than former Dota pro and one of the best analysts we have in Dota, Black, alongside the best presented himself. It's Vlad, a.k.a. Waxen. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you so, so much, John, for that amazing introduction. That is right, Fallout, telling us all about all the action that has taken place yesterday, Black. But we are here and we have Myanmar, the undefeated Titans. They are looking exceptional, maybe one of those teams that should have done well, but maybe not this well in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, truth be told, I casted them previously in Riyadh and they looked absolutely amazing. Not as amazing as they're here, obviously. So they, they, they've done a lot more practice together, a lot more synergizing together. The, their drafts look awesome. Their plays that look awesome. As I said, they're very aggressive. They really want to take over the enemy's map as soon as possible. And you can see in those games, like they get an advantage early, they build on that advantage, and then ultimately just end up the game. I'm really, really, really excited to see how much they, they can make happen in this series. Yeah, it will have to be against Jordan, a team that, despite losing one game in the group stage off-screen versus Mongolia, they are absolutely undefeated, unbeatable. They are a monster when it comes to stage presence. And we will get into the all 10 players and we'll look through the rosters in just a few minutes. But I've got to highlight Aframush Black so far up to me. If I would have to give the MVP to a single player halfway through the tournament, it would have to go to him. Afrobush has been one of the best post 4 players for a long, long, long time. Unfortunately, he hasn't found the international success that he would like to have, maybe. But a tournament like this, as we said, can always get you on the map. Maybe he'll find a really strong opportunity after this. But of course, first, he wants to focus on winning this. And they also have Mage, of course, exceptional mid player. His hero pool is very wide, but as you said, Afrobush is definitely like, he plays whatever hero is needed, makes it work, plays it very well. Yeah, especially those uh, Chen and Chen's picks we've yep. seen thus far. But yeah, we will get a bit later into the picks. I want to ask about the logistics because we are playing here during midday and Myanmar has had all of their games in the heat, in the heat of the moment during midday time, 40 degrees Celsius here in Yash. But because of that, we are trying to compensate and help the players by covering their screen so the sun doesn't blind them while playing. That tells me they are doing very well because they have not yet had to face the pressure of looking in the eyes of the audience while on stage. Yeah, I, honestly, I, 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 as, I, as I said previously, I always wonder how does a person, how does a player react to that, you know? Again, some people, they love it, they thrive in it. Other people, they get scared, a bit nervous, takes them like 20, 30 minutes to really warm up to it. Maybe even an entire game, you know, and then game two, game three, they... They, they suddenly level up again. But yeah, playing in front of a crowd, I, I've always loved it, and I hope they will love it too, because the Yash crowd has been absolutely amazing. Yeah, but it won't be the case now, as in the crowd is here, but they won't be able to see them still sun very bright here in midday. They might have that X-ray vision. They might use the scan through the curtains. That's right. Yes, yes. Unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, we are almost approaching the draft phase, and uh, I got to just get it out there straight, oh, straight away. Uh, I want to see first phase ban from Myanmar of the Chen and Ench, unless they have that first pick and they select one of those heroes. And oh my goodness, we are in it, and we are in it to already win it. And that's what we see. Chen being first bound by Myanmar, Ench still making it through the pool, but not being picked because... Jordan is opting to go for the Invoker Grimstroke combination. Oh, wow. We've seen Nature's Prophet for the first time in this tournament, too, at least on live stream. And that hero is very, very pesky. Earth Spirit again making a, another appearance as well. Nature's Prophet and Earth Spirit. Like, if Nature's Prophet just a piece middle, Earth Spirit rotates middle, it's an easy situation. Set up like a 3v1 gank, get some pressure on the tower going. I really like the Myanmar draft. As we said, very aggressive, very early game focused. And Jordan. 
Spirit Breaker, Grimstroke, and Volca. Spirit Breaker, obviously a classic counter pick to Nature's Prophet, even yeah. back in the days of Nature's Prophet core. This is not going to be a core AMP, but Spirit Breaker can still chase down that Ember Spirit. You want a remnant away, Spirit Breaker grants vision, a very mm -hmm. nice pick over here. And obviously, later on in the game with the Grimstroke Ultimate, you just used a double Nether Strike onto the, uh, the Grimstroke targets. But. Uh, Ooh. PA coming in. Jordan is already with a plan. They've had plenty of time to prepare for this series. Jordan has been waiting for this for over 24 hours. Yeah. But I also want to get back to the Earth Spirit that you touched on. Uh, Myanmar picked the Ember as a counter to Mage, but also pairing it with the Earth Spirit. I feel like over the last few days we've seen both of heroes being played, but in opposite teams, I don't think any team has paired them up together. Yeah, but it makes a lot of sense because Ember Spirit likes to be very aggressive and in your face, so does Earth Spirit. So reaching the backline with those two heroes together is really simple. On top of that, the Nature's Prophet ulti coming through, providing like three, four hundred damage as well. Ooh. More fling. Okay, so this entire draft right now is just pure mobility. Yeah, very, very, very dry. They are lacking a frontliner though, an aura builder, which is what we have seen yesterday, can be a very big problem because you can penetrate the enemy's backline, but how do you protect your own? And there are already some of these uh, aura builders being taken out in the dark seer, in the Dawnbreaker that could go for either of those builds. But um, going back, Jordan banning the techies, and you might wonder why that is black. I don't know if you are aware of that, but Myanmar is one of the two teams here yep. that does run the techies, mm -hmm. and they have won every single game, so they are somehow finding success with this hero. Techies is one of my personal favorites to play. It's just like an insane amount of burst damage coming out from the hero. I, again, I'm not sure why it's not being picked more. Yes, it got nerfed a little bit, but it doesn't mean it's bad at this point. It's just not completely broken anymore. You know, you actually, you actually got to work a bit to make things work. But if you play against a Techies expert, that hero can absolutely take over the game from the position, uh, position four. Uh, we see a Viper ban, maybe not one of the classic PA counters, but that Nether Toxin can break some of the PA passive, and uh, it does scale quite well, especially with the new level 25 talent for Viper. You just become universal, yeah. very normal. And it's such a weird talent to have. <laughs> yeah, they're very unique. Reminds me of uh, some of the early talents in Dota 2. Uh, the Mars being taken out, another one of those frontline heroes that could compensate for Myanmar's he uh, hero pool. But Myanmar taking out the Tusk, strong laner, yep. that and the Night Stalker. Mm -hmm. Night Stalker, generally a hero that I personally don't like very much in the offlane. Like you know me, I, I think it's much more of a carry hero. So I'm not entirely sure why they banned it even, because in the offlane so far, the performance has been very lackluster. I, I think the reason for that is it does have a very strong silence. It and does. neither of the three heroes, Earth Spirit, Ember Spirit, or Morphing, like that silence. Very true. It is definitely annoying. It always will be annoying. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> Sometimes you flies in, you kill him in two seconds, and it feels Whoa. like, oh, it's not really here anymore. And so the bandy out, well, Devar, okay. I, uh, I like that band. It probably it kind of dominates the Ember Spirit mid, but I think yep. later on in uh, the mid game, late game, Ember is quite elusive for the OD to catch, so maybe not the, but the band priority, I would think. But uh, Myanmar doesn't want, it wants to have a free lane for the Ember, and that's where we see all these mid laners being taken out uh, in the form of the OD, and Jordan themselves taking out the Queen of Pain, the Viper. Uh, to combat anything versus their... Yeah, but wait. They banned OD. OD would be mid, right? Because they already mm -hmm. have an Invoker. Yeah, good question. Um, OD offlane? Maybe? maybe they thought OD is the offlane, yeah, against the offlane. It's not really an offlane hero anymore because you need so much levels and experience uh, exactly. nowadays, but... Yeah, I mean, bo both bands are quite interesting because they're both not aura builders, as I said. I, I would be much more afraid of something like an Underlord, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. I would, I would have to agree. And uh, uh, then the Underlord would also enhance that Spirit Breaker global presence by using the ultimate and TPing That's everyone right. with the rest of the team and then compensating with what will be a Sunstrike Invoker at some point in this series if it's not going to be a Stomp. But uh, Mage Invoker, what do you think about him on that hero? It's one of his staples. He's definitely one of the better ones. But again, it, it's a very different playstyle now. He used to love Axon Invoker, which is pretty much dead now. Nobody plays it anymore. Quas Wex plays very differently from Axon, of course. Okay, so now we have Initiation. We have a little bit of a front line, I guess, once you get your BKB. But again, you, you don't want to be the first guy to go in on a Shaker, usually. You want your yep. teammates to go in, then you come in, two, three men echo. And this is going to be an offlane Earth Shaker. Could, could be plus four and offlane Prophet. That is a great shot. I think I would much rather prefer that black because running Earth Spirit, Earth Shaker off lane. It sounds rough. Versus a Phantom Assassin Grimstroke, they yeah. can just probably murder you from minute, well, level two. Mm -hmm. So 
Nature's Prophet Core, is that what we're expecting? That would be probably the first we see of it this patch, as it's been mostly played as a support. It's just so strong as a yep. support now. But, but, but of course, if it's strong as a support, it is also very strong as a core. So Absolutely. it definitely works. But I think Underlord makes even more sense now. It makes it hard to play for the morph. You can't really burst him down with the Earth Shaker. You build into all these auras for your team to be more survivable. Very good route. Yeah. yeah. Something like an Underlord would be awesome. Um, you also lane decently well against the morph lane because you have all that damage reduction, of course. Again, I'm going to keep on going back until we're going to see it, hopefully, this tournament once. I still think Slardar is a very strong pick here. Yeah. Uh, just instant stun for the Ember, for the Morphling, not allowing them to disengage and obviously reposition in team fights, enabling more of that physical damage just from the Phantom Assassin. Uh, works well with the Grimstroke as well. It is a fast hero that runs around the map alongside the Spirit Breaker. So something that could be here, obviously, not a traditional aura builder. Yeah. I mean, I like the hero myself as well. It's just, uh, it kind of falls in the ballpark of like a Ricky or uh, of yep. the Rubik middle that we saw yesterday. It's very hit or miss where if you don't snowball, coming back into the game is really hard. And most people, they don't like that. They want to have like a very stable draft, a draft that can come back even if the game doesn't, doesn't go too well. Jordan using over a minute of the remaining time, but it's the last pick. Uh, Tidehunter, I think, still in the pool here. One of the heroes that most yep. teams have been seen to fall back on as a safety pick. Tidehunter, always one of these big ulti, tanky boy. Not yep. many counters to the Tidehunter here if we're looking at it, so it could, could also be a decent choice. Yeah, it's just annoying to land uh, into the more flame, but again would be and it's the tide hunter there we yep. go uh, they're gonna be watermelon or underlord boy and i suppose to some extent the tide hunter adds a bit more to their team fight presence which was uh kind of lacking when it comes to aoe other than uh, the evoker of course yeah but the lane itself so you have spirit breaker and tide hunter against morphling morphling should just completely free farm we have seen it yesterday it was actually pretty scary dream of cell morphling he had like a minute 10 lincoln sphere yeah treads lincoln sphere minute 15 manta style he was completely unstoppable of course they won that game against Mongolia it was. Uh, yeah, I, I really hope they have a plan against this Morphling because if they don't, it can get very difficult. Was that Jordan versus Mongolia? No, it was Mongolia versus Indonesia. Oh, wow. That Dream of Cell on the Morphling, minute 10 Lincoln Sphere. He had like four kills, complete free farm, got a tower for free. I, I'm, I'm looking at this Spirit Breaker on Aphromotion, obviously the player that I wanted to highlight for this series. And uh, the Chen was banned out, but opting to go for the Spirit Breaker and not for the edge that we saw the great impact that was uh, well that he had yesterday. Um, do you think that was a natural choice to counter the Ember Spirit in Nature's Prophet? Probably, yeah. It's, it's one of the best plus four heroes. Once you have the Shadow Blade, you catch a lot of heroes out, no problem. But the biggest problem is, again, Morphling doesn't care at all. He will just go Lincoln first. And then you have another hero that doesn't really add any value against this Morphling. And obviously, you know all about playing Morphling yourself, Black, don't you? Yeah, a little uh, water abuser. <laughs> but it is going to be the Prophet 5, by the way. So we have to shake our Earth Spirit lane, which is not the strongest lane, especially against PA Grimstroke, which is traditionally one of the best dual lanes in the entire game. Uh, you know you know me, I mentioned this on stream yesterday, I think during the group stage, um, Team Romania ran a double melee Earthshaker off lane and they were not successful in an elimination game, so I don't... I, yeah, I'm not a big fan of it, and it would be very interesting to see how they can match up versus the Phantom Assassin. Uh, maybe they're just counting up until those uh, three levels, until PA gets a couple points in the blur and, and manages to Earth's spam more. They're hoping the stick will be enough regen for them. But uh, yeah, uh, both teams smoked up, and this is probably the, both, the first time we see both teams smoking up. As yesterday, only one of the sides seemed to be the ones uh, attempting uh, an early rotation. We will have uh, skill lay onto the Earth Spirit. Very nice uh, sentry word to block the camp the very edge, that's quite a tough one to deward unless you do it from the high ground or you block your own camp and then take your sentry down. Yeah, you always want to block a camp, so they actually need to put two sentries down to block your camp and deward your own camp. Mm, little rotation coming through. Aphromoosh has a black grenade. Yeah, and obviously uh, the Grimstroke paired with... Uh, that's, 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 that's a very awkward angle to come in from. Can they go being spotted? Yes, they're not getting spotted. They're driving behind him. Isla gonna get the slow down onto the Earthshaker. Show the eye. Beautiful fissure. Sprout coming in. Aphromoosh will get a uh, Prophet is slow. Pursued. Blood strike coming in. Mage with the EMP. Are we gonna see that kill? Yes, we are. And it is going to be a first blood. They're gonna leave it to Mage and. That's a lot of gold in his bank already. Yeah, we saw uh, an Evoker, I think, yesterday from Gunner, if I'm not wrong. They got a first blood early on. And. Uh, very, very strong on this hero, and we saw how great Mage has been in this tournament, shining more than he has in, in many, may, uh, maybe years. Yeah, it's uh, again, very much like Aphromoosh, he's been a very strong player for a long time, he just hasn't had his international success yet. Yeah. Which again, hopefully a tournament like this can really put him on the map, because as you said, he has been performing very well 
very deep hero on pool. a multitude of heroes. Absolutely, that's right. Uh, even even after getting the first blood, still gets the block advantage, and that's crucial. Black again explaining for everybody else at home why winning the the creep aggro early on and blocking the creeps in mid lane is such an important feature that other games do not have. Yeah, so especially in mid lane, pretty much only in mid lane really, because there's the high ground advantage in Dota. Every fourth hit or 25% of the time, there's an uphill miss. As well as you being in your own tower range gives you one additional HP region and three additional armor. So it becomes a lot easier to CS under your own tower and becomes a lot easier to harass the enemy. Whereas if you are under their tower, you can't really harass them and you can't really CS very well either. Especially in this situation when you're facing an Ember Spirit. That's and right. I like that Myanmar went for the, you know, counter pick they chose the ember spirit but we've seen mage play ember so much this patch he must be the one player who knows how to beat this ember on the lane oh yeah and invoker is definitely one of the better heroes to do it with as well yeah although we have seen some teams actually pick ember against the invoker we've seen mage himself defeat an invoker with his ember so mm -hmm. uh very we'll see interesting we'll keep our eyes on that mid lane out we have a lot of pursuit coming into nagato but that slow we're gonna make him escape Almost a deny attempt, but show TI with a long range uh, hit from the Earthshaker. But that is a big creep wave coming into the way of the Phantom Assassin top. Yeah, he's farming very well on the Shaker. Of course, Grimstroke, PA, the big strength comes out when you're really like level 3, you have to level 2 inks well. And uh, that's what they're trying to do right now. They're still level 1. They did not get the creeps. Nagato will go down, and will PA manage to trade this skill level 1 versus level 2? And no, they've been taking so much damage fast. Korea, Korea, Korea. He doesn't want to get the courier, he just wants uh? to kill it. Oh, 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 aggro. There we go. Missed the last hit, but gets the last of the courier. Yeah. And that's, of course, the crucial level advantage. You get level two faster. Then you have, obviously, more builds than the enemy to use. And they abuse that very nicely. I'm looking at these two level ones, the uh, melee heroes down bottom, harassing this morphling again. Uh, very beefy boys, both the Tide Hunter and the Spirit Breaker. Yeah, but of course, at some point, when you're too low HP, it takes a long time, a lot of resources to replenish the big health pool. You know, it might look strong now, but one small thing gets up some levels. Yeah, and we did talk about the two melee uh, cores on the top lane for the for the Radiant, but the Dyer has the same situation down bottom. Two melee uh, melee uh, players, melee heroes in the Tide and the Spirit Breaker. They're having to deal with two range in the Morphling and the Nature's Prophet. Yeah. So as the levels go higher, the side should get a little bit more exciting. Though bottom lane. I don't really think they can ever kill the Morphling. Um, yeah, I think this, the, the bottom lane should pretty much be uh, split down the middle when it comes to trade. We see a nice contest, but Aphromush will get the Lotus, and we have a pursuit in mid. Nice TP coming from Nature's Prophet. and one more right click will do it. Or the Black Grenade! Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. So rain. Level 2 TP, Sprout. But now, jumping onto the Morphling, can the Morphling survive? He's regening very fast, level 3 already. Hey, Ayla, you have to be careful. Ayla, do you, do you have any other gush you can use on this Morphling? Well, that's the power of Morphling. Generate HP out of nowhere. And the Courier probably bring in another salve. It's not a salve, but it is a 9 stick charge. We'll just go down to low strength, we'll pop it, and we'll get back to fully, well, more than half HP. Yeah, and of course, that's the power of the Nature's Prophet. Why is first banned every game, pretty much? Yeah. You just appear out of nowhere, and it's just a 2v1 situation suddenly. Ooh, Aphrom was going down quite low after that edgy more of a strike, but we'll be fine. And the last hits, though, are going in favor of uh, neither side. Everybody's been done. Oh, what dead. a body block! Okay, that Sprout was absolutely flawless because not only he caught the Tide Hunter black, but also the two range creeps that blocked the Tide from escaping. Yep, only way out will be on the bottom. Nagato also in trouble. He's dead. Three no. coming in. Buying Profit time. is everywhere. Yeah. That's and exactly why he's banned all the time. He's such a strong hero. No, he gets the courier kill of Taz as well. Yep. That is very unfortunate. And he also gets the last hit. So I think this uh, Nature's Prophet is already uh, has been involved in three of the four kills at least for Myanmar. He's such an obnoxious hero. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think he's going to make it into the next game. I, I think Jordan maybe is trying to see, okay, can we defeat this hero? And if they're not, they're just going to ban it out, right? Like every other team has. Yeah. This, uh, again, it's a best of three series, so you, you have one game sort of uh, bolster where you are allowed to lose. Yeah. But of course, yeah. It's, uh, you you, you want to make sure that uh, at least we test the waters in game one, not game two or three. 
Negato, a little bit of trouble again. He is getting charged. Show TI, he's got charged by Aphromouche. Meanwhile, Mage is getting pursued in mid, and he will lose his life. Can't Show TI make any more space right there? It will be a trade down mid. Mage will get the last hit because of the tower help. Show TI just dealing more damage, and that is going to be a lot of time wasted by the Phantom Assassin, but it will be a last hit for them. Yeah. I love that they immediately showcase what we spoke about. Earth Spirit rotates middle, Prophet TP is in 3v1 scenario. Nothing in Walker can do. Super easy kill for them there. Now Young PH getting bashed up a little bit. Bottle refill coming in though, so no problem whatsoever. It's typically tornado though, EMP coming through. Not level 6 yet. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Wow, out of nowhere. And now this Sprout, this is going to be a turnaround kill, a 6 kill lane next to it. Raw raid, very good positioning. And Nagato <laughs> comes in just a bit too late, but you're still happy for that. You trade your position for, for the opponent mid laner. This is going to enable Mage um, to get maybe the minute 6 rune. No, it will not. <laughs> How do you stop this Prophet from just doing what he does? There's no way to stop him. No, no, there is one way, Black. You ban it. That's right. But not in this game. Yeah, too late now for that. Uh, hopefully, you're not going to regret that. Because, uh, yeah, he's owning right now. And I'm also looking at this Earthshaker. This is a very high level Earthshaker, and so is the Morphling. So, uh, Myanmar playing four of their country heroes right here, and a very OP one after ever only coming from the Earth Spirit. Nice kick, not in the tower. Taz will be fine. That Urn gonna deal a bit more damage, but already a shared tangle from the support as Aphromush is trying to uh, come back. But look at the Fuyar. He's all right there again. Nice stand plus stun coming from the Earthshaker, and PA is in trouble. Can Taz do anything? Blur trying to escape, gonna jump away, but no, goes down to yet another kill going in the favor of the support nature. Prophet, what a Beautiful fissure! Nagato is stuck between the cliff. <laughs> Double kill for this Furion, and it's a 5 and 1 to support Black. Yeah, he died first, but he was like, Well, I'll show you guys what I'm made of. It's, uh, wow. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very strong hero. Every time he teleports, of course, he gets like 60 bonus damage for a couple of attacks. He has brought this damage now, prevents you from escaping. It's, uh, yeah. Let's just say there's a reason we see him banned the entire tournament, literally. Yeah. And, and not only he has such about, uh, such great impact, but because of his rotations and his success in those rotations, uh, the rest of this team is following up. And I'm looking at this Earth Spirit, almost level 6, the same as his own mid laner, because he is accompanying this Nature's Prophet in all of the engagements. Yep. And yet again, that's there what again. You said. Not level 6 on PA, a stun by coming in, Taz will escape. But life is low HP, two tangles would not want to get you back to full. And you still need three more creeps to get that level 6, which... At this point, it's not going to make too much of a difference if you keep getting pursued by three opponents. This is the problem with picking here like Tidehunter against Morphling. Instead yeah. of like an Underlord, a hero can pressure him. But Morphling can just easily sustain himself on that lane. No problem whatsoever. The support can do whatever he wants to do. Very nice uh, spot by our observer. But meanwhile, Mage in mid, going to get last hit by skill lane. It's this time, it's not even a Furion. Another stun, nice roll in. Mage's profit keeping Afro, which will try to charge away. Level four, going to Remnant in. Nice damage over time. Earth coming in, going to get the kill on the courier, but it doesn't matter. We're losing another one. And it's a 3k goal lead, 10-4, and uh, it's not even the Nature's Prophet anymore because he's enabled the Earth Spirit so much, Black. Now the Earth Spirit on his own can help one of the cores to get kills. Yep. And the usual Myanmar playstyle, very aggressive early on, 10 kills already, as you said, 3k gold lead. And it's gonna get very suppressive very soon. Like, they, they will have to and find, the, find a big team for the Ravage. Coming over Isla, we have a TP. Is Aphromus gonna be able to save this Tide Hunter? No Ravage, you score. I don't think we will scale this. You have an extra point. Aphromus is nice. Try to fight. One more TP coming here. Isla, no HP. We'll get the Ravage off. We have Nagano. Pass. Level 6 finally. Gonna jump on the Warthing. Warthing will go down. Gotta keep on pursuing. Raw Rain. Right clicking Aphromus will lose their life. Nice stick coming in. But Nagato, Nagato losing his life. Fury and ultimate coming in so much damage, another stun, a dodge from Taz. Taz is trying to get the kill, but neutral is not helping. Nice tornado, down to get another kill, but it's raw raid on the nature's profit. Triple kill for him. Ghost walking, mage is dusted. Can he get away? Gonna have to pop their lotus. Time is ticking. Another boulder coming in. Isla, no ravage, and I think this should be okay as he's getting some damage. Oh, base is burning out. No, he ran back into the. No, range of the slight of fist. <laughs> Raw Rain with a tip flying out as well. Young PH can oh. just get away. Charge coming in. Okay, Young PH might get punished right now. No more mana. Only one more slight of fist. Probably the big end, though. He can refill the bottle. Nice base. He, he refills the bottle. He did? Whoa! Look at the micro right now. We can get two of these players. Young PH still running away. Nagano gonna come in. Stun coming in. Silence coming through. And I think this Ember Spear is finally gonna be done for. 
but what a beautiful attempt. Black, can you please explain to us, as we still have another pursuit from Aphromoosh, that we'll get the Silas and the Ibis room. Oh, God, oh, does he have a climb, but he does? He's That's fine. Fine. Yeah. Okay, Black. Can you please explain to us how difficult it is? <laughs> Very nice steal of the bounty one right out because of the invis. Raw Rain is aware, deals a uh, tip. So much damage being dealt by the Ember Spirit. But look at that support fury and level, well, minutes 10, 6.6k damage. What I wanted to ask you, that bottle refill in the middle of the action black, how hard is that? Well, there's still action going on here. Aphromoosh again, very low, but so is Galay. Tonetti coming through, support trade. Absolute bloodbath right now. We'll lose Nagato once again. Taz cannot do anything else as Roarain is back into frame. Oh, Taz again, man. Morphin. Can Taz run away? Blar, you cannot jump onto Mage. Yes, he oh. can. But look at the damage. Oh. Slide the fist. Mage, Mage is well trouble. In. Mage gets caught by mistake. One versus three. Got a ghost walk. No more dust. Die Hunter coming in. Isla's going to scare Young PH away. But still no ravage for 24 seconds. Whew. Well, <laughs> now we might finally have some time to talk about that bottle refill. <laughs> Obviously, he was very low HP. You have to drag your own bottle into your ally's inventory and do it within like, a second because otherwise the bottle won't refill. And then the other way back to And you. then he has to put it back again into your inventory. He almost made it out because of it, but... It almost worked. That's the craziest part. Yep. Myanmar, they are playing like, like a group possessed right now. 18 kills in minute 11. Mm -hmm. Aggression paying off. I think Shaker just picked up his Blink Taker 2. There's Echo Slam available. Well, try to use it. No creeps to pop it on, but it doesn't matter. Look at the damage. Drop it again. Remember, sprout range. Oh, oh. oh no, not quite. Close. Oh, Ember Spirit says, oh, I got you. Young PH with that young blood mentality going to just jump in. This Phantom Assassin is falling so far behind, not just in network, but in levels as well. We have an initiation across the map. Nagato going to try to finally pursue and get this kill onto the Earth Can he roll away? No, he cannot. Stun coming in. Very nice pop. Tornado to secure the kill. Mage will get 600 gold. Split among two of his teammates, but I'm looking at the level of this Phantom Assassin Black, and she's the same level as the Nature's Prophet. Well, that's the problem when you join too many fights as a carry and you keep dying in those fights, yeah. so you're not getting any kills, you will fall behind. That's why playing a carry is very difficult. You have to really pick and choose the correct fights at all times. You see the Morphling, he's over 2,000 Nepo fed already. Uh, this will be a contest. They will not give away the tower for free. That Meteor Harrow is not going to do anything. Nature's Prophet may be a bit overzealous. We'll get Silas. Charged by after which Isla has the Ravage. Got to pop the Ravage just in time to get four heroes. No more damage being done. No follow-up. What is happening? Dreamstorm throws in the tide just now, but just slightly too late. Nagato not going to probably get away as he's getting approached. Nice blink from Shoti. Looking for Mage to run the back line. Yeah, PH keeps on driving. And what a kick! Skill lay! Laying the ground, what a kick to Mage. And KSH with yet another double kill, now starting to ramp up that net worth. Now that is the difference between a very successful fight. The carry joins, gets a double kill, doesn't die. Whereas Taz, every time he joined the fight, he actually died. Oh my Still gosh, Aphromoosh. Oh my goodness me. The pace right now is just way too much for Jordan to handle. Fine. They cannot keep up. Finally, level six on the Spirit Breaker, but still getting. Oh, he's getting Aphromoosh here. It's a kill. Young Fight. PH, full confidence, flying across the map, chasing the Spirit Breaker. Unbelievable. The Black Myanmar just showing us a form unmatched in this tournament. Well, might make you reconsider picking that Invoker against the Ember Spirit because every time we have seen it so far, yep. the Ember has been coming out on top of it and it's been absolutely punished. We'll give the last hit to Taz, that's finally level 9, but look how far away still is from the Battle Fury. Island trouble again. No more Ravage, no more Wands, only one Lotus. Uh, the lo roll in will get missed, but skill lane will have another one in just about 5 seconds. Waveform, mega kill streak for the Morphling. 7 1 3, 100 CS, minute 14, and skill lane is going to steal the Equisitor Room as well. Where did he get the Yule Scepter from? Way too much money on those supports. He is almost the same network as the opponent Tidehunter. Yeah, and Prophet is above the opponent Tidehunter. This is unbelievable playing right now. And it's, yeah, I, I have to agree, Black. I don't think you can let, if you want to pick Invoker, you got to ban this Ember. We've seen this uh, the third or fourth time this tournament. This Ember seems to be the answer to the Invoker. Yeah, especially in the hands of Young PH, apparently. He has been doing so much this game very confidently. He had one misplay where he overplayed a little bit, but this just happens. It's the nature of playing aggressively. Oh, gets out, okay, nice skill A. 
And of course, the Yule Scepter is the hard counter to the Spirit Breaker. Purge is off that Bulldoze, also cancels his charge. Very good itemization. Very good to just throw the PA in the air as well. If she wants to right click you, you can uh, obviously use it on yourself to get away from the uh, Grimstroke silence. So, uh, uh, an amazing pickup for minute 14 for an Ever Spirit, Earth Spirit. And we'll break the smoke and then just roll away. Another huge victory right there for Skill Lay that's been playing phenomenal. The D word will come in just in time. Sprout. Uh, just rewording the cliff and look at Isla. Isla is quite confident. We have a charge. Silence, Ravage coming in. Can we blow up this Ember Spirit? Lots of damage. Silence still in play. Finally got a tie to an opponent. He got tied, but Echo Slam! Tornado still in a four versus four. Three versus four, sorry. A tide Hunter gets isolated. Tornado fueled up in the Sprout. Roll in, stun. Triple kill for the support Earth Spirit. And you got the kill on the Ember, but it doesn't matter. Everybody is still alive, sharing all that golden XP for the Radiant. He presented himself very aggressively. They blew three ultimates on him alone. Sure, they get the kill, but they have nothing left in the tank. He's not going to be too unhappy with that, res uh, with that uh, result at all. I love this observer word. Great oh, spot. So right good, here. yeah. It's an amazing word right there. The, the power of Nature's Prophet. He, he's just anywhere at any point. You get these deep wards up, farm the enemy jungle, steal their resources. Of course, and now we see him farming the Dire Mines, which is a place where you want the PA to be playing catch up in. But meanwhile, across the map, Taz on the PA and Afro Bush. Gonna charge, gonna get the kill on to show TI. Can he get the fusion down? No, he cannot. Because calls now from Mage is a bit too overwhelming, and that's gonna be a nice kill. No trades? No. I, I might have misspoke because Ember is here. Earth is here. Tornado gonna come in gonna miss afro moosh gonna not be able to do anything that's getting isolated by the sprout young ph keep on chasing mage mage what can you do call snap spirit vessel afro moosh running away young ph gonna turn around gonna try to get the kill onto the spirit breaker but this is a very fast slide in two slide in one walking the other oh, still gets gets him on the edge. roll in gonna leave the last hit to the young PH, Ember Spirit, who is now only 1.5k, well no, actually 1.9k gold away from the BKB on top of this Maelstrom. Very, very fun, but of course... Look at the score, 9 to 16 black, sorry for interrupting, but yeah. how is that a Nature's Prophet support? That's right. New Nature's Prophet is insane. Again, there's a reason we see it banned every, every game. I can't believe it's not picked up or, or, or banned. Er, earlier, earlier on, um, when he TP'd across the map, the range of that Sprout is... It's insane. It's like an Aetherlands stun. Yeah, it's like a 900 range. And he's got a mech, and he's got a Solar Crest, he's building into what seems to be a Vanguard? Mm -hmm. Wow, might, might going for that or, 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 Aura Builder, yeah, of yep. course. Uh, you've got an Earthshaker offlane, Earthshaker doesn't want to go for those items, and you've got a Nature's Prophet that's just farming like a madman, so why not? Yeah, as we previously spoke about, the hero just does everything. Look at this Tide Hunter. Officially lower net worth on the offlane core Tide than any hero on the Radiant side. Oh, thank you for the Sun Strike. Yeah, there's plenty of Sun here, and I think that's what Myanmar went for the Morphling to cool us all off. Very, very considerate of them, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, although this Sunstrike will deteriorate them from pursuing, they thought they will be contested, but uh, Jordan realizes we can't do that. Gotcha. It's gonna go back, and uh, this Morphling, man, <laughs> look at the items already. Gonna start building towards the Scotty now. We'll pick up these Aegis and stay alive for even longer. It's so difficult to do much of anything right now. They don't have the damage necessary. They have a Ravage for the team fight, but that's pretty much it. And all the combos with the Grimstroke require the PA to have a lot more network than she currently does. Realistically, the only target you could have bursted if you caught him was the Morphling. Now the Morphling will have the Aegis, so even if you manage to chain stun him, you'll have two lives, so it's too late. We saw how tanky this Earth Spirit is. It's got a Yules. We saw how tanky this uh, Nature's Prophet is. Has a mech, will have a Vanguard, has raindrops on him. Uh, absolutely incredible. Great itemization from the Radiant side here. By the way, Morphling also has a shard, so oh. even if you stun him, he can still morph. I did not even notice when he purchased that. Mm -hmm. One of the best shots in the game for situations like this, Mage. Running away in the Ghost Walk. Yeah, phenomenal Dota 2 being played right now for Myanmar. I am so impressed. And uh, Young PH with that shield rune is completely fearless. That tornado can dispel him, but it was used earlier. Is it off cooldown? Mage will try to do so. We're going to miss the tornado because of a beautiful sleight of fist dodge. Yeah, has the shield rune up as well. Still 900 HP on that one. They can't really initiate him. They don't have the damage to kill him.
Mage, they no more mana. Mage. Oh, it's just a fake. Picking up the Arcane, and now this Ember definitely wants to fight. Midas will get oh, used. Oh, just going in. He's jumping into three. Tornado dodged again by the slide of fist, and Mage gonna try to fall snap. Nice TP coming in from Rain now. Gonna connect. Oh, Tidehunter. Nice here. Ult. Cannot rail. Ravage just yet. Finally, Ravage coming. Gonna try to get the kill. Finally, nice creep from Taz. Echo Slam, no, it's only a Fissure. Can we follow with the Aftershock? Right click, Taz Echo down, and he's gonna take it out. Nice TP out from Isla. Nagato will try to get away with his life. And it's a position four trade for your one, two, and four position. Yeah, and it's pretty much how every fight is gonna go right now. They don't have the burst damage to really kill the Ember Spirit, especially with the Shield Rune. Prophet TPs in, in a pretty suicidal fashion, but it doesn't matter because even if they kill the Prophet, it doesn't matter. It's just a plus five. Just every exchange is always going the way of Myanmar. Morphing is getting unbelievably huge. So is Ember Spirit. He's, he's got his BKB now. I, I love that highlight. That still, despite the only one dying in the fight, Nature's Prophet is still the one to deal the most damage in it. Of course, uh, Nature's Prophet Ultimate deals an insane amount of damage. Yeah. Global AoE. Vanguard on the Prophet now, going to the Crimson Guard. Once that's up, the, the PA won't deal much damage at all. This is unbelievable. And if you are Jordan Black, you're already starting to question why did we leave this monster through? Yule's Fissure, Aftershock, rolling from Skill A. Yet another Yule, but only gonna allow the Morphing to come in, TI to collect the kill, and now Ember jumping in. Yeah, gets the again. chase. Ice Wall, silence, but Mage is surrounded by opponents. Four heroes here. Can he escape? He cannot. As Raw Rain TP is gonna get another Sprout onto Nagato, way from forward, and this is. Black, I, I mean, you're not calling it now, but you might as well. I feel like it really depends. Sometimes not calling it actually causes more problems than it do, uh, than it helps. Yeah, yeah. Just mentality-wise, you know, they keep running you over. There's nothing you can do. We're definitely getting to the territory where calling it might be the right play, but they still have a PA. Maybe with a couple of lucky crits, they can get a kill here or there. She's definitely here that can come back from this. If they even give them a chance to because they're knocking on the door already. So much damage. And to be fair, Mage has played quite well on his Invoker, although you know, the Ember has had more impact. But yeah, it's, it's uh, this melee racks already down to half HP. We'll have one more 45, but no Ravage for another, I think, at least 20, 30 seconds. And the Tornado will try to buy some time, uh, break one of the illusions, but KSH is full confident, alone, another minute on the Aegis. After Mush will try to get something from behind. Mage gonna approach the Morphling. Are we gonna last it? Yep. Jump in the back line. Young PH gets caught, gets silenced. BKB! Rabbit's not gonna do absolutely anything. Young PH just turns around and kills them all. Echo Slap! Kills the support. Gonna jump in. And this is a, almost a solo kill. Taz, can you deal more crits? The BKB finally has come out. Trying to right click. Everybody's in the air. They're all flying because they have used double kill for Young PH. Taz dying. Gonna get the call onto Nagato. A triple for Young PH. And it's Isla, 1v4, calling the GG. Not going to be an ultra, but Jordan gets decimated in 23 minutes. That, uh, I feel like it's a story when you... Okay, you give Miyama this Nature's Prophet, a team that is already known for their early aggressive playstyle. It is the perfect hero for them. Game 2, I can already guarantee this hero can be out of the pool and will be a much, much closer game. They just got everything they wanted. The Ember, the Earth Spirit, the Prophet. Morphling was just left solo pretty much. So like after minute four, so the support could do whatever they wanted to do. Perfect display of why Miyama is so scary. This, this is unbelievable. They are one map away from cracking into that top three at the Yash World Esports Championships. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I've had the luck to cover them over in Riyadh. They look nothing like this. They were aggressive, but look very unrefined. They made a lot more individual mistakes, right? Here, they just look like hungry beasts. Yeah, they, they definitely are here wanting to prove something and making a statement after statement so far this tournament. And uh, I don't think we were expecting maybe Jordan to be more of a matchup for them. And hopefully we'll get to see some of that in game two. But so far, they look better than the United States and they look better than Kyrgyzstan. And they definitely look better than Jordan. Yeah, they look very, very, very scary. But again, it's just a game one. Jordan is very strong. The draft was perfect for Myanmar. I don't think they're going to get a similar draft again in game two. There will definitely be a lot of changes happening, especially from the Jordan side. So it should be a much more competitive game, and they can definitely take the series still. Yeah, and obviously Jordan has the experienced players that will be able to talk the team into, okay, let's just forget about that. It's fine. We've had a loss in the tournament before we bounced back and we smashed our opponents. That's right. We have all what it takes. And you know now what Myanmar wants to play. 
let's not give them those heroes. Yeah, they will still have a very similar playstyle, so maybe you can even draft for yourself like a more like defensive composition. They kind of you brace yourself yeah. against what they're coming because they'll pick strong lanes, they'll pick strong team fights, they keep running at you. Pick heroes, they can really abuse that. Tide Hunter was a good idea, but you're already playing into a morphling. Like you, you have to make sure that you come out of the lanes okay at least, because they can completely destroy it in the lanes. And we gotta mention, I mean I wanted to mention that Spirit Breaker Black. We've seen the Spirit Breaker, I think this is the fifth time on stream this yeah. tournament. And I don't think we've seen it win once. It's, uh, uh, again, it's a very hit or miss hero. Like he doesn't do much early on at all. It's it's very strong in the middle late game portion. But if you can't get there, then the hero doesn't do much. Especially with a grim stroke, it's not the greatest support duo at all. Yeah, and then we had the spirit breaker mid a few days ago. Again, very unsuccessful. So maybe maybe just stay away from that. And again, that enchantress for Aphromush was still in the pool. They did not want to go for it. They wanted to chase the fury in the round, but it didn't matter. He was the chaser, not the chased one. Uh, we will go on a short break, but after that, we're coming back with the game number two between Myanmar and Jordan of this upper bracket.
And we are back in uh, our, well, we're back in the upper bracket black. We're back with the Myanmar. And, you know, I sounded a bit deflated there because this team is just a one-way show. It's, this is not even a competition at this point. 23 minutes versus Jordan, 22k gold lead, almost 1k per minute versus players of this caliber. It's something that is not very common, especially when it comes to tournaments at this level. Yeah, but again, I think it was mostly attributed to the draft. Yep. Player-wise, I don't think they're super far ahead of Jordan, individually at least. Maybe as a team they are, because Mehrmann has been playing together for a very long time. But this time, no Earth Spirit and no Nature's Prophet. Thank God for that. But Beastmaster, okay. It might honestly go the same way after seeing that hero. I actually can't <laughs> believe that they picked Dawnbreaker over Beast. Neither, neither can I. I mean, I love Dawnbreaker and we saw it's a very strong hero. But you know my opinion. I think Beastmaster is busted. Uh, one of my friends that I'm doing with right now, he just picks it every match, and I don't even have to be on the server because the birds just do everything. That's right. They circle around you and just auto attack everything to death. It's uh, absolutely unbelievable. And yes, Dawnbreaker kind of can deal with the birds quite well. And, and you must have known you let it through because you opted to ban the Earth Spirit. Yeah. And obviously, I think that's a great choice because the Earth Spirit was phenomenal on the side of Myanmar last game. Yeah. Makes me wonder though, what, did the Earth Spirit only look that good because the Prophet actually enabled it, him? I think that is the case, but uh, they still opted to ban it non nonetheless. I think Jordan banned the Earth Spirit before the Furion was out, because Jordan right. did not want to ban the Nature's Prophet. They had first pick, so they could have picked him themselves. Yeah. The, I kid you not, there was actually a series of casualty on the main stage. Prophet was not picked or banned. The entire game. I th I digress, but Ench is being banned now to pair up with the Chen, aware of the fact that obviously uh, the Enchantress is a bit of a natural counter to stealing the boar away from uh, the uh, uh, the Beastmaster, and now the Grimstroke, and it's even a better Grimstroke game than before, because, well, it's on the other side with uh, the, what looks like the better team, but the double roar... <sighs> and that's just the first hero. There's still three more heroes to come. Myama is a team that likes to run mid Doom, for example. They like to run their PAs, and there's a lot of heroes that really benefit of this Grimstroke, of course. Sky. Good. Okay, tested, proven. Yeah. We've seen it. Staple here right now. And obviously, uh, we got to touch upon that Dawnbreaker. Yeah, we'll, we would have preferred to see the Beast first for Jordan and not let it through to Myanmar. But uh, Dawnbreaker does kind of cover something that they were trying to attempt last game with that Spirit Breaker and what the Nature's Prophet were doing on the other side. That global presence constantly. You don't need to be there. And we'll get to pair it up with Mage's Ember Spirit, one of the most successful this tournament. Uh, Ember Spirit is racking up win rate for us in Yash, despite not getting many dubs outside of it. But it seems to be the prime mid hero, despite what I would have thought was a weaker patch for the hero. Yeah, it's just a problem. Is Ember Spirit kind of just does well in the lane by pressing W. Like I don't want to call it a no skill hero, but during the laning phase, it really is a no skill hero. You just press W, you win lane, and then in mid game, of course, it gets a lot more difficult. But you mentioned see the, the PA already. Yeah, it goes very well. Grimstone, one of the best combos in the game. We've also seen Jordan run it last game, but also yesterday we've seen the same matchup. Skyruff Dawn against Grim and PA. Grim PA got destroyed. Yeah, absolutely. But oh, this so time... it's a 4 Grim and a 5 Oracle. And the Oracle kind of changes stuff around, because I want to say the Ember is a great setup with the Searing Chains for the Skyrath Ultimate, but now you've got this Oracle, you just pop the Fates Edict on the, your hero and you get no magical damage. Yeah, or the ult that's on cooldown. There's mm. lots of ways to really mitigate that. And also the Purge. The Purge for the Ember Spirit Flame Guard with the Oracle False Promise. Uh, so not the False Promise, the, the first Oracle spell. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Fortune's End, For I think. Yes, that's uh, one. Fortune's yeah. End, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. You can also, I mean, you can purge of the silences, you can purge of the... Of your own teammates, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you can purge of the... What's it called? The slow? No, the, the shackles. Not the shackles, the... Searing chains. Searing chains, yeah. I always think of sh shackles from a shaman, but yeah, you can purge that off. Oracle is an amazing hero. Truth be told, I think it's very underpicked. I agree. It's, it's a very strong nuka. Very strong laner. And, and I think it, it uh, generates a lot of... Uh, of diff it covers a lot of the areas that you need more supports to do. He does it by himself. And other than maybe Insania of Team Liquid, we don't see many people uh, trying to play this hero. And even the, the Shard, it's not new even anymore. It's the old Ags, and yes, it's been nerfed. But even if you don't buy it yourself and you get it out of the Tormentor, it's such another strong element of a team fight. You heal your teammates and you deal cheap damage to the opponents on a large AoE area. Yeah, Oracle here, uh, amazing to see, and uh, a great pick. And Jordan, 
Yeah, Jordan was not expecting that. They've been here for two minutes and a little bit now, trying to find, okay, what do we do now? It's a tough pick, honestly. Like, the draft right now looks pretty complete already. They got good damage, they got good scaling, they got good lanes, they got yep. good tower pressure. Tusk, okay, so they're gonna strengthen the lanes a little bit, it makes a lot of sense. Five Tusk. It could be a five Dawn Breaker and offline Tusk, they've run that before as well. Or maybe a five Sky Wrath with four Tusk, and then yeah. you run Tusk Dawn offlane, and then you use Tag Team to abuse that PA. It's possible. Yeah, that, that, that could be doable right Although now. Although PA is one of the better heroes against Tusk, actually. You have the inbuilt evasion, you also have the Blink Strike, of course. Banning the Huskar, of course, Huskar, Oracle, a pairing, traditional, you don't want to see that. And I guess the Tusk does bring here, uh, you get Roar, you get double Roar, you just noble your teammates and, you know, you save them essentially for what is uh, three and a half seconds. Yeah. Uh, it's still a very scary draft from Mamma to play against. They have yet to pick their mid here as well okay. against the Ember Spirit. Uh, the Bloodseeker ban is probably what also telegraphed Jordan to get the Husker, because obviously Bloodseeker natural counter to Husker. It could happen this game, man. Miyama has done it in the past. They've the played Slaughter Middle. <gasps> it's really good against the Ember. It goes really well with Beastmaster and PA. It blows up the Skyrim made in maybe one hit, maybe one hit plus a stun. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You amp a guy, you get a crit dagger, you're dead. Slaughter it could happen. Middle. It could happen. The OD being banned here. Uh, another great complementary alongside the Oracle. The Oracle just keeps the OD uh, alive for those extra seconds that the OD needs to ramp up even more damage in a team fight. Uh, safe and obviously the OD can dominate an Ember mid, so you don't want to risk yourself by going through that. And it will be the last pick, 30 seconds here for Jordan. They don't have much more time for this because they wasted so much for the Tascar pick. Yeah, so they will have to pick the carry last. It has a decent matchup. They banned their own faces void. Um, mm. There's not a lot of great matchups left against the PA, to be honest. Taken out. Yeah, no Sven, no Gyro. I guess a Terror Blade is something that we have seen played, but it's going to be in 12 seconds. we got to find out. Please don't get a Naga Cybern. I do not want to see the Naga right here. If they pick Terror Blade, then like, suddenly Tinker becomes a super strong hero as well. It's going to be the Terror Blade. Okay, I'm I mean, pretty good with my last pick predictions today, Black. I, I got to say that. But Tinker mid, paired up with a Grimstroke and protected by an Oracle, the only real danger you have well, th there are a few dangers. The Dawnbreaker can break the tree lines and find you. Skyrat does have an instant silence, and obviously Amber and Tusk love chasing you. But still, you're such a great counter, especially to all the melee core heroes. Could be maybe like a Zeus too, and so a Spellcaster. Now nice. Slada is, of course, not as attractive anymore because Terrorblade is really strong here against it. So they're probably going to be looking for, for a Spellcaster. But they got all the time in the world. They're not going to use it. And Shaker, go back to the Shaker. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, why you not? Got, you got three illusions on the Terror Blade, you jump on him and you blow him up. Yeah, yeah, this is a very strong draft. It will be the young PH Earthshaker in mid. But uh, Mage does have his Ember Spirit, and he's, the, he's been the one dominating with this hero this tournament. To be fair, I think this make, game will be a make or break. Let's see what Zor Rain has for us on this Oracle. He was the standout player on that Furion. Yep. If he can replicate even half of the impact on the Oracle, I think this will be an easy 2-0. But if somehow we can burst out this Oracle and then focus on the other team, or the, the other members of the team, Jordan might be the favorites. Yeah, I think it will depend a lot on the laning phase, of course. Absolutely. Like, like Dawnbreaker has to win her lane, 100%. Yep. Terrorblade has to be at least okay enough that they can go to the jungle the level 4, level 5. Like They can't get absolutely dominant in the top lane. Mid lane I'm expecting like a 5-5 five five, and then whoever gets a 6 minute room will probably start making a rotation. Although it can get pretty tough for the Ember Spirit. Like level 3, right level 4. Click. Yeah, the right click yeah. from the Earth, Earth Shaker will come through with lots of damage. Uh, but we've seen Mage do this again, time and time again and I, I hopefully he has it in it because I think it would be amazing to see a map three between these two teams. Yeah, I'm a little bit afraid though, because there's so much snowball potential with the PA, with the Shaker mid, with the off lane, a uh, Beastmaster that gives us a fast Aghanim Scepter, then Crimson Gust, suddenly your Terror Blade doesn't really deal damage anymore. There is a lot of volatility, for sure. I gotta admit, I think the Miyama draft is just easier to play, execute. easier to execute. They have much better tower pressure, because you're only building damage right now as a Terror Blade, yep. who doesn't really want to be there, because. He's a terrible blade. <laughs> terrible blade and one echo, you're dead. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be uh, proving to be very difficult, but if there is a team that can do it, it it's, it's has to be Jordan, because if not, Myanmar will advance to the top three as we are making our way through the laning phase. Well, 
uh, the pre-game phase of the Dota game. Uh, Show TI with a have fun, Young PH joining. And, uh, oh no, they lost, they lost, they lost. You cannot say good luck. I, I kind of agree with that one, actually. Like, look, look, look at the Miyama players. Oh no, he also said good luck. Uh, it it, it yeah. evens out. Yeah, it evens out. But, but the other first two players from Miyama only said have fun. They know, they know what's up, Black. They know what's up. Well, but you, you said there's some superstitions, right? Well, what, what do you believe? If you wish the enemy good luck, are they actually going to have good luck? Yes. Yeah, I, I never do that. I, I literally only say have fun and GG. That's it. Yeah. Why would I say good luck? I, I don't want to have uphill misses. I don't uh, want to have to get runes. I only say have fun and easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of toxic. <laughs> Anyway, on that note, uh, we are looking at uh, Jordan trying to make uh, a little bit of circle around the Radiant Jungle. We'll not find anyone as Myanmar is stacked on the top side of the river. <laughs> a skill lay is, um, is enjoying himself on the Grimstroke. I, so I love that laugh. Like the voice actor of Grimstroke is, is really good. To be, we, we, uh, Dota is a great game for many reasons, but the voice acting is one of them. I gotta say, the voice acting and the sound effects in Dota are far and above everything else. <laughs> most games, yeah. if not all games. Uh, bounty runes, it will be a 2 for 2 as Taz and Isla will collect uh, 2 for the side of Jordan. A bit of chip damage being dealt right now. KSH will go down to just over half HP. Uh, Afromoosh oh, and Don't go Isla. up there, Zoran. Careful. I think Isla just waiting here to cut uh, the time that uh, Phantom Assassin has to get back to the lane will be very good as Zoran will get approached. There is a blood grenade and will get popped. Zoran does not have another dispel. Oh, that's a long TP! You're dead. Now he has no DP to get back to the lane. Now that's a start. They could literally just win you the game. I, I'm laughing because I love that's a long TP. <laughs> a blood grid coming up on well. Show TI, Very Nagato, well. Taz, and this is why this task is so annoying with his innate ability of just tanking and using ice shards. Doesn't even have a point in tag team level one. And uh, wow, skill lay opting to get that beautiful long range last hit on the on the range grid. Nagato, oh. waiting in the shadow. This could be a kill onto the Grimstroke, and I think it might just be the Orb of Venom is there. Ice Shard will be coming in the second skill. A isolated task will pop the meta. No, doesn't even have it. Level one. He went for the uh, image. Interesting. Level two now. You have to be careful. This Beastmaster is not weak, of course. Mage very aggressive in the tower. Ooh, trying to dodge there. The uh, uh, Earthshaker stun will not be able to do so as Young PH just faked that one. Will be able to get one of the last hits in the tower for Young PH. We'll lose the second one currently. Topping the, the CS score 7 5. And we have. Ooh, KSH is gonna lose the life. No miss. And it's a last hit for Aphromush. Roaring, still Zorin, only level 1. He nope. literally just got back to the lane. Yeah, he had to walk all the way back because he wasted his TP. And as a support myself, like I gotta be honest, that's one of the worst feelings in the universe. When you give away your first blood while you're trying to TP away. Yep. Skill A, gonna lose his life, gonna turn around to Taz, but Taz has the meta level off. The stun will come in just slightly too late. Show TI, is he going to be fine? The bird is protecting him from the orb of venom, but Nagato and Taz are still pursuing. Taz gonna turn around, get the last, it's under the tower. Uh, and it's a 4-1 advantage for Jordan that has finally woken up and starting to play some Dota today. 1k lead already this early into the game. And really most of it comes from the bot lane, just because Oracle couldn't help the PA whatsoever. Look at PA CS5. Yeah, very, very under, under leveled and under farmed on the bottom lane. Oracle still level 1. The, we'll, we'll need both of these two neutrals to get level 2. Uh, Mage gonna pursue Young PH right here with three creeps, but uh, the Water Rune will get Young PH up to over half HP. Show TI and Skill A won't be able to catch up to Nagato. That's a very tanky and speedy tusk. I love the boar. It's it's like what is that? Like a like a crocodile? <laughs> Looks like it, yeah. Someone tell us in the chat. Is that oh I get it. I think it's a what we call a Komodo dragon. Yeah, I think so. Uh, anyway, back to mid lane where Mage is uh, getting dominated. Black. Yeah, Shaker is very nasty to play against as a melee hero. We were expecting this to go a bit one-sided. Out once level five hits, but level four maybe uh, already enough for the Shaker. Isla will tank a few tower hits as he gets slowed, but KSH. Gets uh, nuked down continuously by Aphromush and Isla's hammer. Uh, will have uh, nine stick charges to use if needed. Uh, I wonder who got the Lotus on the bot lane. It was a Skyraf. Okay. Yeah, he's not having the best time on the PA for sure. 
That being said, he's only one CS behind the Terror Blade. Rolling in, skill lay, stun will come through. Holding it all the way. The Damn, Birds will get both of them. Shoti I gonna turn the targets, get both to One more right clicks. Can the bird get another the target again? Bird, I think the whack axes are coming back for cooldown. The axes are coming and Taz is down, and this is why. Who thought it was a nerf? I don't I don't know. Ice Frog, please tell us. You really love this hero that much? That's actually ridiculous. The damage it deals and it roots you and it's amazing. Oh. I think I think Taz will be able to TP in lane in time and will only miss two of the creeps that were denied. So we'll get the XP from the rest of this uh, wave and a half. And the last is very nice over there. Uh, very good CSing from the Terrible player. You know, I spoke to a couple of the remaining players and they asked me, how is it possible to take one OP thing, the Hawk that gave vision and everything, and make it even more OP in a different way? And I was like, good question, because <laughs> this current Beastmaster is the perfect uh, example of that. I suppose Beastmaster is in this uh, strange place where uh, Isla, hello, Isla. 11 sticks, he's fighting. Hammer coming in, gonna turn around, Zorin going low HP, stick to get swapped. Isla getting lower and lower, Zorin still tanking a lot. We're gonna get the kill on Zorin, but Isla might lose her life, he's getting the he's bit getting of kill. Healed. But meanwhile, up top, we have an initiation from the Tusk. No, the Tusk will lose his life, and KSH. We'll have to jump away from the damage of the Dawnbreaker and Afro moves, but they are getting pursued. Another hammer spin coming in the tower. KSH, no more misses. And Afro Mush with a double kill. This Skyride already, I think, has been involved in four or five kills. And show the eye behind the tower. Taz trying to do some damage, but will get taken away. Afro Mush will TP. No more mana. A couple of right clicks should do the job. Uh, Helm of the Overlord will be the purchase that Beastmaster wants to go for. But it's a triple kill for the Skyride Mage. Despite that, the PA was alive bottom, and the terribly died top. Yeah, so TB now sitting at two deaths, 21 CS. PA and TB both having very rough games. So at least both carries are suffering equally as much. But Aphromoosh is having a fantastic game. Young PH Echo. as well, but you can Mage. Mage baiting around, Soaring, TPing in. Young Peach wants to get the kill onto Mage, but Mage disengaging. You can be up from distance and prod with that sleight of fist. We'll get the deny onto the Cardi. And now contesting the, wow, beautiful sleight of fist. Does Mage have one more sleight of fist? No, he doesn't. Salve will get popped. Bottle refilled from the Illusion Rune, and this is going to be... If he gets Echo, he's dead. He has to be super careful. Only level 5, all those denies, 16 denies on the side of the Earthshaker, submitted 6, incredible, and Mage will miss one more last hit under the tower. God is looking to potentially rotate mid lane. He's already jungling on the Terror Blade, that's how bad he's feeling up there. Which of course gives the Beast Master complete free farm. Shards, 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 hello. Side of fist, something. Double TP, triple TP, Dawnbreaker coming in a bit too late, but Young PH will disengage. Not enough, the Illusion will not do it. Skill Lane will come in, will trade the support light, but Zorin will go down as Isla comes in with the Dawnbreaker to collect just a few more kills. And finally, Jordan, despite what was an early good four minutes, they were starting to fall back in the network department, but now that's going to bring Mage nice into a sweet spot. Level 6 can TP back to base when he gets 75 mana and fill the bottle up. Look at Aphromoosh's net worth. Same as a Shaker, same as a Terror Blade. Looks like he's a cost Skyraf right now. Oh, oh, more than B8 Phantom Assassin. Yeah. But of course, you, you really have to respect the Stormbreaker hero. Like, whenever you think it's a 3v3, it's really not. It never is. It yeah. never is. Uh, Wisdom Room will get split. Skilly will get one of it. And I think we have Aphromoosh on the other side getting his Mystic Flare level 6 maybe on the back of this window. No, they're not. Half a level away from getting that level 6. and. Uh, these wisdom rules are very interesting. But when you're falling behind, you really need the minute seven one. But overall, they don't feel as impactful as, I, as I'm talking about. Taz gets a full stop. No level six, no thunder. But the damage on Shoti is very, very great. This beastmaster gonna go down. Isla TPing a well. KSH can he jump away? Stun coming through. Gonna dodge the stun. Gonna jump back with Jaffa. But Ember Spear, Mage is here. Mystic Flare coming in. Skill A with a silence. Double here for Nagato, and that was yet another amazing rotation from the Jordanian players, this time without the Dawnbreaker ultimate. Yeah, literally bring the entire team. Of course, you can just go back to the portal, back to the bot lane. You have to be very careful when you need Oracle. He might be next on the list. Oh, he's completely out of position. He's dead. Zorain. Yeah, not long for this world. Will be another kill for the Skyrat mate. Oh, it's going to be a lot of gold if he gets a kill. Crit. Punch coming in. 600 gold for him. 
Can you disengage? Can you turn around? Can you still stay alive on KSH? Yes, you can, because young PH is here. He's going to get a beautiful fusion, going to stun too, and going to get the kill on the off lane Dawnbreaker. Not a last hit for the PA, but another killing spree going in the favor of Myanmar, this time on the hands of young PH. This 600 gold infusion for the PA is actually massive. Gotcha. That's half for an item, basically. And this all started with that beautiful one team fight by Jordan up top that then transformed with an attempt bottom that ended up with losing three players. Yeah, very well coordinated Jordan this time. Uh, this is what I mean by replying to the aggression. You know, they're just five heroes ready to, to respond because they know Myanmar's gonna dive them. Yeah. 14-8 and uh, second game, same as the first one. Plenty of kills. Uh, and yeah. I'm looking at the network, and uh, yeah, Skyrat is doing great, but uh, Terrorblade and Mage on the Ember Spirit, not so much. Yeah, unfortunately, the other two car uh, cores aren't doing super well. Isla doing very well for himself, but again, Beastmaster's right up there, so is the PN Shaker. Uh, both uh, the Radiant and the Dire side are dancing around the uh, two observers, uh, each team having one in basically the same spot. But Mage will collect this Invis rune. He's going to be very happy with that, could use it to escape or maybe just to try to sneak up on someone in the jungle. Still holding the 1k gold lead though, just about. Uh, and already a phylactery here on Afromoosh. Uh, like was mentioned, very farmed on Skyrap Mage. Uh, pretty much every single nuke will deal extra burst damage as Zorain doesn't want to have any more to deal with the bottom lane. Nagato approaches him slightly <laughs> too late. Uh, great game sense coming in from Zorain and obviously a very nice place to observe a word. Imagine if Snowball didn't stop throughout the entire map. Uh, that, that would be an amazing uh, amazing addition to Dota. Uh, they're just trading T1 towers. The T1 top already collapsed. Um, still 40% HP on the bottom T1 for the Radiant, but I think uh, they will use the Cardi. Isla just stay tanking the tower hits to keep his own catapult alive. Should be pretty easy with this Echo Save already picked up as well. I'm very scared about this Beastmaster free farming more than anything, I'll be completely honest with you. They're yeah, looking for Kill and Shaker though. If he gets considering chains. Uh, yep, he's gone. Is he? Okay, oh, wow. wow, that's a lot of damage. Wow, wow, way wow. Uh, and now Zorin in the fog, gonna do some damage. No more Mystic Flare, no more punch on the Tusk, and clearing has something on the back. Double Silence raw, maybe? Lane. Nagato will get a kill on the Oracle. We're not going for oh, the is going yet. in alone. The ultimate coming in, keeping Aphromush alive longer and longer. Stun coming in, silence, spin, stun, gonna get the kill. But Isla will be more than happy with that. Aphromush this time around not having more damage. Show TI to beat from the dire jungle to the T2 top and gets the kill onto Nagato. But that's a beautiful victory for Jordan. You got the kill onto the uh, Phantom Assassin. You got the Oracle out. You killed the Earthshaker at the very beginning of the team fight. And you only lost your two supports. Very, very well recovery. There is still a raw, of course, that we haven't seen reduced yet. Yeah, very interesting that uh, Shoti opted to TP back to chase the Tusk instead of roaring the two targets. Very interesting. I actually thought if he roars the two targets and with the PA coming in, could have potentially been something big, but yeah. Yeah, maybe Slight miscommunication there. A rare miscommunication, especially from Myanmar. Uh, Mage maybe not paying attention to all the CS in lane right there. <laughs> As we have the Blink Dagger on Young PH, I don't think we had it last team fight. No, but no Echo Slam, so they're smoking up despite not having Echo Slam, very interesting. And no level 6 on the Oracle, this Oracle is very behind both network and levels. As the Grimstroke is level 8, so yeah, very behind. Is Mage gonna step up? Skill lay may be a bit of a bait down here in mid. I don't think you've got the damage to... maybe, maybe with a silence from... What a dodge! Mage, can you break the silence? No. Gonna pop in, stun after stun, into a silence, only one hit onto the phantoms, and despite what was a beautiful dodge with the slide of fist, we'll collect the mid lane kill. And now this is where the big boy, none other than the Beastmaster, shows up with a, an entire army of Komodo dragons, a tomato, birds, and everything else you can find in the zoo. Tomato. Well, tomatoes, you gotta you gotta feed uh, the animals with tomatoes, right? That's right. Of course, he's going into the helm of the Overlord straight away. They actually want to defend middle. Taz, being in first. Oh, oh nice four staff. OK, 
Okay. Got Beautiful ultimate two. Roar! Two targets gonna separate each other. Nice burst onto Affirmation. Nagato gonna be destroyed as well. Mage, not enough damage as skill lane still alive, getting healed by the Oracle. And uh, you didn't protect the tower and you fed two supports. And Young PH can have Echo. Echo blinking one. Mage still prodding. Power of the Beastmaster, baby. That is a horrendous Grievous Courier from the Oracle, by the way. As we have Young again. ready to jump. Echo Slam! Fissure, stun from the Greenstroke, won't be needed, but we'll steal the kill. Skill late, just the life of a Greenstroke after the newest patch. And that's gonna be five heroes you lost in a row without trading any single one of the opponents. Yep, easy peasy. Have of the Overlord just around the corner too. They don't really have a good hero to deal with it either. Makes, makes me wonder, like you gave away Prophet game one, then you give away Beastmaster game two, even though you had a chance to pick him. And for, for this team fight, Dawnbreaker had ultimate, so could have TP'd, maybe not for the Ember Spirit, because he got blown up very fast. But uh, one of the other elements we got to talk about how the Myanmar draft synergy is very good is as the game progresses and the PA will join the fights, Beastmaster gets higher in levels. Uh, the attack speed from the passive out. We have Mystic Flare coming in. Gotta get a nice quick on uh, Zorain. No four step this time around. But yeah, Beastmaster granting attack speed to that Phantom Assassin is going to prove incredibly strong later on. They should have a behind the tower. Young PH, you gotta be careful. Silence, slow, task, punch on the creep. Oh, punch a creep. Not like this. Um, Mage. Happens, happens. We'll get the kill on to Grimstruck, but you're definitely not happy about that one. I Shaker mean, should have died too. Yep. If you if you are uh, skill lay right there, you're like, okay, I, I'll trade my life or my mids any single time of the day. And Mage is so far behind. Maybe probably one of his most lackluster performances on this Ember. All still below 6k, 15 minute mark. I'm more concerned about the Terrorblade, to be honest. He's sick. Yeah, yeah, and PA didn't pick up her. her uh, just picked up a battle fury, so it's gonna, she's gonna start farming now. But we're gonna contest this. The roar is back in play. Grimstroke's back alive. Oracle is here. Yeah, this tier two tower is still standing, despite what was a great attempt from Jordan that will now go back. They are pinging the gate, and I think they're considering maybe. Can they rush? They can't rush, can they? The camera will be very slow. I don't. I don't even think they can. But TB is already in the near the pit. No, he TP's back to them. Oh, okay, he goes back down, okay. They really want this T2 bottom. It kind of opens up the map for them, and I think it's, it's not a bad play, uh, but it is very risky. Their word has been awarded, so now they are aware there might be an observer there, so they're smoking past it. Very, very intelligent they move they right see here. They the Beastmaster. And they do secure the tower. This Mystic Flare phylactery with a few bursts from Sky does lots of damage if you can farm somehow reliably hit the punch into a Ice Shard. Oh. Punch, I shot, Mr. Flair, don't break ultimate, a young PH is done for the world. Oracle just slightly too far. But they seem to still want to fight Grim Show. Double, Double roar. roar yet again. Dawnbreaker going down, Mage can't do anything else. Nagato, everything cool down. Now it's silence. Taz is running into the team fight. Mage trying to do some damage. Can they catch anyone? Yes, they can. Skill it gets taken away, but no. Oracle pops the face eating. Ultimate on top of the uh Grim Show. More slow coming in. Taz is getting low. Whirling hey, Taz Axe is coming down to through. the creeps! Gonna have to suck Mage's life away. And Oracle TPs. Nagato, this is a big overcommit. Mage has to run away. Taz has to disengage. Does he have a remnant? Yes, he does. Can they get away with the life? Oh, he's Can got to run on him. PA? He's dead. Ooh. Maybe not. Mage playing with his life. Can Phantom Assassin oh, he's see? Slow. It's nighttime. Vision. One more remnant. The Hawk nerf. That, that's the one. You're still happy with the trade, I think, if you're Jordan. You did lose your Dawnbreaker, which is your highest network hero, but you managed to stay alive on the Ember and the Terror Blade, and they were the ones behind, and now the Terror Blade's network has accelerated, almost getting into the top three network spot. Yeah, but you can really see the problems mounting here. Like, the, the creep almost solo killed the, the Terror Blade of all heroes. Overwhelming... Uh uh, the helm of, oh, oh, that doesn't matter. Nagato jumping on. Oh, oh, Echo Slam coming in a bit too early. Got to dodge via the snowball. Isla doesn't get the stun. Link away from Young PH. And you trade your Echo Slam, but you stay alive with your, get away with your life. They're now looking to turn around. As KSH gets a kill down bottom on the PE. Aphromush taken out. Sky Red Mage and uh, food for this Phantom Assassin. As Young PH jumps again onto two. Task gonna roll in. Skill late. Next week, punch. ADR gonna get blown up. Double silence. Ultimate coming in a bit too late. Do they have how to stop this TP? Mage missing the searing chains. The creep wave did not help. 
He's a desolate on the Dawnbreaker, huh? that, was, that was a lot of damage coming through. And that was a very nicely timed uh, stun as well. Time for Roche with the Desolator, perhaps? Yeah, maybe that's why they, they wanted to wait for the Dezo now, and I think they might just have the damage to take it in well, quite fast fashion uh, for a minute 18. Yeah, no Echo. Even if Earthshaker would buy back, and, uh, you don't want to contest this. Without Grimstroke and uh, Earthshaker Ultimate, your team fight is way more uh, reduced. And look at this Skyrat still back. Galactory fail. Almost as much damage as the Ember Spirit, more damage dealt on the Skyrath than the Beastmaster. Yeah, I mean, Aphromush has been having an absolutely amazing game. It's smoked up again, looking for kill in mid lane, but there's no one real there. Nice map movement by Jordan. But, but despite them killing Roche, they actually lost the 1k gold advantage. <laughs> Will they be able to find anyone? Echo Slam, level 12, only one point in it. Oh, they didn't see the, the activation of the Watcher. I think they're aware, because when uh, Radiant left the Triangle, there was a dire Watcher in the Triangle. So yeah, they smoked in the river, but they literally disappeared from the Triangle. I think you're aware of that, and that's why uh, we see on the top of the map uh, two of the heroes just laying behind the T2. Haste room for the Shaker. And other than those few seconds that uh, the Grimstroke was kept alive by the Oracle, I'll be honest, I have not been very impressed by this Oracle performance thus far. And I said uh, he is one of the most important heroes of the Radiant Draft. Yeah, it, it is quite easy for them to get on top of him, though. So he has to be in a very good position. Otherwise, they just burst him first. That's the problem when you play Oracle. Everybody always wants to kill you first. So your positioning is absolutely paramount to your team's success. Yeah, definitely positioning to defend this T1 tower. We uh, mentioned a few days ago how important uh, this is. Uh, this tower is with current meta. And Ayla gets slowed. We'll try to maybe deal some hits to the neutral crypt, but not going to be the case as Nagato and Aphromush. The potential of kill from these two supports is great as we just lost the Aegis on the Dawnbreaker in less than He's all by himself. Someone helped on. We can be being popped. Roar coming in. Not going to do anything else. Can we get a Sunder in and disengage? Uh, no, I'm not even going to try. And that's why having Roche doesn't... Uh, Taz is also in trouble. Taz, doesn't matter. You get Sunder. Got to get first hit. Finally, the supports arrive. But it's way too late. And now the BKB gets popped by KSA. The Oracle Ultimate skill lane will still lie. Oh, no, no, you too mad. Echo, Echo Slam, triple kill, oh. team wide. No. And Myanmar just turned the game on its head back. One by one, they walk in. Like, like this is really unbecoming of Jordan, to be honest. You wouldn't have seen this yesterday or the day before. I'm really wondering if that game won, you know, potentially caused some sort of overreaction in, in terms of gameplay. That Dawnbreaker was definitely feeling very confident with the BKB Aegis, but it didn't matter. Well, they have Beastmaster Roar. Yeah. They have a PA that goes through. You have no armor. Like, that is why I keep saying I don't like these uh, like carry off lane builds, because if he had like a Crimson Guard there or, uh, or Guardian Grease or something, he wouldn't even have died. We're just re-watching this. A Dawnbreaker respawning. Yeah. Look, look at BKB. me. Pop BKB and look how fast he dies. He dies in the duration of a Roar. Yeah. And then obviously Taz gets chipped damage and vision from the Whirling Axis. Uh, the Observer Ward in lane, of course, very good position as and well. And then one by one by one. One support comes in, Nagaru comes in, Aphromush comes in, Mage says hello. And yeah, this cannot happen at this level of game. <laughs> yeah, especially not uh, versus a team like Myanmar that has proven to be very well practiced and rehearsed. And uh, I think if you just, yeah, you're not happy if Dawn loses the Aegis. Uh, we have an initiation oh, here, but the face hitting negates all of the damage. And now, this V8 does have the BKB, will be ready to jump. Skyrat makes one, two, Fissure, three, and still very much slow. Doesn't want to even use the BKB. KSH just running and walking around. Two kills, supports are out again. Tip for Zorane, and that's what I want to say. Nature's Prophet game one, Oracle just fates it, nullifying all of the damage, and this Grimstroke is tickling my ears with his laughter. Of course, he didn't have. Uh, he didn't use the BKB. He could have, could have always done that if Oracle wasn't in position. But of course, we spoke about it yesterday. How important these BKB seconds really are for you. Now, here's the real question: How do you actually recover from this? Because 
your draft doesn't play very well from behind. You're playing against a Beastmaster PA draft. You're going to die so fast. You're the, you're, you're the analyst here, Black. You tell me how you're coming back, because my only answer would be you're coming back to the lower bracket, because you're not turning this one around. It's, it's going to be incredibly difficult, especially because your answer to the PA is the Terror Blade. Terror Blade is really under farm. He doesn't have any way to deal with the PA yet. No MKB, no Silver Ash. He doesn't even have the HP to survive a fight. And the PA is quick buying a shard. That means uh, literally everybody will die in a split second. As uh, we have a TP. Uh, down bottom, the one lane where the Dire has had success. Um, but look at KSH already with their 8-second BKB. It's Aphromush, even breathes towards the lane, will get destroyed. Hiding in a nice spot. This is so dangerous and such a, such a scary position right now for a Skyrat Mage. We'll try to build a Ghost Scepter, but at this point, it doesn't even matter. You could just burst, get bursted from a Stifling Dagger flying around. Especially here, like Skyrat, it's a 3 armor. So say hello to the creep wave. It's such a slow here to cut creep wave with though. Uh. <laughs> they don't even care. They have a full creep wave and they have a banner creep. They will get uh, some of the last hits of the ancients and the bottom dire jungle. We'll probably try as well. Okay, young PH gets stunned. Forces a TP back, may, might hit the Tormentor. Nope, still getting pursued and taken away. Young PH chasing around. They hoped that by pressuring Young PH mid will get all the TPs back and stop the Tormentor, but no. And that's gonna give Young PH a shot on it of his own. Yeah, shake a shot isn't the best in the game. It's always very nice to have lower Fissure cooldown. Of course, you get the extra stuns as well. You can walk off your own Fissure. But I would have much rather like to see it on the Oracle, of course. Even the green stroke. I think Grim probably bought his own. I'd assume. Yeah, it's such a such a strong one. You gotta buy it. This Oracle is looking to build a blink dagger in around 600 gold, and they are smoked up. And if this is a successful team fight, we might be looking at game here, Black. That's young PH. is level 15. Blink, Ag, Shard, another 3k in the bank. I, I don't know how you can stop. Uh, well, not one of the Myanmar cores. I don't. Uh, yeah. They scanned out the Dawnbreaker too. Oh, she's, she's done. She does have a BKB, but I don't think you want to pop this here. You just gotta... Okay. Okay, okay. They're Fated coming in a lot. The, roar, the Echo Slam. You didn't waste your BKB this time around. 45 seconds, not that bad. Uh, the mid lane is getting pushed, so we'll force the Green Stroke TP. That's the thing, though. They can afford to do this because they're not on any sort of timer. Like, offlane, Dawnbreaker... Mage? Oh, man. Mage? Oh! He had a remnant out. <laughs> like I said, PA shard, you just die. And oh, another 1k away from the axe. He just finished the shard a minute and a half ago. How? Well, the solo kill there just gave him 700 gold. But yeah, he, he's very farmed. The power of the PA, man. The reason why it's so popular in this tournament right now. But again, they're getting so many heroes of the tournament right now. Beast. Shaker, PA, Grimstroke. Yeah, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. It, it's clearly clearly something that, that they have looked at. I'm like, these are the best heroes this patch. If two of them get banned, we get our hands on another three. That's fine. And that's what they've been doing. Whereas Jordan has the Skyrath and the Dawnbreaker, of course. But we can clearly see they have less of an impact than the Beastmaster has and yep. the PA. And Beastmaster now just finishes AC as well. He's just buffing up the peer with the Overlord Aura, the extra damage, the bonus armor. You get the bonus armor and the text from AC, the negative armor on the enemies. This peer is going to shred absolutely everybody. We'll have the Aghanims as well and another creep wave or so. Uh, level 21, this Phantom Assassin is looking ready to 1v5 the entire Jordanian side. And certainly here you can do it too. You get a kill. All your spells refresh, you get another kill. Like, I, I even think if, let's say, this PA jumps in, gets the terribly low, Sunder, you kill the PA, I still think the other four Myanmar heroes would be able to wipe your team. I wouldn't be surprised. I think this Beastmaster alone can already, uh, almost do it. BKB. The supports, too, are so strong. BKB. But then, then, how do you even kill PA? You have Oracle there with a Blink Dagger. Is that a double damage on the Earthshaker? I hope not. That's scary. 
Uh, Axe is done. Tier 3 neutral items up for grabs. Oh, it's a shield rune, sorry, my bad. Shield rune 40, uh, Earth Shaker, but he now has an Echo Slam. Uh, they will be waiting for another 25 seconds, and he should have a little under a minute to kill it before he wants to walk down bottom. Uh, Wisdom room available, a rune available for both sides. Uh, but look, look at how scared Jordan plays. They are all bundling up together in the bottom side of the map, trying to get some last hits. Mage essentially protecting the Terrorblade Illusion yeah. with uh, a DD on in his bottle. And as you said, uh, BKB on Ember Spirit as well. Roche is up now. Shouldn't be any sort of contest. Beastmaster makes this quick and easy. Look how fast it thing fall to Beastmaster there. So many kids coming in from the snap the assassin. It feels like she's attacking every, well, three times per second. The Axe is finished. Well All through the portal. Up. Oh, this is scary. We might be looking at a five versus five. Jordan, you might, you, they're spotting this. They have spotted the dragon. They've spotted the Earthshaker. They see the wave being fueled by the Battle Fury. Uh, uh, yeah, blurred PA. You gotta get out of there. Mage, just run. Give them the T2. Hell, even the bottom set of racks, I don't think you can contest until someone from Myanmar overcommits or until the Aegis is gone. Yeah, but even so, I really don't know who's actually going to deal with the PA. No one, no one. Because TP doesn't have any item to pierce the evasion. He's going now for a BKB, doesn't have the MKB, has a Scotty, Yasha, hasn't even finished the Manta. I think he might have disassembled it, if that's even possible anymore. And, uh, yeah. How can we go? Beastmaster is notoriously fast at destroying buildings, of course. Yeah, we saw earlier how much uh, damage he dealt. I think at around 20 minute mark, it was over 11k. But now he doesn't even need to do it himself. He can just empower his PA with all of the attack speed and obviously the neutrals. Right click away, blur on the high ground. They seem to be gathering up to contest, but who are you gonna jump on? Are you gonna punch the PA up, Mystic Fairy, you gotta take the Aegis, okay. There was the damage, but Mage, Mage, gets right in the background, Mage gonna get taken out. No Echo Slam has been used, PA, no BKB, taking out the Skyrun, after which is down, gonna Whoa. jump on double kill, godlike, BKB for both cores, can Taz do anything in this position? Yes, he can just run away and look at his base. an Echo. Young PH, KSH, they wanna jump in the base, they're gonna do no, it! No, 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 and the save from the Oracle. That is, that, that's the statement, get out of this game, please. Like I said, Black, the one way of getting back into this is making your way through the lower bracket. As I don't think, we, we might be seeing another fight in 10 seconds. They are going for the tier fours. No buyback for the Dire, 21k gold lead yet again. And are they gonna call it? Yeah, they're calling it GG, no well played. <laughs> No well played. Uh, but it, was, it wasn't it was well played, uh, Black. It was flawlessly played by Myanmar, both games of that series. And they are officially in the top three of the Yash IESF World Esports Championship. Yeah, big, big congrats to them. They're just amazingly aggressive. And I really love how much better they've just gotten since the, the qualifiers back in, in Riyadh. Unfortunately, Jordan are still being plagued by some of the similar problem. Because Jordan, amazing players, but their draft is really lackluster in a lot of situations. Give away the beast, give away the profit. They don't really have a good answer to it. Both games, you kind of just get overrun. Yeah. Uh, splendid, splendid to see Myanmar play. And uh, I, I, I got to say it, I said it after game one. They are looking like the best team right now. And back-to-back -back top three placements in LAN tournaments for them in a LAN environment. That's very, very important. And it will be interesting to see them, how they can do in an afternoon game with the audience here, no curtains covering themselves. Because, you know, it might be a little bit of that advantage that they have just playing in the confidence of just their own team without anyone actually visually in their sight. But little do we know, it might empower them even further, you know. Like, if you're playing an aggressive style like this and you're feeling the crowd, that can just be... Even better. Uh, it can just be devastating for the enemy, too. Because yeah. the crowd's always cheering for you. Uh, it will be very interesting to see. But, of course, Jordan, they're not out yet. They will have... Do they play today or tomorrow? I think they are going to be one of the teams that is going to be playing tomorrow. Tomorrow? Okay, so they have a long time to figure things out. Because again, the draft, you, you have to have answers against these meta heroes if you let them through. Because they are meta heroes for a reason. They're strong, they're easy to play, and they're very efficient. Like yeah. this Beastmaster we saw. Landing phase was awesome. Double roar, every team fight. Help, and, and his auras, he had three auras. The text speed aura, AC aura, overload aura. The Peter shredded everyone, thanks to him. Yeah, and then the Dawnbreaker did very well at the beginning and was the top net worth. And I think 
not singling Isla out for that misplay in mid because, okay, you lost your agency, you died, and you wasted your BKB, fine. There was many unlucky circumstances, but then the whole team one came by one. on time. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the turn. That was the turning point. That was sure. definitely the turnaround of that uh, of that entire momentum in the series when Myanmar took advantage. We're like, okay, well, you're going to give away your lives for free. We're just going to take it. And we are looking right now. Young PH on the Earthshaker, 649, Mage, 258. And I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I think Young PH could have played literally any other hero there. His impact was good, but I don't feel like Earthshaker was the game changer there. I think all of the other heroes, the, the Beastmasters, the, the supports, were the ones to make or break the series. Yeah, I think I would have to agree. Although, he did shut down Mage quite very hard, hard in the yeah. lane. Yeah, lots of denies, lots of blasters himself. But again, this is the nature of the matchup. You can't really do much as a melee hero against uh, an Earthshaker. But yeah. Yeah, Jordan, uh, they, they'll be having to fight through the lower bracket where the United States is already waiting and they're hungry. They swapped their roles, it looks much better. It's going to be a tough run through the lower bracket. Yeah, the lower bracket is, is going to be very, very scary as we are going to start seeing some of those games in the afternoon portions of today. But now we are waiting for the winner's interview with uh, one of the players from Myanmar. And uh, I don't even know what I want to ask them because I feel like they're going to be quite secretive about everything. They want to keep all the strats and all of the tactics because they're doing so well. And you know, it's a, it's a risk at this point because everybody will be watching you right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to ask them about the, the, the fountain dive at the end. <laughs> they had a clear mission. Yeah. They didn't stop, you know, they were like, ah, where are they going? Oh yeah, oh terrible, you ran to the fountain. You're the strongest hero. Well, get out of the game, bro. Yeah, I mean, we saw the Phantom Assassin kind of like clicking back and then Young PH was like, no. no. Follow me. You come in. If you don't come in, you're kicked. He was like, oh, okay. So sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they knew the Sunder was already used, so there was no danger, I think, in turning around. But even if the Sunder was not used, uh, chain stun from the Earthshaker was more than enough. And that PA didn't even need a Skull, a skull Basher or an Abyssal Blade because you don't need to stun the opponent to just kill them in a second. That's right. I mean, he, he, as you said, he picked up the Shard, picked up the Axe Scepter. I think he got like three kills almost instantly, kept using his... Uh, what's it even called? Uh, the the no, the the knife thing. Fan of knives. Oh yeah, the, the yeah, fan of yeah. knives, which is like minus twenty percent max health every time. Uh, Absolutely. PPA is a crazy hero. Absolutely incredible. But let's talk about MVPs, right? I know who I have as my MVP, but I'm gonna put you on the spot, Black. Who was your MVP from that series, and why was it from? Uh, uh, Alex Zorin. That's my man. I agree, 100%. And yes, the Oracle, that one Fate Edict up, up top that protected the P was crucial. But the Furion, man. The yeah. Game 1 Nature's Prophet. Okay, Game 1, definitely MVP. Game 2, maybe the Beastmaster, to be honest. Nature's Wrath? Nature's Wrath, yeah. The ultimate. That's right. Oh, I get it. It's a joke. That's a good joke. Sorry. I'm, I'm you, fi so you finally got it. Ah. Some, sometimes, so, sometimes a bit slow. Thanks. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Zori, uh, maybe one of the more unknown players in uh, my Myanmar squad. One, maybe one of the younger ones. I'm not quite sure of his age, but showing 55. up. Fifty-five. Oh, well, young. Gun. Fifty-five. Where are we going with that? I anyway. I, I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Zorin, the MVP of the series, and you love to yeah. see a support, you know, show us what impact you can have on this position four these days. And yeah, Oracle is more of a position five traditional hero, but uh, yeah, congratulations to Myanmar, and I cannot wait to talk to one of the winners and find out what went through their mind, including uh, the drafting phase and getting their hands on all of these very, very strong heroes. Now, speaking of Jordan, though, what do you think are their biggest changes they have to make? Obviously, draft is a thing. Other than the draft, do you think there's much to do? Okay. We have to talk about it. We already did talk about it. That one situation happened in mid lane can't happen. Okay, Isla messed up. Happens. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. But the entire team can't commit to mistakes after that. No, no. I think what you meant to say, anybody makes mistakes. But in that team fight, everybody made a mistake on the Jordan side. Yeah, <laughs> I, literally just trickled in one by one, right? Like, yeah. Like imagine if a water ball just got. Kick, 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 kick. Yeah, they it's just done. squeezed them all out, and sadly, it was the end 
for Jordan in the upper bracket. They will come back and hopefully stronger than today. Uh, and we will talk more about them later on in the tournament. But that is it, apparently, uh, from you, Black, for today. It was a That's pleasure right. to share the three series in a row. Two last night, one today. Much love, We my will friend. see you back tomorrow as we will be going on a short break. And when we're back, I will be joined by Jeeves for more action of the World Esports Championships 2023 here in Yash.
Welcome back, Yash, to the World Esports Championships 2023, live right here in the Palash Amphitheater. I am Wax and joined by the outstanding Jeeves. Jeeves, welcome to the stream, welcome back in Yash, and welcome back to probably my most favorite series of the day. It's Mongolia, it's Kyrgyzstan, and it's going to go all down in a best of three. Well, this is going to be a goddamn hot season, uh, series. Mongolia have shown incredible form. Kyrgyzstan as well. Two powerhouse teams in this tournament. I think it's definitely going to go to a best of three, all three games. I agree. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm super excited for this one. Uh, I've been waiting for it all day, actually. You know, I was looking at like the, the docket today, and I was like, okay, this is the one. That's like where magic happens. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, I'm I'm excited to see Zayas back in action again. And uh, Bet Mongolia, you know, they brought the heat. Uh, they did drop a game yesterday. The first one all tournament. Yeah, yeah they dropped the first one all tournament long. But um, did you see the heroes they were picking? They were kind of like toying with the uh, enemy the, a little bit. Is Mongolia the Dark Willow carry team? They did, uh, no, I think that was mine more. Okay, okay. My no, best. no, no. So what they did was they played game one Riki mid. Oh, wow. And then Rubik? And then Rubik. Absolutely flashy coming in from the mid player. Unbelievable. So Sanctity, he got absolutely hammered on the Riki and then he made this insane comeback. You know, uh, the Rubik was also like, it was kind of devilish. The damage I put on it was insane. Like just murdering people left, right and center. But it still, it was a Rubik, you know. So eventually, you know, Game three, they pull out an actual mid hero, and it's over. Uh, unbelievable, and uh, I'm looking, I, I mean, I was talking actually to one of the Mongolia players just before this, and they seem extremely confident. I asked them, oh, what do you think about your chances in this upcoming series? And they were like, oh, I'm feeling good about my chances against every team in this tournament. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, these are some fighting words. They did say, though, that Kyrgyzstan is a bit of a dark horse and they're not quite prepared for them because they were not expecting them to be here. Okay, so the uh, I think you did the interview with the Mongolian team after their yes, victory. Yes, yesterday. yes, that's correct. Okay. And they were saying, oh, you know, I would rather play this team or that team and we're not too worried about Kyrgyzstan because their, uh, their main carry is not here. You know, because during the group stages they played with like their uh, oh, Ruslan, I think, oh, lower level MMR, sort of 4K MMR. Uh, but yeah, Kami's here. So uh, just been putting on oh, a yeah, show, a masterclass, a masterclass for, a master class for sure. So uh, yeah, they're, they're, that's definitely gonna be a stiff, uh, you know, a stiff competition. I wonder if they're gonna prioritize maybe trying to ban out the uh, faceless void that he's played so well. Um, it's such an annoying hero, obviously. Like he goes really well in the late game. The Chronosphere can put a stop to most uh, teams' aggression. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how much Mongolia are going to. Uh, acknowledge that strength. Yeah, and as we talk about them, we just had the pleasure of seeing their lineup on the screen earlier, but you mentioned Sanctity, their mid laner, 4-2-3, uh, full stack of roster. But now, Team Kyrgyzstan, we got R, we got Zayat, obviously the star player of the team on position 4, we got Max, who's been doing phenomenal, uh, and this is where we are looking at uh, a, a non-updated version, because Kami should be here. Sure. But uh, obviously we then had Blizzy and uh, oh, Kami. Well, Ford. Blizzy's their off their off laner. Yes. Very strong. Very, Absolutely. Very impressive. Very uh, storied uh, individual. I mean, same with Zayas. Obviously, Zayas was uh, second place at TI last year with Team Secret. And uh, that, but the thing about both of these teams, both of these teams, there's a lot of national pride. They're here to prove that uh, Kyrgyzstan and the Mongolia are serious contenders on the world stage. Yeah. And we're in the upper bracket. One of these teams is going to go through to the upper bracket final. Top three. Top three guaranteed. Um, yeah, so, I, I mean, this is, this is the competition. This is the what we're looking for. And you were mentioning that Faceless Void. But since that Faceless Void that has been banned in the last series uh, uh -huh. versus Mongolia, uh, they've been running some strats that were so good that Team United States started copying them, and that were those were stats, uh, strats, sorry, surrounding the Warlock pick. They've been running this Warlock paired with a Sven, paired with a Gyro, and a Zayat on a Lion. Those three combinations have proved to be deadly, so far so that the United States replicated both of the strats in both of the maps they won last night. Ah, uh, yeah, the Mudman strategy, right? The, uh, <laughs> the, the Soup Lord, you know? <laughs> Uh, 
I mean, the, 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 how do you beat Warlock? Uh, you know, Warlock strats was you just take Rubik, right? And now you also Ooh. are the suit master. You know, the double suit master. Got a little head to head here: Sanctity versus uh, Askold. This is. Uh, I don't think Ruslan's playing though, so we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, well, uh, this this might be Kami statistics, but we don't have a Kami picture because he came in after the media sure. day. So it's a uh, the carry, uh, the the mid to the, the mid to carry comparison here, right? Uh, Sanctity is the mid hero. Yeah, the uh, player versus uh, versus the, the carry. What would be the carry of uh, Kyrgyzstan? Yeah. So the the one versus the two here, but uh, yeah, I mean uh, Sanctity, like I say. Um, when he's on meme heroes, which I don't think they're going to meme in this game, but when they're in meme heroes, uh, he, even then he looks good. Even then he looks solid. And I, I talked to Black about uh, he plays uh, quite a lot with um, uh, both teams yes, in Southeast does. Asia. And uh, he was telling me that Sanctity, he loves these unusual, you know, flavor picks. You Pops on life, you could even go like, you know, all of yeah. these out of, out of pocket picks uh, that no one expects in this meta. And that's what you love to have from one of your players. Uh, you know, you're, you're gonna start having to think, oh, do we ban his random f heroes and give him the meta ones, or we still stick to the meta and give him the random heroes? I think it's very important in this particular series as well that both teams maintain their, uh, their identity. You know, they of play course. their own game force the enemy to try and respond to them and uh, we'll wait and see we'll have to we'll have to wait and see how that pans out i do not think we're going to see a nature's prophet or gyrocopter in this series but you, you don't know, think so no i think they'll get banned like you know okay i i think uh, nature's prophet should definitely be off the table it just uh, went through the draft just the previous series and it was uh, horrendous to watch it was a 7 1 11 support in minute eight and uh, higher net was net worth than pretty much everybody else so nature's prophet should be completely deleted if you ask me uh, it's not deleted but it is banned by kyrgyzstan who's also going for a phoenix first phase ban whereas mongolia responds with a classic invoker and a storm spirit so they're trying to neaten mongolia are focusing on the mid of Kyrgyzstan, trying to kneecap yeah. the, their mid player. Um, and you kind of have like a, I mean, Phoenix probably position four as well, maybe five. So focus on those support heroes. They get a lot of bans though before we get the first pick coming out here. So uh, yeah, there goes the Vengeful Spirit. It's a pretty classic hero at the moment, very strong, uh, really good in the lane. So really popular in Southeast Asia as well. So not unusual to see it banned out. Yeah, obviously one of the stronger heroes that uh, I feel like Venge gets banned in the first phase of bans all the time, but always as the third ban, never, fir never first or second, uh, which I find just uh, pretty hilarious to be completely honest with you. But we got to talk about the Mongolia first pick. So that's why they're taking a bit more time right now um, for both sides to, the, to go for the last ban. They will take out the Dawnbreaker and the Brewmaster, which... So I'm still seeing... Oh! <laughs> Dark Willow. So and Dark Willow. Will this be Dark Willow Kari or Dark Willow 4? For Mongolia's side, it would be very interesting, but I was just talking to BNC of uh, Team Romania, and he was telling me how strong he believes Dark Willow is, and still underpicked despite being quite contested, and Mongolia seems to believe the same, and like you said, the reason it can be a flex pick for them, unlike other teams. I mean, it has been banned a lot, though. I mean, we say it's been unpicked, but that's literally because there's been a crosshair <laughs> on her, like every single series I've, I've, I've casted at least. And uh, yeah, so the Doom, Ooh. so Beastmaster's still in there. Yeah, and it's just being completely ignored. I don't know why, because uh, Beastmaster, you know, and Gyrocopter and PA. Gyrocopter gets kicked to oh, the curb bad. right now. Okay. Yeah, Faceless good. Void as well. Mongolia keen to take that one out of the equation. So Sven is still in the pool for Kyrgyzstan, and uh, Sven Warlock, both of them there. But this Doombringer, I, I, I gotta ask you, Chiefs, first pick for Doom after all the nerfs? Well, it still has Doom. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, I think it was uh, Team United States. They prioritized playing Doom, I think, in a few of their series on the main stage uh, versus Kyrgyzstan as well. So maybe they saw something. I mean, Kyrgyzstan actually handedly beat the United States. Quite a beat down, yeah. Uh, but of course, Mu is very, uh, very famously known for his offlane. And specifically, he's been a really strong Doom player historically. Yeah, of course. So I don't know if that's maybe sparked a little interest in Kyrgyzstan. They're like, hey, the Rubik's that's taken pretty out. good. Well, yeah, you pick up Doom, like you take out the Rubik to make sure the enemy doesn't get Doom. Of course. Uh, the other thing that kind of goes well with the Doom, though, is the Grimstroke. You know what this also tells me, by the way, Dreamstroke, great pick. Pretty much every single game today we've had a Dreamstroke. And I just got to mention, this Doombringer tells Mongolia, you've got the Beastmaster. 
take it. We can beat Beastmaster. And they're not panning it either, and they get There's their hands on the, the Warlock. Warlock. No real surprise there. We just talked it up, and uh, Mr. Mud, he's going to be here. Yeah. You got to be looking for that Sven next as well, right? Is Mongolia going to get Sven as a counter pick here? That's the real question. Uh, do you want to run a Dark Windows Sven? That's very possible, and I think it was actually attempted last night. Um, obviously, the way the new Jinx works, you can throw it onto the Sven that you just run and hit you, and you don't just take physical damage, you take magic damage from Jinx as well. So it could be a counter play, but it's the Batrider. Okay, so they like to run this as a five here. This is... So far, the most out there draft it's ha we've had since the group stage, I would say. No, uh, I mean, uh, we, I think we saw Mongolia run Batrider yesterday. Primal Beast and... and the, the Primal Beast yeah. is, a, is a really good solution as well. It kind of forces your enemy in an awkward place. It comes with the, the Axe upgrade with a Brick. And obviously both Batrider and Primal Beast can kind of get away from the Warlock upheaval. Right? Yeah. Um, Batrider flies away. Primal Beast they charges also away. Both have BKB piercing disables. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then the Primal Beast pairs very well with the Dark Willow Jinx, like we said. Yeah, so he's already doing incredible amounts of AoE damage. You throw the Jinx on top. What an absolute nightmare. Of course, Dark Willow, one of the few heroes with three ultimates. <laughs> <laughs> Ice Frog with the, the, the big brain there. So, uh, from what I want to see though from Kyrgyzstan now, is this is, right? uh, well, they're going to get the Pangolier for the mid lane. For um, yeah, so that's a, it's a pretty good one. I imagine they play the Primal Beast on the off lane though. Pangolier mid is here is going to be very interesting. That means you have already two melee cores. Uh, again, I suppose you could run a Doom 4. Uh, I think we have seen Zayat do that a few times, especially back in his secret days, but that's very greedy for. Yeah, especially if you kind of go into the Midas build, which you kind of want to do on Doom. You know, you yeah. already have the Devourer, which is going to accelerate to some extent, but then getting the Midas on top, it could get it could get kind of awkward. I'm not overly against it if the enemy is running like Chen or Enchantress, where you've got that creep that you can gobble up, you of know? Course. Uh, but yeah, I, I imagine it's going to be off lane, and then we have this Pangolier for the mid lane. Very interesting, though. Pangolier pick, uh, if it will be Batrider mid or Primal Beast, Pango deals quite well with both of them, can kind of get away from either of those two, so... No, uh, I'm pretty confident it's, it's a five. five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Kyrgyzstan is taking their sweet time, and they're gonna go for the Jeev special. Jeev, it's the one and only. It's the Bloodseeker. So, in this particular matchup, Bloodseeker, very good versus the Primal Beast, very good versus what Bat wants to do as soon as he initiates in there. You know, normally you want to go in there, lasso a target, pull them out, but uh, all of a sudden you're bleeding from your backside and it makes it incredibly difficult to do anything. I don't know if I 100% like it here that we're now three melees on three cores here. Uh, unless it's a Doom support, maybe. Unless it's a Doom support, yeah. Uh, but still, it's, uh, it's a little bit awkward. Bloodseeker plus Warlock as well. <sighs> it's a bit of a lame duck lane. It's, it's got very, very high sustain, but... Uh, it doesn't feel, there's not much uh, potential for murdering, you know, because there's no stun, there's no kind of like... Uh, yeah, I, I guess you, you count on the Warlock and obviously Bloodseeker combo to get the opponents low enough. The Bloodseeker doesn't need to stun them, just chases them down. So you throw down the soup and then, you know, Bloodseeker just can, can play around that maybe. But yeah. we go for the TA here. Normally TA finds herself in the safe lane position. Yeah, I would say TA so. TA versus Bloodseeker again. I think I like the matchup as Bloodseeker. Honestly, I can I with Blood Rage, I can eat through the, the shield very quickly. I think I think there's I'm looking at three TA counters already from Kyrgyzstan, so I'm not a big fan of Templar Assassin here. But I think I think Scorched Earth breaks breaks reflection quite we could, fast. We could potentially see a Bloodseeker action. Yeah, of course. I've, I've, we've seen one last night, and Bloodseeker has been... I think we have a 100% win rate on the Bloodseeker, this uh, on the main stage, on the Bloodseeker. Uh, and uh, obviously, banning the Viper. Viper kind of deals a lot with the Primal Beast and breaks the TA in half. Grimstroke on the other side, although it's a hero that could have been picked by Kyrgyzstan themselves. They have last pick, so could be nabbed by Mongolia. I here. think, though, they were uh, they were really suffering for other disables over in Kyrgyzstan. I mean, obviously, of course, yeah. the Spirit Link, though, versus the Rupture on the Doom, together, those are, you know, you're magnifying. You've got four Ruptures, four Dooms. Yep. That's pretty sick. 
Um, but, yeah, but at so the same they, time, you had lasso. They have, that they have no space. They have no space in their lineup to bring it in, so it's fair enough. They're taking their sweet time for their uh, final ban right here as Mongolia is playing uh, a rather different draft compared to most of the other teams this tournament, and we're still not sure which one of these heroes will fulfill the role of what core. And uh, yeah, Zayats doesn't seem the most confident, but very interesting, Mongolia is the first team this tournament to not ban the Earth Spirit. Um, hmm. Okay, they get rid of the Undying, and then on the other side of things, they get rid of the Dark Seer. Yeah. So they they think it's a doom. They think it's a doom four. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Dias has run it before, so maybe perhaps. Perhaps. I think Kyrgyzstan is not sure themselves. They just want to see the full lineup from Mongolia, and they have two, two and two, two over two minutes right now, Jeeves, to make something out of this draft. And yeah. I mean, that's a hell of a lot of reserve time. You know, they could they go to the toilet, order their pizza, come back, and then pick their hero. Sure. They could probably. Uh, they could probably watch one of the previous games today. Yeah, that time. some of them were so fast, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I love seeing a bit of different picks right here, and it's, wow, the Shadow oh, Demon. Okay, so uh, maybe we huh? do get the mid bot rider then. Or mid primal and off mid bot. Primal 4? No. No. No, it's got to be bot. No, it could be. It but could why, be. Well, I mean, with the Blood Seeker on the table, why would you make the bot rider a core? Ooh. And the Beastmaster, obviously, the Beastmaster. making his way through the draft. Kyrgyzstan says, okay, you guys are weird. We're just going to pick the most OP hero. So this is a guarantees the Zayas uh, position for Doom. That is correct. going to pick it up right now. Max on the Warlock. Zodiac, of course, with the mid uh, Panglier Kami on the Bloodseeker in the safe lane. And Blizzy on uh, the Beastmaster. Now, Blizzy, hardcore Beastmaster player for the old Beastmaster. Okay. I don't think much has changed too much <laughs> with, the, uh, with the bird dive. <laughs> Uh, over on the other side of things, it will be a 4-2-3 Kari Willow. It will be the offlane Primal Beast, the mid Templar Assassin, and they actually are going to run the 5 bot, which which makes sense, right? Because the Bloodseeker kind of devaluing it as a core pick. And then I guess it's a 4... Uh, a 4... Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon, yeah. Question for you, Jeeves. Let me, let me see how well we, because I don't really know, uh, the patch notes. Do the birds target Dark Willow in the Shadow Realm? No. Nothing does, right? Yeah, but it's a, it's an. I, I mean, I'm asking. No, you. no, 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 no. It's it, it's it's ta it, you still have to have the target for the bird. They so don't even see her. Is it not ground ground grounded on the area? Uh, I mean, if you target, no, it's all Mac, isn't it? Uh, I, 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 it's automatic, but like, do the birds no, automatically they target don't even the see her? Stealth, stealth. Okay, so this might be a make or break pick, and it's not the first time Mongolia's running it, and. Yeah, Romania, we will be seeing a Dark Willow yet again on the main stage. Jeeves, who do you have in this game one of the series? I mean, I, I'm, I don't even care about their draft. I see Bloodseeker. I'm going with Bloodseeker, bro. I mean, I'm maybe a little bit biased, but uh, I mean, both teams are going to be phenomenal here. So, um, and I do like the, the Bot Rider kind of play, but I think this mid TA. And it's not really like okay. It's probably going to beat the crap out of the Pangolier, yep. okay, for sure. It gives them an early roach potential with the way that she itemizes. But uh, you got the Beast Master, you got the sustain from the Warlock, you got the soup, you got this random Doom just coming in and wrecking your show, and then you've got Bloodseeker just making hey, well, you know, while the sun is shining here and Yashi, and uh, I'm I'm dying, to, I'm dying for this. I think Kyrgyzstan, game one. I feel like both teams got away with what they wanted, and I have seen more of Kyrgyzstan so far, so I will take them just Very because well. of that Beastmaster, but I would love to see Mongolia pull this one off with these phenomenal five picks. So I'm taking Kyrgyzstan. Both of us have their draft as favorites. Sure. And again, I do think the Warlock Beastmaster will prove too much as they are some of the strongest heroes this patch. I mean, by far, it's not like 100%, uh, of course, for Kyrgyzstan. Never but, is, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mongolia can definitely show their chops here. So we go out here. They're both going to end up smoked. Okay, I like this little bit of a little bit of a wrap around here from the dire on the uh, on the high ground there. They're trying to get some eyes on that mid lane. Spotted the watcher already. Yeah, a little ping coming out. Uh, some super good warding from both teams there, giving some uh, some nice vision of uh, rotations and whatnot. Very early on, uh, dire deep jungle cliff ward. If you can notice right there at the bottom of the primal beast, very interesting. Not quite what I was expecting to see, but uh, 
Mongolia will be patient. We see a lot of teams going in the jungle and they're being like, uh, let's just go back, get their bounty runes. But they are being very, very patient right now, waiting for those bounty runes and for the rotation back bottom. I mean, obviously, both teams are very much aware of like how the other team plays in these first blood situations. So you don't want to overcommit and you want to go for that 50 50 rune exchange, not, the, not lose anything. I love this a little uh, hello there. And it's actually three bounty runes for Mongolia. And Zayas manages to rescue the situation a little bit up top. Gets one back the other way for Kyrgyzstan. And we are underway. Max already placing a, a sentry ward, uh, getting ready to do word anything, that, but nothing was placed. You know, checking every single corner in the shadow of the trees. But uh, nice block down mid for Sanctity on his ranged uh, Temple Assassin. Yeah, he comes out with a pretty good block there, but a nice quick control will bring the, uh, the kids back into uh, contestion there. A little bit of action happening top and bottom right now. Kami went for the blood right level one once again. He's going to use that to try and uh, zone and secure the CS. And uh, with Max there, of course, uh, he should have a pretty solid lane outside of his passive because once the heal's online, he's got some pretty good sustain. So he shouldn't have to expend too much. I but think Kami is not too happy now. Despite all the damage that Max has been doing, uh, he missed two last hits because of the little imps. Yeah, sure, the, uh, the, the chains. Oh, sorry, that's We're going to miss the first blood up top. It's uh, Dark it. Willow popping off there with the uh, the, the thorns. And then C going to make sure he follows up and brings that kill down. Was course, it or was that a Batrider solo kill? No, 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 no. no. The, 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 uh, the Bramble Maze was there. Okay. More damage being dealt already, burning through so many rechargeable. The only, the the only problem with the link here is it's, it really pushes your lane, you know. Um, Blood right then pushes it even more. So uh, he's going to get a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage done down there. They're trying to go on Blizzy up top already. The shadow realm being used to good effect. Trying to uh, hit him up with the birds though. As soon as he comes out, he tries to back up, gets back in under the tower. Se kind of low, slowed up by the boar poison as well. We'll have to pop the south right there. Uh, Blizzy still doing very, very well thus far on his Beastmaster. You're not too upset if you lost your uh, Doom. Doom can always come back because...
nice. Oh, he goes back, picks it up, and then throws down. The Zayas getting completely handled there. Eight kills to one. 6k net worth up for Mongolia. I think uh, they heard us when we were saying that Kyrgyzstan had a good draft. They were like, we'll show you a good draft, my friend. And Zayats pinged a potential observer word on the cliff. There was no word. Ace just baited that bounty. Uh, no, they do have a word further back. They have it now. They just placed it after the kill. Oh, but they had one there earlier as well, right? Okay. Very well. Remember, they, let, they, they put it down uh, right to start, so... Can this yeah. Blood Skull get away? Kami. He's got two stacks of poison. He needs to find a little bit of heal. He's got two Vaughn charges as well, but the poison will not be enough. It popped off there just now, so... He's going to head to the fountain and take a, little, a quick shower. Zayat looking towards building a Midas. Still quite far away, a long way from that. But this level 6 Doom is about to get in trouble. <laughs> to right on top. Surprise, Maddy Funster. And oh my word, four hits and he's gonzo. And uh, that'll be propelling the Desolator forward, setting up nicely for Roshan. And we're looking at this Primal Beast right here, Jeeves. Yielding into a first item. Well, uh, he's going to go for Lotus Orb. Orb. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's great versus the Rupture. It's great versus... Uh, I guess the chains? Yeah, we're going to have a quick replay here. One, two, three, four, and down he goes. The taunt to finish it off. The illusion accompanying the taunt. Very, very sneaky. Very, very sneaky indeed. Sanctity double damage. Oh, no. Run, Zodiac. Run. Or roll. Meltrike. Oh, no. They see him Perch. roll and they hit and the little blink forward. One more. He can't find the angle, though. And Zodiac, he will, uh, he'll get fast, he'll get furious, and he'll get the heck out of there. This Templar Assassin is getting really big. And I, I guess... I, I always say that from about 12 minutes onwards, Templar Assassin has like 10 minutes of just utter dominance, dominance across the map. You know? Absolutely. 100% agree with you right there, Jeeves. And we're, we're seeing it right now in full effect. Zayats are just afraid <laughs> to go anywhere. It's like, please, let me take another crit from jungle. No, you don't even have crits in the jungle anymore. Sanctity has put full control over it. And that's one of the aspects that... Oh, we're going again with the lasso into the Bramble Maze. Blizzy, he throws out the roar to hold him back. But guess what? 43 wasn't even there. Shadow Realm to the side. Sidestepping basically the entire roar and finishes him off. Zayas wants to peek up onto that high ground, gets a face full of poison, and instead gets slowed up by the traps. And these traps are literally everywhere. And that's what I wanted to say, uh, Jeeves. Oh, one of the most overlooked things of uh, the Templar Assassin Bridge to the game is the vision game. And look at all the traps stopping every single high ground uh, approach from the Radiant. If you want to go up into your jungle, be it triangle or the bottom jungle, you will have to walk to the vision. They will see you, and, and they're creating this uh, really nice choke point, forcing the enemy into very tight areas, which makes actual big rotations where they decide to go three, four man. No, not Zodiac. Again. Not Silence. like this, my friend. Not like this. You were doing very well. He's bought I'm a 15 sad. minute shard on Templar Assassin. All right. I mean, he skipped over that for the Desolate, realizing the value of these traps, the Bloodseeker here, but the rock getting dropped. It's going to be a little bit of a problem for 11, but Kami is getting absolutely shredded here. C's going to find him on the five bot rider. Kami annihilated. Now they go forward, they find Zayas as well. It's a killing spree for Sanctity and 4-2-3. He's not doing too shabby himself. TA 3 and 0. They're both sitting top of the bus for net worth as well. The Templar Assassin immediately followed by his core on 4-2-3 on the Dark Willow. The scoreline is 13 to 1 at the 16 minute mark. And uh, Lizzie is still quite quite a little bit away from his uh, well, from, from the the big helm, the helm of the Overlord right there. And, but these traps, man, now they don't just give you silence, rushing the uh, Axe Shard because he's so far forward. Now silencing the targets like we just saw earlier. The Desso's yeah. actually finished. It's on the way right now. Is it? No, wait, he had one extra Mithril Hammer to pick up there. So he's got a Mithril Hammer coming. Lotus Arbor done on the Primal Beast, though. Extra armor for him. This Lotus to protect the TA on he's, 11. He's, uh, he goes for the Vam Brace as well. Just get a little thickness, you know, a little extra strength for his boy. See, grabs a hold of the Warlock. It's an easy pickup, an extra kill. Force feeding Sang to the gold and experience. Max turned into Mini right there. Blown up by Sanctity. 14-1, and the later we go... You, I, go, you I, gotta eat your soup if you want to be a big, strong boy, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but this Lotus Orb is such a great pickup, Chiefs, because it counters, essentially, both the Doom, the Bloodseeker, and the Beastmaster. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. And, and obviously, the Lotus Orb, you can put it on any hero you want. So as soon as you realize who the target's gonna be, boop, yep. now you're both Doomed, now you're both Ruptured. 
Nice side step. Julia trying to bail, but oh the my Ags. word, the machine guns are already. Ags is online for 4 2 3. It doesn't matter if you're. Midas Ags, this guy's balling right now. That's a Midas Ags Dark Willow core. Uh, what am I watching? This is the machine gun build. The rat -tat 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 -tat, you're dead. I mean. You might be untargetable by spells, Mr. Pangalier, but I can just right click you away as uh, Blizzy is about to Blizzy's make it. <laughs> Blizzy thought he was going on the, the Batman, but really the bat was just bait. And they just clean him out, go through him for a shortcut, and now Blizzy is going to have to be sitting in the fountain contemplating life for the next 40 seconds. And I, I, I got to highlight that right there. SE has played phenomenal, uh, doing such a great job on this five bat rider constantly doing the uh, laning phase right now, you know, baiting in, uh, jumping in earlier with the lasso and triangle. Uh, definitely one of the highlight players of this series. Because yes, the Dark Willow and the Templar Assassin are having a free game, but why do they have a free game? It's because of what the other three heroes on the map are doing to enable that. And then obviously, when you're leading I mean, 11k he net worth. He, he made first blood. Yeah. He uh, set up, what, two, three uh, per perfect kills in the lane for uh, the Dark Willow with the, with the flame breaks. Yep. And uh, instrumental for vision around the map. And now he's just sitting around Sancti. Even if you go on Sancti here, guess what? Bat Rider's on top of you. He's lassoed you. He's pulling you into the danger. And uh, just phenomenal play right now. And uh, now remember, 423, he died to the neutral creeps earlier. But uh, he's now, he's in there. He's cleaning out the ancient stacks. A little jump forward onto Zodiac. A really great pulling him towards the traps. Trying to get something done here. But Sancti's like, no, bro, there's way too many there. And they're going to find their second kill of the match 20 minutes in. Finally, they got another one. And he's like, sorry guys, I, uh, I built more than I could chew. It's definitely something that's gonna happen. You were in 16 kills up though. You're gonna go overconfident. It was only the two of them and Sanctity just said, abort, I see four opponents. They got some big ulties. My Lotus Carrier's not with me. My Willow's farming ancients. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Support, we'll give them one kill. I don't wanna lose my life and my advantage. So uh, we have the Tumblr's toy, the Blink Dagger on the Templar Assassin, plus the, uh, the, the, the traps. And now he's going to finish up the Dragon Lance into the Hurricane Pike, just making him even more deadly. They, now, what's happening here is the wisdom, next Wisdom is about to spawn. Tormentors are already up, and Sancti's online with the Desolator, so he really wants to be looking for that Roshan. Because one of the important things you have to do as a Temple Assassin is make sure you snowball the presence on the map. You know, he will start to kind of tail off a little bit as enemies get items on the line. Zayas going looking here. The rock gets dropped on the back side there on top of 423, but he quickly popped off. Wait, they actually find him the rupture. That's a really good team fight for Kazakhstan. No, no, here's a nice pump pull down by Sancti, forcing the BKB out from Kami, but he's already aye, aye, dead. Aye. Cannot purge the poison anymore. Sancti getting bubbled up for uh, a little bit of safety here. Eleven goes in to try and get Sancti out, and he will manage to make it, but a great fight from Kyrgyzstan. They pick up another two kills and huge kills here. Oh, Sancti wants to go back in, though. He barely has any life on him. He's trying to bring down Zodiac. Zodiac from the Rolling Thunder, a little force away. This dragon doing so much it's work. murdering him. He's gone, so he goes down. That helm doing so much work. They got such a big kill out of that. The five times mega kill streak ended. A triple kill for Blizzy. And we just talked about it five seconds ago about how being so high up was going to put going to give you a, an overconfidence problem. Yeah. And yeah, it's very clear there. Yeah, surely get Kami. I bet but Kami's not even had the greatest of games. They gave away so so much there. I and this is when you don't want to do that, by the way. Like I say, you want to have the tempo going, you want to have the uh, the rush potential, you want to engage with that. But look at this, Zayas, he brings them forward, they drop the rock on 4 2 3, means that he can't get the kill off immediately. Nice zone from Kami with the blood right, and they just start picking up kills left, right, and center. Kami went in there though, and Sakti plus C, they, they brought him down pretty quickly, but everyone else is still free to play. And uh, the murdering, the murdering can happen. The problem, I mean, the target on Zayats was perfect, didn't get the Doom off, but then the more you give time in a fight to the Pangalier and the Beastmaster, they are dealing overtime damage time and time again, every seven seconds, whirling axes, jumping around. The birds, look at the birds right there. Stun after stun, and the dragon, I mean, nobody taking it out. Very, very well played. Ball. As That's we amazing. are being taken by a tornado, the whirling uh, tornado that uh, uh, Zayats has been using all game. 
their buck in there. They're dying time. They've actually marshaled the forces from Mongolia. They're doing this Roshan now. Very quick Rosh indeed. They've got the Solar Crest up. <laughs> so uh, Solar Crest plus the, the Desolator <laughs> makes short work of the Roshan there. Our uh, amazing observer pointing out that uh, this Dark Willow is uh, maxing out st stats. Not even a single point in the Curse Crown. Minute 23, level 16. Uh, he's going next for the Lincoln here. He, uh, he felt the burn of the rupture last time. He's like, I don't like that. Uh, we've got Lotus Orb, but that's not going to protect me enough. You get the, uh, the Lincoln Sphere plus the Lotus Orb on you. You feel a lot better about the situation. He's going to dip into the Lotus Pool here. Got a nice refreshing, uh, little refreshing snack. But a smoke up from Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, the Doom is still up, obviously. As they go fishing. The Doom was not used in the last team fight. And uh, Rupture is back in play. So is the Rolling Thunder. High value Lincoln here. Two super strong ultimate abilities. Can they find anyone? It doesn't seem to be the case, not at least in the next five ten or ten seconds. Eh, Mongolia having a pretty good read. They're not showing on the map. They only see, they don't even see Kami top, but they, they know he's he's not showing. So let's play cautiously. They fall back for a smoke Ooh. of their own. Now they see if they can punish this uh, movement from Kyrgyzstan. And they are the team with the ages, so they can afford being the aggressors right now. Musk of Madness is online. All right, so Sanctity's showing in the lane. He's doing a little dangling here. The ping comes out from Zayas, but he, I think he reads the dangle. You know, he's like, yo, this is bait, you know? He's, uh, he's mad maxing it. S -S 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 I like these movements from, uh, from Mongolia. S -S -S a little sneak in, a little creep in. You cannot jump on this temporary assassin. She's got refraction. She's got the ages, and yeah, we'll see, we'll see Kyrgyzstan just... Uh, I mean, they're thinking about the angle for this. But they Sang do have they, vision. They, they need to leave somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, they need to go away through some direction. So they're hoping they would come straight into the arms. They have the vision. They've got the high ground. You're doing very well. I'm very proud of you. Or they can just keep on pushing. That, that's also an option. Sang Z trying to bait them now, the psychological warfare. You know, he's like, OK, OK, give them a voice line. Maybe try and bring them out of the, uh, out of the woods. Do you really want to jump to the A? Hello there. Uh, he's the one who jumps in. He's a little far forward. Ace, he gets roll. intercepted, so he's not able to get him with the bubble, but they're actually going on that back line, so Sanctity free to fire in here. Getting kind of low, though. Forces himself out of the blood right. A little leap away, keeping him nice and fresh. Kami getting eradicated by this damage. C pulling him forward. Sanctity still has the ages. It will finally pop. C getting kind of low. That big black dragon it is messing with their entire plan right now. But they will bring it down as Sanctity comes back up. Now they go looking for Max. Max trapped in this jungle here. He is toast. And finally, 423 realized that his target doesn't have to be any of the heroes. That's Sanctity's job. I'm just gonna go into Shadow Roll Elm and kill all of these pesky, pesky uh, mobs being brought to the table by the Beastmaster, protecting his Batrider in the end. Um, around the 3k gold it's, change. It's pretty good gold. It's pretty good gold for killing that dragon, though, I have to say. It's Absolutely. like 250, 350 gold. So now they're going to come in here and try and rob the lard. Our Blizzy sitting kind of in behind things, seeing whether or not he's going to be able to do anything to stop them. Uh, it's too risky for them. They see Zayas coming over here. They're like, you know what? Let's not go too, uh, too invested here. But Zayas no finds them anyway. Beautiful. Finds them with the Doom. Now Zodiac, he has to follow this kill. They get a good hold to Zayas, but the damage has already been done. Eleven pops off his BKB, trying to move away. But 423, he's here with a reinitiation. They are still going on Zayas, but he's basically Blinks. a creep at this point. He just blinks away. They kind of wasted their aggression there, but it does save Sanctity. They're able to put a stop to the follow-up. Zodiac is not able to bring down this Templar Assassin. So they still have another six minutes or so of TA supremacy. He's gone for a crit. He's going for his deadless. He's got the uh, Crystallis baby crit online. That was the nine second BKB on the Primal Beast. So I'm managing to get the bait out of that and go lowering the cooldown to uh, eight. It's much better now, but still it's, a long it's way It's something to go. at least, you know. And that was a very well needed uh, kill because now 423 does have a Lincoln that can also be popped on top of Sanctity. And uh, Zayat probably realized that. Oh, last see, he's got a little drop here as he pulls Blizzy yeah, in yeah, to yeah, the Bramble yeah, Maze yeah, again. Well, and it's a four times dominating kill streak ended. Blizzy just caught out of position. Incredibly hard to position around a Blink Dagger or Bat Rider, though. I mean, this is a classic hero, uh, normally played in a core position, but he's had such an amazing game that he's fully online. 
on Sanctatine now looking to pressure the high ground sans Aegis trying to take down this tier 3 tower the Bramble Maze surrounding him to protect him a little bit here Warlock coming through though chains up on the creeps the little golems but uh, they don't do crap all against Sanctity he's very powerful right now Look at the support levels on the side of Team Mongolia. 16 and 15 respectively, only one or two levels behind the course. That is absolutely incredible, especially for a hero like Batrider, like you said, uh, traditionally played as a core on the off lane or even mid lane. Uh, very, well, very level, level, level 17 now on uh, Shadow, on Demon. The Shadow Demon. This is open AI stuff, you know, where you, is, you give the equal XP farm across the board. Ace is a higher level than the Primal Beast. That's what stalking Ancients, that's what stalking those creeps in the early game did for him. Yeah, meanwhile, on the opposite side, I think Zayat's only level 13 on the Doombringer. The Warlock, I don't even know how to know what level he is. Very well. I'm very proud of you. So, Blizzy at least manages to find a Wisdom Rune for the boys. It's going to give them a little bit of injection of experience and that uh, wisdom you know? blink purchased by blizzy hopefully will add a bit of a surprise element onto the team fight initiation maybe you can jump in and roar and blow up ma okay, your main so target if there's no agus bloodseeker opted to go for the manta style oh they're like gonna that. get another kill quickly here on zodiac there's no escape Aye. killed him before the blood right even landed now they Zayas. find Zayas. he thought he was going to tp out this is another double damage on sanctity and it's two hits for the double kill hmm. god dang Silencing the Yash audience, Mongolia, 25-6, 15k goal lead, and whenever you seem to have, you know, there's a bit of a glimpse of hope for Kyrgyzstan, maybe a new item, maybe one of their cores getting some more farms, something like this happens, and we're just getting all shut down. Mongolia playing some very, very beautiful Dota 2, and now this I mean, double damage, another five seconds, chipping away at the Tier 3 tower. I mean, taking the pressure to the very tower itself, the Tier 3 crumbling under this assault, and Honestly, I have to put my hands up and say that I did not respect Sanctity's TA or the Dark Willow Core. Definitely Kyrgyzstan didn't respect that either as we have a hell of a hell of a temper assassin performance here, despite being countered by multiple heroes right now, angering the gods of nature. <laughs> All right, I mean, it's uh, 27 minute items are coming out here. We get the Ogre Seal Totem on the Dark Willow, give him an extra bit of HP, extra mobility. Templar Assassin thinking about his itemization choice right now. See what it's going to be. He just likes that pretty blue look, the pretty blue icon. There we go. He's going to go for the Ogre Seal Totem as well. Double Ogre Seal Totem. So a little, a little flopping going to be getting done here. For a TA as well. Maybe that was the best choice out of everything there. Obviously, it helps repositioning away from the Warlock upheaval. That is one thing I would like to see from Valve. If we could have the opportunity to see their choices. That would be very cool. From a, from a casting point of view, it would be beautiful. Oh my word, Ace just fired four bounty runes. It's been so long since anyone's been over that side of the map that they will pick up a, a big cash injection as if they needed it yeah. on Team Mongolia. Another around 2k gold lead going in favor of their team, and they are smoked up. And they are what they want to have this fight without waiting another three minutes for the Roche and Essie yeah, on the Pal Fuck the Blood Seeker. Beautiful pickup once again on the Bramble Maze. Do some work, but they got the counter play as they drop the rock on the backside. The chains are out. It's causing a lot of havoc here. Zayas goes in. He finds a doom on to uh, Templar Assassin. He's trying to back up and maybe. Just maybe, wait, he gets a little grab in there. Lord Lord he will fall though on the TA. TA to go down, five times mega kill streak ended. 2,000 gold going the way of Kargistan. 4 2 3, kind of trapped on this high ground here. The axe is flying through. He will go down as well. And left, right, and center. Real Stun. big kills being picked up here. Kami looking for blood, but he won't find it. Great buyback coming there right from Kami. Spotted that the Templar Assassin was going low. The Dark Reload, not a full HP. Knows that I can be a race car. I'm just going to use my buyback here and going to join my team. Uh, died, I think, to the Batrider uh, fire lingering on the ground through the after the BKB expired. But still, very, very good team fight. 3.7k dealt by him. But Warlock, and this is why he's one of the better meta heroes dispatch. So much damage, 4.8 in the team fight. Absolutely amazing turnaround from Kyrgyzstan. Still down 13k net worth, but very, very good team fight for them. If they could somehow carry this momentum into the next Roche fight, I could see them coming back into the series. Well, we were at the 32 minute mark, and I did say as we get closer to it, Templar Assassin starts to lose her ascendancy, but this is also a critical mistake that Mongolia have made. Yep. They decided to try and force that fight outside of being able to take the next Roche. 
and uh, they're being punished for it now. And uh, Kami is going to TP away over by himself. Uh, you know, he's going to leave the team down here. Roche potentially spawning, in fact, actually spawning in 55 seconds, so he may need to portal his way down if they want to uh, take it on the Radiant side. But uh, Mongolia making their way down there. They want to have a little peek and seek, see whether or not it's online. I am I'm stunned right now as uh, uh, we still have some fabulous audience members sticking with us throughout this reign. That's the spirit. Shout Woo! out to everybody still watching this phenomenal series. And let's see. Kyrgyzstan coming back into this. Can they make it? They've got the ultimates for it. Can they pierce the Lincoln Spheres and the Lotuses, uh, Jeeves? Is that, do you think that's a possibility? Because you need to break those if you want to have an impact. So the trick is to uh, to have the Beastmaster just do a little blasting, you know, and, and kind of control them outside of the Lotus Orb and the Lincoln Sphere with the AoE of it. But you need to make sure you're not targeting the hero that is, you know, obviously Lincoln Sphered up. So uh, Mongolia, they're looking for that Roche though. Potentially their last uh, easy Roche of the game. You know, other, other than that, they will be contested pretty heavily on it. But they're in there. They're going to bring it down, I'd say, pretty quickly once they get their... Uh, to minus armor on it. The brakes going through right now. Meld minus armor as well. Tesso. This will be ages and cheese. I, I, I gotta be honest with you, Chiefs. I'm looking at this Dark Willow, and yes, it has an impact, but that is because Mongolia is dominating overall. I think at this point in the game, and maybe even for the last eight minutes or so, any other carry would have done the same amount of impact, if not even better. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like I say, I'm not 100% familiar with the Dark Willow Kaya. It's not something that I prioritize or play. Uh, but yeah, I mean, with this particular lineup, you expect the early dominance of the Templar Assassin. Seize Bat Riders doing a lot of work as well. Primal Beast, another hero who does really well early on. So salty! Uh, <laughs> Thunder God's Wrath. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. So, uh, and Bloodseeker, of course, as the game goes later, he's, uh, he gets more and more uh, uh, ways to deal with the Templar Assassin, and TA starts to lose a little bit of her cachet. Now they're going to look at taking some Tormentors, though. I feel like the Tormentors have been pretty much ignored this whole game. It's all been about uh, mano and mano fighting. Zayas gets the shard, the Scorched Earth. That's the old Scorched Earth, basically. It gives you the, uh, the healing as you, uh, as you walk around. Oh, wow. 60% of the damage done. I did not know that's healing. what the new shard does. Uh, as we are waiting very patience, the players do not want to commit any mistakes. There's still no buyback on the Bloodseeker. And obviously, uh, you don't really want to take a fight into a TA with Aegis and a Cheese. Uh, you definitely do not. But like I say, this is when Mongolia need to make some... Uh, I want to see... I always say, I, in the power phase of TA, I always want to see them take the tier three, maybe a set of racks. Now they managed to take the tier three, yep. but they have not managed to take the racks just yet. Still, well, the longer time they buy, Kyrgyzstan is trying to recuperate some of this advantage that oh, they have. And they're trying machine to gun taking out the tower though from about eight miles away. They're trying to prove to me that this Dark Willow is still a viable core pick. And uh, here we go. we love to see something new being tried out right here on the main stage as we're now prodding and hitting away at the tier three top. Sanctity, he's got a decent amount of range. His entire team sitting behind him in perfect position, waiting for any kind of initiation that can come in here. Kami, does he have his level 25 yet? No, so he's still limited to one rupture only. And uh, there's still an Aegis there, so commitment issues are gonna be very much prevalent for Kyrgyzstan, but they're just waiting patiently, and I love this. They don't wanna get caught out, they don't wanna overcommit, they wanna make sure that they're gonna uh, find themselves in a pretty good position when this Aegis comes down. Two and a half minutes left on Aegis, and Sanctity chasing a creep wave right now. <laughs> that is actually a hilarious sight, something that you usually see in your pubs. You're knocking at the door, but you don't have any other creeps. Backdoor protection is someone, and you're like, oh, i got to waste 30 seconds of my ages to go down mid. But I'm looking at the support, and obviously at Zayat himself. Finally, this is what we were expecting. Minute 37, and already picking up some steam with that Midas Devour. Yeah, he's starting to move up through the uh, through the net worth. Top of the bus of the supports right now and closing in on his Pangolier. Pangolier, of course, classically, unless he gets a crap ton of kills, yep. he doesn't really, he's never really net worth heavy. Yeah, of course not. Uh, and we'll go down mid where there's no tier 3 tower. And oh my goodness, this melee racks. Uh, there was a melee racks there. Now just rubble. It's a reconstruction uh, effort made by the Dire here, trying to improve Radiant's front lawn. 
on the back line. Zayas goes in pretty deep. Oh, him. Drops down the doom. And so the much damage. Swarms up, but I think that Batman is already toast. Kami's in here with the BKB. Eleven holding things up. Target. Kami versus Sanctity. Mano and Mano, and it's a blood seeker. It's not a fight you're going to win. But four two three on the high ground. He's hammering him down. He's trying to get out of there. But oh, ooh, bye what back. a beautiful use. Of Zion. the Brambles, they bring the Bloodseeker down, and is this the Swan Song? The buyback comes through now on Zayas. He needs to buy some more time. Max is down. He does have a buyback available. He already dropped the rock, so the uh, value of that buyback actually significantly diminished. Sanctity now looking the eyes of Afra at the tier three tower top. One, two, three. Uh, he goes chasing after Zayas with the uh, assault cannon there. Buy back on the Warlock. Okay, Warlock. Uh, Another Lasso. Lasso is doing work. Brings Zodiac away again. Though Blizzy comes through the outside. Sanctity kind of low here, but Blizzy smashed apart. And in the end, Mongolia just overwhelmingly too strong for Kyrgyzstan. They picked their moment perfectly. And I think if it goes another five or ten minutes, Kyrgyzstan take the game. But Mongolia will just finish it off right now. GG 4 2 3 with a triple kill. 23k lead. Minute 38, and it will be Mongolia being one map closer to making it to the top three of this world championship. And Chiefs, that's what I wanted to see. I said, yeah, let's go with Kyrgyzstan. Let's see if Mongolia can prove me wrong. And they have. Yeah. They have. Again, going back to the discussion about uh, the impact of the Dark Willow over the last 10 minutes or so. Yes, that team fight hitting away at high ground and getting a final triple kill. But I think. It's, it's nice to see. I feel like it's an early, ga earlier game here. I yeah. feel like if the game goes another 10 minutes or so, Kyrgyzstan definitely have the opportunity to come even further back into it, and maybe turn things around. But Mongolia played exceptionally well in the moment, in and around those uh, those those 25 minutes. They were able to dominate the map. They were able to dominate the early game and the mid game. And uh, sometimes that's all you need. I uh, the itemization from Kami on the Bloodseeker. Could he have done anything else? Would the Mjolnir have been a better favorite, but more favorable pickup? Perhaps, but uh, yeah, the uh, Mongolians take game one. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long series, I think. Uh, definitely gonna be some time for Kyrgyzstan to recompose. Take, yeah, to take a little step back and uh, you know consider maybe banning Dark Willow at least. Yeah, maybe 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 banning that Dark Willow, but we will have to wait and see. As right now, both of the teams are gonna take a well-deserved break, but we will be back with the map two between Kyrgyzstan and Mongolia. Stay tuned.
And welcome back to the IESF World Esports Championships, the 15th edition, right here, live in Yash. The rain has kind of set, but we are set on this game two. I'm Waxen, joined by Jeeves, into this game two draft in Kyrgyzstan. Well, they've, they've banned that forsaken Dark Willow. They certainly have. We also get rid of the Phoenix, the Bat Rider, sees little speciality. Not today. They get rid of the Invoker, we get rid of uh, Nature's Prophet, Dawnbreaker, and Vengeful Spirit, and first pick, the old bread and butter, the Gyrocopter. Can't go for too wrong with the first pick, Gyro. And uh, Kyrgyzstan, I wonder if they're feeling the, you know, I wonder if they feel the hot, felt the hit there, or they're just like, okay, the cheese does, we take the cheese out of the equation, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, going for the Mars first pick was banned quite early on in the draft. Uh, and one of the things I wanted to ask uh, you about Jeeves is the Razor. One of the heroes that we saw quite a lot of in the first two days of the tournament, but maybe way less over the last 24 hours or so from these teams. I mean, we might certainly see it now. He's very, very good versus Mars. Yep. Uh, but uh, we already have Kyrgyzstan picking up the, the Gyrocopter, so they're not likely to pick up unless they play as an offlane hero. You can pair it with the Mars. It is getting bad right now. Pretty good, but they're gonna. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Caster's Curse at its finest. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean that's fair enough. Gyrocopter, kind of an annoying hero to deal with. I think we saw a pretty good answer with Morphling in the past, though. Yeah, definitely did. Yep. And, uh, I'm expecting that to be banned after this racer, actually. Yeah, it would be a would be a pretty good solution. I think. Uh, I mean, Drive could be an okay answer, but. He's a he's a pretty he's a pretty good hero. He's difficult to go on. We've definitely seen some uh, some attempts at the running Terror Blades versus the Gyro, and of course the Phantom Assassin. They kind of counter each other. Jumping jumping on the back line, yeah. jumping onto him, and, and specifically, they get rid of the Templar Assassin from Kyrgyzstan. They're pretty much banning out the entire previous draft of Mongolia here, which but I think I think is the correct approach. It, it is, but Mongolia have way more in their arsenal than just five heroes, so I'm not at all ba bothered that they've banned these particular heroes. Dark Willow, like I say, has been banned pretty much every series, every game. It's okay. very rare we get it to see it come through, and when it does come through, we can see why it's so devastatingly powerful. The Warlock. Warlock. <laughs> okay, you ban our you ban our cheese, we ban your cheese. Yeah, like Kyrgyzstan has ran that uh, Warlock gyrocopter very su successfully yesterday, so I don't think you can afford giving them both. At uh, this stage of the draft, Mongolia, you just want to secure one more map, and yeah, I, I, think I, I, I mean, I did say in the previous draft that Warlock plus Bloodseeker, it's not a great lane. It doesn't, it's not like it's okay, but it doesn't yeah. feel fantastic. I definitely Warlock plus uh, Gyrocopter, on the other hand, is uh, it's great. Gyro kind of lacks sustain. Warlock leads up for that, and then you've got the flat cannon with the chains together. <laughs> Amazing amounts of damage. Skyrath Mage coming back into it. Not a real surprise. Pairs very, very well with the Mars. Once the arena's online, yep. Solar Flare, uh, uh, Mystic Flare even can do a lot of work. Gyro can build a BKB. Generally, it's going to be the third or fourth item, though. It won't come out too quickly, so they should get some good value out of the combo of the Mars and the Sky to start off with at least. Yeah. The Sky quite squishy, quite vulnerable to those flak attacks from, from downtown. Absolutely, but we can see the spear into trees, uh, Mystic Flare combo, and the Sky right is the highest win rate hero in, uh, in, in the TI you qualifiers know, currently. You know what else pairs quite well with uh, with Mars? What? The Bloodseeker. That's quite a good solution here for the uh, for the Gyrocopter. Uh, they saw what Kyrgyzstan did with it. They might want to take it and be like, well, here's how you actually play the hero, you know? Interesting. Well, they, get rid of the, uh, they, they pick up the air spirit in the meantime. I did think you were going to go for a Mars Greek analogy of, you know, gods. Yeah, Zeus. Zeus. Get, yeah, get, Zeus. Daddy, get Daddy in there? Of course. So uh, Mars is a Roman god. <laughs> I don't want to. Yep, yep. My know. history. Yep. Please correct it. Although when, it. when I initially suggested Mars as a hero, I, I suggested him as Ares. But at the yes. time, Wonder Woman, the first Wonder Woman had just come out, and there was a few other things. He was kind of Ares was really media saturated at the time, so they changed it up and they made it, you know. Oh my Mars. goodness! It's going to be a lich. Uh, first time making a debut in here in Yash. No, no, no. He's he's been here a couple of games before. Has he? Oh yeah. Played by the same team? Well, wow, this is uh, unexpected because I've not seen Leech at all this patch personally. Uh, but you, you mentioned the Earth Spirit, and let's go back to him. 
It's the Zayat specialty. Last game it wasn't in the pool because he went for the Doom first pick, but other than that, it's been banned first phase every single game. So Aerospinner got a little bit of a buff. When he's rolling that, he's immune to damage. Yeah, invulnerable essentially. So yeah. uh, previously, you, uh, Bloodseeker would have been a good option against the Aerospinner. You just rupture him and then he can't do anything, but now you can just roll it off. You know, yep. but uh, the Lich, yeah, we saw a little bit of Chain Frost action. It's a really good pairing. It's in a similar vein to the Warlock. It's a good pairing with the Gyrocopter. You put the Frost Shield on him. The extra Ooh. armor makes it really cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know why I love the Inch uh, counter pick to the Leech? The reason for that is it just uh, purges off the Leech Shield. So the uh, the damage potential very very high for uh, an enchantress. Once she starts to transition to the demi core, where she gets the hurricane pike online, she can actually kind of do damage to Gyro without being close to him. And and right there's the the blood seeker coming in on top of it. Uh, I like this though. It's very strong until we have BKP online. And uh, yeah, I like this. I take the blood seeker and say we'll show you we'll show you how it's done. Very, very strong, but uh, you got double melee core, double range support. And then we have the arena blood right yeah, combo. Yeah, so basically combos over perfectly, you know. But very little stuns thus mid, far, other than the Mars. to go with that, uh, that kind of fit in with that synergy as well. Ember Spirit still in the pool. Ember Invoker, very, very not good. in the pool, no. Ember taken out, though. I mean, no, Ember seems to be like the the prime hero but, uh, that's not been banned just yet. Sancti, he loves a Storm Spirit, actually. And it hasn't been banned this time around, yeah. So Storm with uh, the AoE... Uh, vortex? Vortex, yep. Even that's Storm good. with it's a single cool. Vortex compares very well with the Skyrat Mage. Yeah, yeah, good setup for that. And then uh, Kyrgyzstan could pick a Storm themselves, a uh, traditional counter to some extent to the blood scare you can just zip away without uh, getting damage. Not so much. Well, not, not necessarily. Like, and the, in the old days, when yep. Bloodseeker would build BKB like third or fourth item, Storm would uh, zip on top and Bloodseeker just to stand there and die. Okay. Yep. Now, Bloodseeker builds BKB second item pretty much every every time. So he just pops the BKB and then all of a sudden, you know, he maybe picks up a Basher. Storm just has a nightmare scenario with that, with that now. But tied it will be a tied first, yeah. Great pickup. You know what we can see here? The Sanctity mid Rubik. Oh, I would love to see that actually versus this plenty of steel there opportunities. There's so many things to steal here, yeah. right? You could get the uh, Ravage, you could get the Chain Frost, the, even the call down with the damage amp of uh, Rubik is pretty pretty potent. Uh, but I did see Kyrgyzstan smiling. They seem to be very happy with this Tide Hunter and they will bound out the Queen of Pain. Uh, they're making space, obviously, for what will be most probably their mid hero. And what are we looking well for both sides? What are we looking for in mid right now? We mentioned the Ember Spirit already still in the pool. Yeah, the Pangaldeer was attempted just earlier. I uh, not you wouldn't want the Pangaldeer for Kyrgyzstan. The maybe, Bloodseeker just destroys Maybe you. the Death Prophet. Death Prophet. Something okay. uh, for Kirk for Mongolia. Something that's like stable. It's. You want magic damage versus a tide hunter. Makes sense. Uh, Bloodseeker's going to have a pretty annoying lane, the anchor smash. The damage reduction is going to make his CSing a little bit irritating. And then, in order to bring down the uh, the tide hunter, he's going to probably go for the early pipe, though, if you go for the, the magic damage. So, it's a window of opportunity. Very interestingly, the Beastmaster has all still made it through the draft. He doesn't quite have a place in either of these rosters as they both have their off lanes. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Kyrgyzstan tried it and now they're staying away from it. Mongolia will have to ban the Storm Spirit as they have the last pick, so Kyrgyzstan would have the chance to nab it here if they wanted to. Uh, as Kyrgyzstan has another minute or so for a ban and final pick of their draft. Who is going to round them all up? We see a lot of the mid heroes being targeted here. I wouldn't mind seeing like a, a Dragon Knight or something come out from Mongolia, but I don't know if Sanctity would play something so basic. Yeah, I think we want something way more flashy coming in from both of the mid heroes. But it certainly teams. would address. They kind of have a lack of tower pressure at the moment, and of I feel yeah. like the Dragon Knight kind of shows up. The Shrak is another kind of option. Lesh. Comes with a lot of high magic damage. Um, I, I think I would prefer Le Shrak right here for the side of Mongolia, and even could be stunned to some extent. Although it will be the Pango ban and a Clinks pick. So this suggests to me that it could be Earth Spirit mid though. Yes, and Zayat's running the clings. That's what I'm feeling Perhaps, as well. Yeah. 
Uh, do I like that? I mean, we saw it versus Team USA, and I think that was one of their weaknesses. I guess uh, we could even see the gyrocopter made and cling safely, and if you really want to do something funky. Uh, I don't know if I'd invest so much in a in a clinks, but we could see maybe they, maybe they run clinks mid, for example. Uh, clinks could be quite good versus Skywrath Mage, though. When you could pick off potential there. Pretty good versus Ench as well. Uh, yeah, with the uh, the skeleton guys, you can definitely pop a bit of damage in there. A minute and 20 seconds for more goal. Yeah, to make up their mind and decide how they're going to approach this uh, next game as Kyrgyzstan is pulling up some different uh, different strategies right now in this one. The current state of the draft, I, I'll be completely honest. I, I mean, I would love to see a game three, but drafts I, or no honestly, drafts. Honestly, I'm super favoring the Dragon Knight now because the minus armor from the Tide Hunter and the minus, like Clinks generally builds like the Solar Crest very quickly. Go for the Shakira. Earth Shaker making his way again as the last pick. One of the strongest mid heroes or core heroes this patch, either mid or off lane, uh, somehow surviving every single part of the ban phase. Uh, Kyrgyzstan don't seem so they're too gonna, happy about it. They're gonna pull. The, they're gonna pull Sancti onto this Earthshaker mid. Now you get the wombo combo. The arena goes down with four heroes in it. They get the blood right on top, and then boom, Echo Sla. It's the wombo combo. I'm not a fan of this Earth Spirit mid. I was. Uh, I've been talking to everybody around the venue for the last three days. Earth Spirit. It's such a hit or miss hero as a mid core, and uh, it doesn't feel too bad against the Bloodseeker, like I said, because, because of the, of the change, new but uh, the change to the damage. But so we're gonna have 11 on the off lane uh, Mars, we're gonna have a four position um, Skywrath Mage, four to three on the safe lane Bloodseeker, Sanctity will pick up the mid Shaker, and then C with a five Enchantress. Other side of the fence, it's going to be Kami on the safe lane, Gyrocopter, Zodiac with the mid-earth spirit. Max is going to be on the five, uh, Lich. Blizzy takes the tight hunter to the off lane with Zayas on the position four. Yeah, I'm backing Mongolia all the way to, uh, we've seen a Klinks 4 ran a few days ago, I think by Stoma. He had a bit of uh, damage, but no impact, and I only, I don't believe in his I think earth he ended up playing it in the five, in the safe lane. Still. Still, I don't, I don't see a support clings here. You have one of the best Earth Spirit players in the world on Zayats, and you're running it as a different core. I don't believe in Earth Spirit mid, and yes, the gyrocopter is strong. Uh, can they protect him enough so he bursts everybody else? This is going to be uh, Kyrgyzstan's win condition, but so far Mongolia's draft is way simpler to execute. You've got a Bloodseeker, Skyrat, Ench, and an Earthshaker. The the critical item amazing. timing here is the BKB on the Bloodseeker. I think he does literally nothing to Kami until it's online. It's of really hard to step toe to toe with a gyrocopter with a frost shield on top, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I definitely, both teams have got drafts that can pop off. Mongolia looked like the stronger team individually, uh, you know, team wise in game one. Yep. Uh, and it's going to be all about the execution here. There's no lacking. Um, there's no lack of Wombo combo, and there's certainly a lot of Roche potential for both teams. So. Well, we are almost getting underway for this Game 3 between Kyrgyzstan and Mongolia. Yash, if you're still here and you want to see a Map 3, let's make some noise for both of these teams. Woo! Fabulous. We're just waiting right now to see another maybe level one skirmish between all of the ten players as we have the admin communicating something to one of the players. I just wanted to ask you, Jeeves, who do you think uh, you know, has the benefits of having a longer break between maps one and two? The team that is uh, one map down because they get to recompose themselves and talk more and obviously the winners are losing momentum or the team that's riding the momentum for longer. Definitely the team that's got more time to think about what they did wrong in the first one. You don't yep. want to overthink it, but they, they just basically banned out everything that was a problem in the first game. And then they come into it with uh, fresh eyes. Now, what I want to see in this game, what we didn't really see in game one for the team with the Bloodseeker, I want to see a high tempo engagement where you try and bring the enemy down low, try and give that Bloodseeker as much of a, you know, Boost to prepare yeah, prepare as much forward. thirst as possible. Yeah, you wanna you wanna abuse the the, the vision, right? You wanna abuse the vision of getting people low and then following up on it. But Zayas definitely can make a lot of moves on this clinks. It's gonna be quite spicy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready.
I would love to see a fast solar crest coming in from the Klings uh, on the side of Kyrgyzstan on Zayas, trying to enable, trying to burst some of these supports in the back lines if there is a possibility there. I, I'd be okay if he just went for a medallion at Odessa and then went back for the solar crest after. Interesting, but what do you think of this uh, this Tidehunter here? How do you think Tidehunter will fare in lane versus this Bloodseeker? I mean, Tidehunter obviously has the, the Kraken Shell. It's pretty much a built-in vanguard, so he gets uh, the freedom to itemize outside of that. At the same time, Zayas can be stacking like the Ancient Cam, so even if it doesn't go according to plan, like I say, the Anchor Smash is very annoying for Bloodseeker to deal with. Uh, you know, he minuses your damage and makes it more difficult to CS in the lane. But at the same time, even if he's having a weak lane, Zayas can be stacking the ancient camps on the big camp and the, and the, tr and the biango, and then he can just instantly go there with the anchor smash and recover. So he's going to get this injection of farm. He doesn't need to go into the vanguard. So I imagine he goes for the meteor hammer into like the blink dagger. And with that, the meteor hammer and obviously the clinks on your side and the gyrocopter, you have way more of a tower pushing presence than uh, than the Mongolia here because other than that Eng. They're not that built towards tower pressure. So in order to take towers here, they need to take team fights and then follow up, uh, you know, basically when the enemy aren't really there. Uh, you're going to get the, the clinks as well. He's going to, like, if he gets the early death, so yeah. it accelerates these things. And of course, the uh, skeleton archers get the death effect as well, right? The Just a quick reminder for everybody here. Mongolia is 1-0 up. Winning one more map would guarantee them a top three in this world championship of the year. Whereas Kyrgyzstan want to make it back 1-1 one, one and take us to a map three. We did see Zayat bringing out his lucky hat and wearing it just before the second map. And I don't think I've seen him wear it before the first map. So maybe, maybe it's what it's needed, right? How Jeeves? The, the lucky hat? Yeah. I mean, both teams have to feel exceptionally proud of their performance so far in the tournament. Absolutely. They have been beating off uh, contenders left, right, and center. They're both here on the cusp of going to the grand finals. So regardless of the result today, both teams are going to be super happy with what they've done so far. Yeah, and, and there's still a lower bracket for Exactly. Them. They're kind of cruising here. Like, uh, you win this, you go to the grand final, you take a couple of days off, you know, you just wait for it. Um, you lose. That's okay as well. You know, you go with the lower bracket. It's fine. You got, you got a second bite of the cherry. Time is ticking and the, the, the pressure. Well, again, it's probably going slowly away from the shoulders of Kyrgyzstan as they've had uh, more and more time to relax and forget about whatever happened in game one, uh, what, what went wrong with the drafting phase and uh, the laning phase. And I think that's going to be proving to be very crucial as we've seen Mongolia had some pretty dominating laning phases over the last couple of days, Jeeves. And the Kyrgyzstan, on the other hand, have also won most of their lanes, but not last map. Yeah, I mean, the execution didn't, uh, the laning didn't really pan out for them. Like I say, Bloodseeker didn't have the greatest of lanes in regards to snowballing off the back of that. I think we saw a Bloodseeker game, the Bulgaria game, right, where yes. Bloodseeker was like, I don't know, 7-0 by the end of like uh, 8 minutes into the game. I've I mean, that's what you want, right? that's what you want from the Bloodseeker, so let's we'll see whether or not Mongolia have better success with my boy. Well. I'm very well, that, is that what you really always want, or is it that you always want it to be a giant space crab, Jeeves? Uh, no, I mean, I always want to be 7-0 as position 1 for sure. <laughs> Um, um, I'm a bit passive, though, in the first 10, 15 minutes normally. You know? Smoke coming in from the Dire to get a bit of extra mobility. Obviously, when your whole team is smoked, you have slightly higher movement speed to get into your targeted location, and Kyrgyzstan will be going on a completely yeah, different yeah, path. they're going on seen. a little bit of a different trajectory, and we've seen this actually work out really well for them in the past. Uh, the old, uh, the old counter, the counter smoke, you know? Going uh, round the outside, round the outside. <laughs> Smoke will expire. They will have claimed the top oh. watcher. And I, don't think I think the way that he approached there, they weren't 100% aware of the situation. There's right? definitely been a pick, They've yeah. got the watcher, though. I've always wanted to be a giant space crab. Yep. <laughs> yep. We'll leave the Radiant Triangle and we'll go to collect the their side bounty runes. I'm really curious to see what this Zodiac Earth Spirit can provide. Like I said, I'm not a big believer. But hey, if, if, if there's a team that wants to play Earth Spirit, then it's Kyrgyzstan. It's actually, obviously, it's uh, Earth Spirit versus Earth Shaker, the two ESs in the mid lane. 
Uh, and it's a pretty good bit matchup. Oh, C comes forward. He gets the minus armor immediately, but he's forced to take the heal. He's trying to keep himself alive after the high down with the blood rune. No, he did not. No, Zayat's, Zayat's claimed the bounty. But uh, they'll get the first blood on Zayat's on the bounty rune for the boys. And Kami going to pick up one on the other side of things. So the bounty rune should go 50 50. I shall not report you. Amazing voice line right there from AC Skyrat. But yeah, uh, great first blood going on the favor of Kyrgyzstan. And this oh, might got a little replay here just to. See an instant slow mo. Just unleash four mans onto the enchantress, and this is when she's at her most vulnerable. Uh, already lots of damage being dealt by Zayats, right clicking away. Uh, oh. Max and Ace, Skyrath, very low armor as a hero, so any piece of right click is going to do so much damage to him. Uh, as Kami goes for a homing missile first. Yeah, so we actually saw Rocket Barrage, I think, last time. Yeah, uh, we're going to get homing, uh, homing Missile this time. Ace taking a little bit of pain, but look at the timing here as he walks over. The Courier! Oh, yeah, he gets a cheeky free Courier. I Body blocks the camp as well. Wink, I think wink. this is a kill. This is a kill. And uh, Max looking to try and bring him down, but up to the high ground he goes. And Ace, a very, very fast hero, of course. 290 movement speed only on Lich. He's an old man, much like myself. A uh, little geriatric, so he'll not be able to catch Ace this time. And that means Max will not have the extra sentry uh, word needed to do his uh, mini camp. Well, he does. Uh, he does block. Uh, he blocks the other camp the other way. Uh, Eleven looking for a potential spear interaction here. Max is uh, getting pushed away, and it just shows you the threat that the Skyrath can pour in way more damage. There's the spear actually lands on Kami, though, unfortunately, or they find the kill on Max. Down time. C getting chased away, but as we said, he, he skilled the heal first. He's going to be just fine. And this mid lane, we need to kind of talk about it because it is getting a little better behind. Earthshaker 11 and 3 versus 6 and 0 on the Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit never really wins this lane. Uh, yeah, Earth Spirit doesn't win any lane ever, Jeeves. That's why you're not playing it as a mid laner, as we have learned throughout this tournament. But Sanctity and Zodiac, at least at the same level, the denies are still not going well. Four denies, five now for Sanctity. Zodiac will oh, try to get the range creep and will manage to do slow, but. Recently done, recently done. But yeah, the look bottle. How much pain he takes for it. But he's got his bottle, they're going to go down, they're going to exchange the water runes. Shaker juicing up, Earth Spirit juicing up. Um, uh, they're going to reset things here. But definitely early advantage with the way of the Earth Spirit. Now, 4 to 3 getting gone on here. Zayas throwing some arrows in there, the oil splashing against the Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker very low. He has one point in the passive. Of course, uh, recently nerfed the passive. It's now a measly 8%. <laughs> I just, what is even the point? Once he gets level 2, though, it starts to feel a little bit better again. Sang's deep, putting the beat down on Zodiac, though. And uh, Kyrgyzstan got to be pretty happy, though. They got the first blood, you know. It's a little bit of a uh, morale, a little pep boost from Zayas, sir. Keeping the guys, you know. This is Courier, meanwhile. Oh, Zayas as, as well. He is there to make sure the Bloodseeker does not get the early Lotus Orb. Not Lotus Orb, uh, Lotus. But SC doesn't deal as much damage as he would love to do because he had to, see, uh, to scale the heal at level 1 and he doesn't have an impetus just yet, so whereas Zayats keeps harassing away with those swimming actually, arrows. He actually goes level 2 enchant as well. That's so. a good... You, know, you need the enchant. You need enchant impetus. But the reason that he w got ganked in uh, the bounty rune is what forced the heal level 1. Okay, the flat kind of doing insane amounts of damage. Ace, of course, very low armor hero. The Kuru is coming across there, not able to quite snipe on it. C does a nice little pull. Zayas coming in from the side. He actually gobbled one of the creeps there. You saw the uh, the skeleton archer. Yeah, death pack early on, and SC is still not going for the impetus. Yeah, puts another point in enchant, so he can get a, a better slow off on Blizzy here. And I think uh, I can see where he's going with that. It's kind of awkward, though. It's kind of awkward. You do want to see that impetus. But I think it probably has less value versus uh, the Tide Hunter, right? So, so yeah, getting pursued behind the tower now. I'd say that Max is pulling him back in there. The spear, the rocket's going to connect, but uh, thankfully he got the spear off the blood grenade use here. If they can't find this kill, it could be pretty risky. Nice Dodge respect. rebuke back the other way, and he gets out of the danger zone, and that's really important that you don't find the kill there. The blood grenade pretty much going to waste there. Uh, but yeah, not as many kills as I'd like to see so far. Well, ice skating away here as Blizzy giving him the slap down. Feels pretty bad for 4-2-3. That's slow. That's Coming such back a strong though. slow. And one of the reasons we see SE <laughs> scaling a second point in that spell instead of getting the impetus is uh, Blizzy can't pursue 4-2-3, but meanwhile Kami is doing very well up top. Uh, the only way lane that they're kind of dominating on the dire side of Kyrgyzstan. 
I mean, Chirocopter's in such a good place right now as a hero, like I say, until you get that BKB online. He's pretty much untouchable, I would say. Do you deny both of the range creeps? Yes, please. But there's so much sustain on this bottom lane, coming in from both the Enchantress and the Bloodseeker in Nate's heal himself. Oh, a little bit of uh, oil getting splashed up on SE. The zoning coming through to 43. Zayas is kind of low here, and they're going to be able to kind of go on him here, speeding up the Bloodseeker, even with a smoke. Back. But here's the rotation in from the Air Spirit. Zodiac showing us exactly why this hero is being picked up, as he's able to make a connection and get a double kill downtown and he needs that right his lane has gone pretty badly so far he's like 12 cs behind one level he gets a behind. double kill Feels very good. needed yeah very needed indeed very rotations from zodiac but let's see if he can somehow convert this earth spirit into something else despite looking at his counterpart this earth shaker 34 in 15 minute five very well played. a little bit of weakness from mongolia's vision game there allowing that rotation to happen pretty much undetected i'm sure sanctity called the missing but they weren't able to, uh, they were actually committing at the time. There was a good bait coming through from Blizzy there. Haste from bottom. Can Zodiac get there first? Yeah, 100%. No, yes. uh, no danger. So now he's going to be tempted to go down to three again. 4 to 3 under his own tower, and this feels pretty bad. The gaze, by the way, a cheeky rotation by Max through the portal. It's a Sancti TTP. He does here. Echo Slam in play. Echo Slam. Okay, he takes Blizzy back the other way. Air Spirito, he was thinking about coming down here with the Hay stream, but he sees the Skywrath Mage in the mid lane. lane. He's thinking, I can probably kill this guy solo. Zayats get blocked. Very beautiful. Yeah, Make it right there. A great play from Sanctuary. He gets the double kill down in the bottom and kind of evens things up in that lane. It was looking uh, all of a sudden kind of flavor zone for Kyrgyzstan. And look at this. See, he's on the creep and seek. And guess what? The TP from Tidehunter. He wants to get there in first. Uh, it's going to be 10 seconds away though. He's he like, oh, the price there. Trying to get the stock up. You can't just see in the process. Meanwhile, gets Max this is on the other blocking. side of the map trying to get it. Go, SE, go. Can and he gets it? the wisdom oh, rune. Wow, but Max managed to get one on the far side. So they Science. stole each other's wisdom runes. And now the oil getting stacked up on C. But he's got himself heal running here. And he's like, you know, prancing away. This A hero, bit man. Of slow coming through. The arrows landing nicely. SC should be fine. He's got a big wand. Oh, maybe a bit of misclick. Turning around. Yeah, awkward, awkward. Tries to juke them in the trees, but he will fall in the end. And Kyrgyzstan going to be quite happy with that exchange. They may have lost their wisdom rune, but they kill an enchantress. Overall, the lanes as they fold out. Sanctity, as we expect, the going to move up top. They're going to start pouring the damage in. The call All down in. on 11. Zodiac with another great rotation. Very quick movements around this map right now for the air group. And 11, he's trying to scoot himself to safety here, but they've got the vision of the courier of the Lich. Very nice play by Max. They're really, really well played. Keeps the uh, courier on top. Very risky. I think you're fine if you're Max. You finish your trading your courier's life for the opponent off lane. Denying That's happening. the double damage room from Sanctity. Yeah. Zayat's very happy with that. We'll try to get another couple more creeps, maybe get a level 3. But oh, SC with a nice rotate will get the slowdown. He's in behind. Sanctity, of course, going to be able to Fisher block him. FDB. Oh my word, that was 50% of his health with one hit. But it doesn't matter. Blizzy, meanwhile, accompanied by, uh, by uh, Zodiac. Bomb, yeah. yeah, taking down the carry. And if you're Zayat, you're like, okay, keep on ganking me. I'm just a support. Yeah, Bloodseeker not having the intended impact so far in this game. Kind of expected though, like I said, the Tidehunter lane, quite annoying to deal with. You don't really get very many CS, and also, and Bloodseeker just hates being slowed. This is exactly what you predicted, Jeeves. Blizzy with the Meteor Hammer completed already, used on the tower, I think, once or twice already. Ravage in hand, level 6, and he will start in maybe killing some of those stacks. Interestingly enough, though, he's going phase boots, which means he's not going to go into the Greaves and Aura kind of side of things. It means that that might come out elsewhere on the map. And it's not going to come out on the clinks. Maybe Lich looks for it a little bit later, but Lich traditionally tends to build uh, like a Tranquil Boots uh, type of... Um, type of build-up, so it'll be interesting to see where they actually get that sustain from on the lineup. Shout out to our observers once again, pointing out the hero damage and how much work Zayat has been doing on these clinks thus far. A medallion in hand already. Uh, yeah, Meteor Hammer putting in the work, and th that Mars was very under-leveled. As I say that, there's a fight down mid. Uh, goes back in by the gaze. He throws off the Echo Slam. It's doing a little bit of work. He almost finds Zodiac here, but Zodiac bringing him down first. Stays alive! He's trying to chase him down, but guess what? He's dead, maybe? No, he'll be fine. 
Ace Diet. pouring in the damage on Zai. He overcommitted for this. Tried to find C before he got his HP back up. Is he going to die? I don't think so. Maybe. No. So both of them getting away on just the smallest of health. And Bloodseeker, of course, seeing all of this happening, he's actually been forced out of his lane. He's jungling now for the last minute or so. One for one trade, mid laner for position five. Very, very good. Uh, Zodiac needed all of that to get to catch up. Maybe until that point, the uh, sanctity was top of the bus for Netware. So a very, very high value kill indeed. Crystalis treads raid bend wand onto Kami already. Blade of uh, Galactic. Straight in for Agnum Scepter. Black is smiling somewhere. I'm sure he loves this build up. Blink Dagger, a hundred away from Sanctity. We'll have it after one more last hit. Still one level for in front of Zodiac, but now Sanctity, after that death, is no longer topping the network chart as the gyrocopter of Kami has taken over. Yeah, Kami's had a pretty much a free lane so far on the gyrocopter. Um, uh, able to uh, farm up nicely there. Sanctity trying to go in here. They creep of SE going to try and mess with Zodiac so here. Annoying. Turns around and says, okay, I'll hit your tower then. He's trying to wait for this C sitting on the side there. They're trying to get this a damage set up. They've got level six on the Skywrath Mage, so maybe they can do something here, but Max waiting on the wings. Yeah, Max can pretty much negate all of that damage with the shield, but they are pushing the tower and will force the TP out yeah. from the Tidehunter. This is going Coming to be over here. The damage is available. Let's see if we can get something done. Zodiac closing in on Max, starting to beat his ass down, and they will find that kill without having to expend the Ravage. That's off Mars. This is uh, Zayas here. The tower, the mid tower, very low indeed, but you know what? Is Kyrgyzstan going to be quite happy with the situation right now? They already have control of that bottom lane, more or less. Bloodseeker has returned. Nice jump in. Oh. <laughs> Max getting slapped back the other way. So both position fives. Oh, it was position four and then nine. Position five being traded out here. Tower and deny range for the dire side, but despite losing a uh, support there and protecting the tower, you still have enabling your blood. You're enabling your bloodseeker to get some more far bottom. Will Blizzy get to deny this? Yes, he will. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Easy deny for the tide hunter. He didn't want to commit for it. The roll in from the Arch Burrito, though. He actually gets caught Bonnie, yeah. though. An ace unleashing the Fury a little bit. That quick blade mail making. <laughs> ace, he doesn't want to mystic flare that Arch Burrito anywhere, I'll tell you what. <laughs> as soon as he puts that blade mail on, he's like, yo, bro, I'm done. I'm good. Arch Burrito players, am I right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is it, though. You go for the double bracer blade mail build, and then you become like this kind of tanky frontliner for your team for a bit. I, I personally, that was a complete unnecessary roll in from Zodiac, getting a bit overzealous, trying to challenge the Earthshaker, who's now on the back of that kill, back topping the network charts. Uh, of course, using the Echo Slam, but level 10, minute 12 for the mid Earthshaker. This uh, is about to get very, very scary. Bloodseeker's still a full 1,500 gold behind the Gyrocopter, though. Uh, that's a little bit concerning. Uh, yeah, they're so much space. vision here on top of Zayas. The murdering will commence. Down he goes, here's the air straight, bumps off the playmill. Eleven's here though, with a beautiful spear combo. Chain Frost gonna start running through that back line, don't cause them severe problems. And Tommy here to clean up as well. Eric Spirito toastified, so three kills easily picked up for Kyrgyzstan. And they are looking to draw out this game and uh, force it to a game three for sure. Beautiful chain for us right there coming in from Max, just bouncing it around. I think I did notice the Ushaker trying to go away from his team. Magnus actually necessary. did more damage than the chain frost there. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So Bloodseeker, I hear him chunking away in the jungle there. How much is Maelstrom's online? BKB timing should be coming. Oh, is he gonna go Mjolnir first? I like that. Maybe. That's pretty good versus uh, the gyro situation. Uh, gyro is in the tree line. Very low mana and not 100 HP. Okay, we'll okay. pop the Lotus. They know where he is. They know where he is. They got the blood right coming, coming in. through here. Rupture through the other side. The silence couldn't hold him in place, but the quick TP of Tide Hunter. No round. ravage, though. Meanwhile, up top. 11 getting absolutely handled here. There's no way away for him to get out of that. Which is fair. I mean, the, the mid and the Zai is doing a lot of work. Yeah, this Klinks is putting in a lot, making a lot of space around the map. Uh, you know, even t taking a, a gank coming into his jungle, but then the team trading with that beautiful team fight we earlier saw in the dire jungle. Zaya is doing very, very well. And like I said, the Solar Crest will also use the Death Pack to Yeah, yeah, he goes straight the for kill. the Solar Crest rather than stopping off for the Desolator. He wants to be more of a team kind of player, which is fair enough. And uh, there's a reason this guy got second place at TI, you know? Yeah, team player 
team player, but he's building it uh, Solar Crest into threads, so we'll see what he's built with the Android <laughs> progress. A level 8 already, and this death pact is so good versus the oh, edge. The as this edge. happening, but Zayas is in the zone, and... Yeah, we'll only spot him. He'll, he'll spot stack. So and Gyrocopter would love to just come down here and nom nom nom. Yeah, on even Tidehunter sure. himself. Tidehunter as well. They've got two really good options for it. Uh, if I was Kyrgyzstan, I'd be smoking up and heading to that area right now and just collecting it. You know? Sanctity. Okay, a little bit awkward. Steve so coming from the right Ravage. side. Ravage. The meme hammer on top. Chain Frost bouncing through the creep. Zodiac with a follow up. And really nicely. Four heroes in the zone. There's they a lot of hate for that Earthshaker. And, uh, oh, look at this, look at this, they're like, no, no, honestly, there's no stacks here. But yeah, the exact rotation we just talked about is they come in here and like, thank you so much for stacking for us. So kind. Now they try to spawn though, they drop down that's the arena. Enough. The call down is there, Tommy kind of low, that's fear. It's not quite enough, the Bloodseeker is already annihilated. And so is, wait, did he get the kill? No. So they get four kills on Kyrgyzstan and there are now 10 kills up, make it five. Zodiac with a double. And uh, really nicely done. The fact that they get their gyrocopter out there on very low HP. Echo Slam! No, okay. Sanctum Why? comes through, gets down Zodiac. Now trying to deal with Blizzy. It's a difficult thing to do. The meme hammer landing on top of the stun. They kill Zodiac, but they basically get five man wiped. You can't, you can't improve until you make mistakes. And that was a big, big mistake, Sanctity, I'll have to be honest. And the reason why more damage was not dealt to the Tidehunter after that pretty good Echo Slam is the fact that it was a level 11 Earthshaker, no two points in the Echo Slam. Not enough, but not sufficient to kill, the, uh, kill both of the heroes. Very unfortunate right there. And maybe a bit overzealous from Sanctity, wanting to get something back for his team after losing that earlier team fight. But you lost five players and a huge stack, and now Kyrgyzstan very looking very good. 10k gold lead, minute 17. So, 4 I, 2 3. I don't want to call this guy out. I don't want to call 4 2 3 out. But like I say, he went for the more greedy Mjolnir first. I, I said in the draft, you cannot fight until you have a BKB. Yep. So, it's causing his team problems. It's going to take him another three minutes to get that BKB online. And it's not just that. I'm, I'm also looking at the Mars currently being overtaken in network by Zayat's Klinks. Uh, yeah, Kyrgyzstan is still here to play. They're feeling way more comfortable and they're showing up on the main stage yet again. This is good though, because you lose game one and it feels super bad, you know, but so they're able to quickly recover and they're coming back into this. They've got this, this gyrocopter strat, the air spirit actually overperforming, definitely 100% from what we were expecting. And uh, it's a good time. Bossmer caped up, picked up for Blizzy here. And Tommy now getting his own stacks as well. More acceleration for this Gyro Copter, who's now 4,500 gold ahead of the Bloodseeker. Yeah, Gyro will be pretty much 2k away from finishing his Satanic. We will deal lots of pressure. No more fortifies for these T2. Zayat's gonna make his way here. Pressure the tower. Blizzy gonna force 11 away. Uh, and Kami can just be alone on an island. He's a pretty tanky. 2.5k, 20 armor. Oh, nice arcane ring picked up for the R spirit. It's going to allow him to be a little bit more mobile across the map. Uh, the spirit vessel on the courier right now for uh, Enchantress. But look at this. This is what you want from your clinks as he demolishes three towers. Kami going to show up right now as well. Quick draft reminder. Bring it down. A spirit vessel on the courier coming the way of Enchantress, and this might be very good. We talked about this yesterday. Who's going to press the button faster? Are you going to wait for the vessel to be popped on the gyro, and then you nullify that with a Satanic, or are you going to use the Spirit Vessel on top of a popped Satanic? Now you wait for the Satanic. Otherwise, what's the point? That's what you should do, but we'll see who's going to have the fatter fingers as we're looking at the Sanctity Urshaker that Sanctity. has been falling behind quite he's a lot. A, oh, sorry, yeah. he's, he's halfway to Desolator, by the way. Uh, this is a position four chasing down Sanctity, the position two here. Zodiac pops off the BKB, no messing around. And Sanctity fall. Wow, you look at the range of that. That's uh, it's quite impressive on that big boy there. Also, Arcane Rune on Zodiac. Uh, pump faking the TP, cancelling Arcane, having so much impact in that fight. But again, Earthshaker, one of these heroes that has a high win rate in pubs in the current meta. But other than Garner on Nows, we haven't seen many of the core players have that much success here in Yash. Uh, Gyrocopter, 100 CS ahead of Bloodseeker. Another uh, Radiant snack being taken by the Dyer under that Watcher, and we have a quick Double replay. this again, yeah, as they uh, throw in the DPS, the DKB's there, there's literally nothing Sankt can do other than cry. 
full focus from Team Kyrgyzstan. No smiles, no cheers as of yet. They are one map down. They don't want to commit any mistakes. And so far, they haven't really. Other than Zodiac maybe not doing his best in the mid lane because of the out mismatch versus the Earthshaker. Since then, Kyrgyzstan has been playing some very flawless Dota 2. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's certainly something they had to do going into game two, already game down. They're, they're feeling comfortable though, I think. I, th I think they're, they're quite happy with what they want to do here. And Mongolia, oh, wow, I didn't even know you could solo that, but he's giving it a go. Static, right? He's giving it a go. Bloodseeker knows exactly what you're up to though. He is very fast right now. Is that Zeus out now? No, don't actually, bro. <laughs> Just got the good weather back. Come, he will pop the Satanic, a couple of hits, back yep, cannon, back triangle, full, full HP. Uh, meanwhile, Bleezy and Sanctity spotting each other, trying to get this uh, Enchantress. Wow, bringing a huge creep skip, double wave with a Cardi, four range creeps there. Actually, no, just two range creeps. Yeah, yeah, two range creeps. He's got the, he's got the flag creep, though. So, uh, getting a little bit of uh, D ward action there as well, off the back of that. <laughs> Let's see where the sentry is. 1.4k away from the Bloodseeker BKB. Level 13 only. He's very under level. I think the XP discrepancy currently is very, we'll very high. We've got a wisdom rune here that's going to help him. He's going to bail him out a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, as soon as the BKB, he's got the full Mjolnir online, but as soon as the BKB is online, he can start thinking about fighting. Might want to start looking towards the shard. Might want to, he's going to go Sanjay Yasha. Pretty standard, you know? Axe finally in the hands of Sanctity, but this is an Earthshaker mid with only two items. You could pro probably have this on a, on a support at this point, as we're looking at this level 18 almost gyrocopter jumping in the pit, rolling in. Uh, yeah, this Roche is going to die very quick as Zayats comes in with a like double damage on the minus armor. Oh no, he wasn't double damage, just like uh, weird clink things, don't worry about that. And uh, he melt through anyone with the gas, minus armor from that, plus the solar crest. Hammer on top, and they should be able to take a pretty quick age this year. They are aware though, they're smoked up on a few heroes of Mongolia looking for a way into this pit, but uh, they're not going to be able to challenge directly. We try instead to do the old, the old fader route. The tier 2 for the ages, but they're a little bit too late to the party, unfortunately. Will TP back to push the. Oh, mid they're in the mid lane here with the ages. They want to get aggressive immediately. And, uh, yeah, Mongolia uh, reading the situation might be a good time to back off. Enchantress is still pretty deep, and so is Mars. They got some pressure on that tier 2 top, but not enough to bring it down. SC, he's creeping and he's sneaking in this uh, forest here. Now smoke on the opposite side. Kyrgyzstan, four of the players in smoke. Gyrocopter gonna pop the call down just going to clear the creep wave. The Bloodseeker here with the smoke. They got three of them there. Blizzy as well. Hunting in the right general area as they go looking for this. Bloodseeker about to be in a world of pain. Surprise, Muddy Monster. He goes in. And he's the Fury and he evaporates. He's got no armor there to, to speak of and uh, he gets eradicated. Uh, look at the split. Yeah, we are seeing the power that they thinks roaming around the map has these teammates. They didn't even need the gyro with Aegis, and that is 15k of their net worth. They did not need him. The Bloodseeker blew up in 2.5 seconds. Yeah, they didn't need to bring a, didn't need to bring any more there. And now until he gets his BKB, I mean that's just going to be the story. And now a Silver Edge being in a quick buy of the gyrocopter. Uh, very good build up. I don't want to see the Falcon Blade or other items that I've been seeing this tournament. Crystallis, Axe, Satanic, Silver Edge, very beautiful. Doesn't need a BKB because he's so, so far ahead. The Silver Edge is for the Mars. To make sure he is also paper thin and for C as well. He's Arena. Arena. There we go. Yeah, they find Zayas in the Arena, but the Spear will not land. They Mystic do a lot of damage from Sky, though. That's going to be enough. The Sanctity comes flying in. Zodiac pops off his BKB. C surviving as he backs it up. And now they go rolling, but guess what? She already TP down. The Sanctity going to get cut off here. The Bloodseeker going for the Rupture, but Max. He's quick for the gaze, and now the chain frost coming through. He pops the BKB, but oh, yeah, all yeah, too late. He's... And you know, Jairo's just walking around ruptured. He doesn't even care. He's like, "Yo, I've got, I've got Satana. It's all good." Sanctity trying to get away, <laughs> but only his dead body flying off in the distance there. And Kyrgyzstan putting on a little bit of a powerhouse show right now. A uh, beautiful kick. Remind me of a rugby kick right there from the Urshan Spirit onto the jumping Urshaker. SC not long for the world as Kami just on his tail. Foaming missile gonna hit, raw barrage. I uh, I watched Romania versus Scotland at Maribor. Maybe maybe not. 
AC just got away scot free because Max was too far and they couldn't stun him again. Only one point in homing missile, that's why Gyrocopter opted to max out stats. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, he's in a pretty good position right now. He's 17k net worth. He's got plus, what, 5k up, 5,500 gold up. A whole extra item on the Bloodseeker. Um, uh, Mongolia, they really need to kind of reset here and play as a five and find a kill. You like, were you saying know. about the Scotland rugby match? Yeah, Scotland versus Romania oh. at Yeah, rugby match. Did we do better at that than we did at Dota? It was an absolute slur, but they'd only just started at rugby. So, okay, like a giant creep wave coming down. Years ago, <laughs> <laughs> giant creep wave coming down mid. Uh, this T2 tower will collapse. There is a 45, but that is going to be the tier three 40. You don't want to use it for a T2. And look at so many creeps. This Urshaker will this be more than happy to farm. Really nice push right now. Sam Echo Slam. Echo Slam would have done serious damage. The spear back though. Beautiful spear actually landing in the silence, but he's got this tonic to get that off. Yeah, the Ravage on Blizzy, they roll them from Zodiac, a call down on top, Rupture Arena. going in on the back line actually, the arena's down, Mars, he's having a bit of a pickle, maybe they can take Max down though, they That's do actually course. get the support, Bloodseeker healing what up the around. process, they're doing this with the BKB, he pops it off in time this time, Blizzy trying to man fight through this, there's no shard on the Bloodseeker yet though, so he isn't quite able to do as much damage there as he would have liked, C, he's trying to deal with his uh, Gyrocopter with an Aegis, Gyro going to lose the first life at least. But Mongolia finds something at least. Now 11, trying to get back up to the high ground here. He throws the spear back the other way, but he will be dusted in the process. And not in a reveal way, in a put in the ground way. Oh, they're coming back. Yeah, no Echo Slam, slam no Arena, happens. no Mars, no Earthshaker. What can you do? No, no Pikmin, no Bloodseeker. Though. Bloodseeker should be in a pretty good, uh, pretty good condition right now, but he needs that shard in order to fight these guys. Yeah, but what are they going to do? Tickle you? Well, no, the shard is percent his health, so it's really good versus this 4k health or 3.5k health. Uh, Melee Rex will fall, and Kami will disengage afterwards. There's a T2 tower top. We'll go back, recompose, or maybe we'll not go. Okay, just killing a creep wave with the uh, call down. I'm okay with this. Yeah, I'm of okay course. With this. This, is a, this is a smart way to play the game. So I had four stacks, well, two stacks of uh, four in total on the Desolator. We'll finally yeah. collect it for a for the Radiant. A little sneaky peeky, a little well, attempt here being made on the on the Tormentor. And it, it goes to Ace. Shard for Ace. And they are now going to be trying to take the tier 2 top. Gyrocopter with 8k damage dealt all to the buildings. But Blinks uh, with a level order from over 3k right now. Actually, quite surprising how much uh, Blizzy has on the Tidehunter <laughs> compared to Clink. You know, you'd expect uh, it's a meteor hammer more. build. He's been having it yeah. since like minute seven, for sure. Uh, but now the BKB flew in from the gyrocopter, and if you managed to kill him once before, let me see you try to do the same thing again. Yeah, he needs to be pretty quick to get it off before the Mars kind of spears him in that situation. They're ready to go in though. Uh, a little smoke action here. Bloodseeker, he says, I need more farm though. And he's going for the Halberd instead of the Sand and Yasha. I mean, he already has the Sanj part, though, which is what you want on the Bloodseeker. Yeah, no Still MKB. locking the shard. There's no MKB on Gyro because he did opt to go for that Silver Edge. So maybe not the worst item, obviously, disarming uh, the, the, the Gyrocopter will be the main target. But uh, well, let's see. Earlier on, uh, Bloodseeker was actually thinking about getting a Butterfly. Right? Yeah. Or was that when Kyrgyzstan were playing? Anyway, they'll go back. Uh, Kyrgyzstan will go back and take their own Tormentor. Zayas getting handled <laughs> a little bit there. No, full <laughs> confidence right there for Zayas. Uh, Bloodseeker sees him, though. You know, he's, uh, it's he's a harder to ask. Earth Spirit, wow. That, that's more like the build I would like to see from an Earth Spirit. We, we often see them uh, building a Solar Crest or an Urn. Spirit Vessel type yeah. build up. But yeah, we kind of knew he was going for beef this time. He went for the Bracers into the Blade Mail. Very nice. So yeah. that really synergizes well with uh, the Heart of Dross now. Yeah, and you've got these three tanky melee cores and on the side Shad of Kyrgyzstan. Quiver picked up for Sanctity. Now that's going to accelerate his one hit damage. You know? Pretty cool, pretty cool dynamic. I like that combo right there. See, but, uh, in a little bit of the wrong place at the wrong time, as four heroes come knocking oh. on his door. Oh, oh. whoa, he's uh, he's going to dodge left, he's going to dodge right, but he unleashed the fury. And uh, he realizes he's been caught Bonnie, and he goes down. He doesn't even have a bracer, actually. It, it's, it's only a support, but it is another stack of the Desolation Sanctity. Echo Slam, pipe being popped in time from Blizzy, and now it's going to protect Zayas. Can they burst him down? They cannot. Okay. But that pipe from Blizzy, nullified the effects of the Ur Echo Slam in the very last moment. Yeah, Spear here trying to keep the Gyrocopter at bay. Bloodseeker's in the area. This uh, 
John is a little far forward. 19k gold lead for Team Kyrgyzstan, but Bloodseeker has somehow snuck his way up onto the second part of the network, but still 8k behind the gyrocopter. BKB is on three of the cores, Mars with BKB, BKB himself, and obviously gyrocopter still 9 seconds, BKB has not used it once. Difficult situation right now for Mongolia, and they do need patience. They do need to keep making space for Bloodseeker. Almost a halberd, though, for him. Only yep. 300 gold away from that halberd. Uh, uh, <laughs> He's 8,000 gold ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> well, we need the Earthshaker to get his level 18 somehow for more of an impact on that Echo Slam during the next team fight. And if you can catch Kyrgyzstan off guard without popping the the BKBs and chain stun them, you might be able to get a couple kills and oh maybe try to disengage. Honestly, it's really hard for Mongolia. And now that they have the pipe up on the Tide Hunter, and he really is a rock. You know, he's difficult to take down physically, and he's difficult to take down with magic damage. And they're smoking they go, up. Uh, they go a little peek and seek here. Though. Level 18 on the Bloodseeker. Halberd is done. No idea. This would be an okay kill. Look at the behind the outside. Yeah. But uh, everyone else, he's trying to link up the rest of his team as they smell that Are they sneaking up a Roche? Right. Are they sneaking up a Roshan? They're heading for the Roche. It's Roche. not going to be up for another minute and 20 seconds, though. So They don't know that, right? No, no, no. But it could potentially be up right now. You know? Yeah. They, they have a pretty good position, but obviously Kyrgyzstan knows something is going on. The creeps are pushing in. You've got no racks in mid. The CFC tower is getting hit on bottom. The top one, we have Zayas just taking it by himself. Yeah, he's going to be able to come in here and do a little bit of damage there. Eleven has to leave. Yeah, they, they're, they're all responding to this. Coming back. I mean, even if they find Zayas by himself, though, it's going to be a huge kill for them. He is oh, worth he's he's wasted money. by Zayas there. <laughs> I mean, he had to try. Nine <laughs> second BKB right there, but that is... 1,500 gold for Team uh, Mongolia. That's going to enable Kyrgyzstan to go in the Roche pit. Can oh, Mongolia yeah. contest fast enough? They're smoking up. They're going to go on the way. No buyback on the clinks. Roche will be here in 30 seconds, and they get smoked up, going hunting. This Roche timer might, might favor them in the end if they could somehow get to the pit in time. Echo Slam in play. Mars Arena, Rupture, Level every 18 ultimate. on Sanctity. This is what we're waiting That's what for. That's what we're he wanting, yeah. PKB. Double this damage up top, no one knows of it. This yeah. could be it. No DD, too far to take it right now. Okay, they, they see the Blizzard. courier, they know exactly what's what. They're like, yo, 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 they're definitely in there. Blizzy, the tree line, we just fought Because the smoke breaks. Blizzy with his brink down to the low ground. Quick reactions for an old man. They, they take the out his courier, which was the Hex, by the way. Sanctity Sanctity. goes deep, he looks for Max. Whoa. They murder up SE pretty quick, though. The call down comes through the BKB. I on 11. In comes Sanctity. They smash through the Tide Hunter. No Ravage. The Rebel Echo comes out. They take down. No more, actually. It's not enough for the BKBs up. Bloodseeker in a big heap of trouble. It's a triple kill. And actually, it's gone really pear shaped. 11 trying to hide in the trees. It's a triple trade, so but Ace good will to start off with. They're going to get this kill on the Sky Wrath Mage, and Mongolia not going to be able to take this Roche fight anymore. Meanwhile, Zayas dealing with SE in the mid lane solo. Oh wow, this and is uh, super awkward now as Kyrgyzstan getting ready perhaps for the last push of the game. And this will be Aegis Chase and Kami will hit his level 25 after this Roche kill. DXP. He's just a sliver away from getting that uh, extra uh, flak cannons. But meanwhile, Zayas doesn't care. He's just taking a load of racks. He's like, nice racks. Go oh, shame if someone was to take them out. Mars is there, but uh, he doesn't feel like he's able to do much to use that final fortification to try and protect it. They're just going on the gyro, the cheese for the Earth burrito. BKB. They have initiated in, but the BKB of Zayas stops the arena from being able to do anything, even if he did have it. 27k gold lead for the side of Team Kyrgyzstan. One range rack standing up top, Zayas is probably not going to even care about that one. They're already moving down bottom. A final tier three standing in with their way between the final set of racks. Final fight opportunity for Mongolia here. It's now or never. It Can they get a good initiation? Here, it's over. So Zayas is going to come up here, break the smoke. Four archers died. The arena's there. There's no BKB this time. They're able to bring down Zayas. They get Zodiac as well. No, he eats the cheese, keeps himself alive. But guess what? The Arch Burrito, he's toasted. Kami comes in through the back line. He's all in this stuff. He's unleashing the Fury Tank. Goes a blood seeker. He goes. He's still alive. No, Not he's dead. Long. It's over. it's over, he's died for 74 seconds. There are three Eleven. buybacks in play. Ace getting smashed by Zayas and his buyback. Air Spirit, he comes in, Air, Air Shaker comes in. Echo! Echo. Zayas kind of low, but he's still strong. He's got one more hit. His creeps. 
but they kill him and they bring him down. There are only two heroes left and the GG's come out for game two. One, one, and we're gonna be heading to a map three. Can Kyrgyzstan make a reverse comeback or is Mongolia gonna show us once again that they can bounce back from a defeat on the second map, Chiefs? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is what we expected from the start of this series. It is going to go the full distance. Kyrgyzstan not going to go quietly into the night. And now it's time for Mongolia to contemplate their uh, situation. Yeah, and uh, we've seen Mongolia with the backs against the wall before, and they have bounced back and managed to win that map three in quite a dramatic fashion. Uh, but I love seeing Kyrgyzstan showing us that they've got the presence of mind of a team, despite being a bit of a mix themselves. Yeah, they definitely knew exactly what game they wanted to play, and then they forced Mongolia to play into it. Uh, the Tidehunter really shut down that Bloodseeker early, uh, early aggression in the lane, made sure that they had a strong lane for Kami up top. And Earth Spirit, the performance on Earth Spirit, we talked about how Zayas is the Earth Spirit God. He played out a blinder. He played yeah. an absolute blinder on the Earth Spirit there. Yeah, pr played very well on uh, the Zodiac Earth Spirit. But I want to say it was because the other lanes were enabled to be stand standalone heroes. The Tidehunter was self-sufficient. The Gyrocopter was self-sufficient, which allowed for the su supports to come around. Yeah, they got he got pretty destroyed in mid by the Air Shaker, but that's kind of expected in the matchup. Yep. But he made such clean rotations. Every time he went bottom, he found two kills. Every time he went top, he find like a kill on the Mars, forcing him in an awkward situation. And uh, you know, really, really well played by Kyrgyzstan. And can't wait to see game three. We're well, going to uh, we're going to head to the. The, the break there and uh, we'll, we'll see a little bit of a, a highlight reel but we'll be back for game three We want to win this tournament and we have a lot, had a lot of time to practice and we have a lot of talented players that we brought to this tournament. Over 700 gamers from around the globe will join us to compete and battle it out for glory to earn their place in the Parfion of Champions. Because of this event, so I'm really happy that I saw uh, a lot of female teams. Like, it's an opportunity to play against them all. We've been uh, looking at the other teams so far and we've been scouting them, like, what they play and how they feel like. Cel mai bun evenimente până acum la care am fost eu în țara la noi. Beautiful country, beautiful people, amazing food. Good luck to everyone. Let's enjoy together these days of sharing values. Yeah, we have a couple of things prepared, so we're, we're coming in with a, a little strat book, but enough to, to win our games. The top three players will make it out there, right? So basically two people will make it out on the lower side and one person gets it advanced. So whoever's the main winner, they're ahead of everybody. I used to be a competitor in it, now I'm a commentator in it, obviously. But this game itself, right, there's a lot of fighting games out there. This is a one, two, 3D fighting game. Having so many countries in this city is something very special and it's an honor to be here and play against Mongolia. A música 
sunt foarte multe echipe. Sper să fiu nu prea mult în ultima perioadă meciurile, dar cred că USC o să ne surprindă foarte mult. I'm confident uh, and I have plans for my opponents, but uh, I know they are good players, so I'll do my best.
Bună seara, Iași! Am revenit cu harta a treia dintre Mongolia și Kyrgyzstan. Bine ați venit! Sunt Waxen, I'm joined by Jeeves. Haideți să le dăm o bună primire în România și o rundă de aplauze a ambelor echipe. Ok, Jeeves, we are already straight into the draft. Dark Willow, get that hero out of the server. That's what Kyrgyzstan says. Batrider, same. And then, obviously, four of the most... Well, the most meta heroes currently taken out by Mongolia in the Invoker, Nature's Prophet, Gyrocopter, and Dawnbreaker. Quite pleased to see the Gyrocopter bomb. So am I. I think that was definitely a thorn in the side of what Mongolia wanted to do. Kyrgyzstan still respecting the uh, the hero, the Dark Willow, and the Bat Rider. But this is game three. Both teams are looking for that place in the grand final. Which one of these teams is going to go through after this draft? We might have a clear idea. But until then, we have to uh, we have to wait and see. Both teams have tasted defeat, and both teams have tasted a little bit of victory as well. One map away from getting into that top three, where the prize pool starts getting really interesting, G. So if you win this map, you're assured to get some of the money home. Yeah, both of these teams are going to be quite happy with a slice of that pie for sure. Special Spirit, the Made classic the Southeast Asian uh, hero getting picked up, but for Kyrgyzstan. And now Mongolia also have Vengeful Spirit as they get the Rubik. This Vengeful Spirit has been banned as a third ban in the first phase by Mongolia every single map thus far and they wanted to leave you through. They know the Rubik can pretty much do everything what Venge does. You steal all of her spells other than the passive of course. And you were telling me that Mongolia likes playing this hero as a core. The Rubik, yeah, we did see Sanctity with the mid Rubik before. Didn't have much success with it, but it, like... His actual presence in the early game was phenomenal. I okay. can imagine. Was it a phylactery build? It was first item phylactery, and that means that he hits you with a fade bolt. You're eating like 650 damage or something, <laughs> which is pretty sick. Which is pretty sick. Before yeah. reductions. Before uh, reductions. Again, I want to I want to ask you, Jeeves. You might have done maybe more research into Team Mongolia because you have casted there more times than I have. Why does Kyrgyzstan ban this Phoenix every single time against them? I've not seen Kyrgyzstan ban Phoenix against anyone else other than in this best of three. Uh, I mean, we have seen the Phoenix uh, only, I think, two times during the tournament. I think one time was by Team USA. Okay. Uh, and it may well be that Phoenix was played by Mongolia in during the... the uh, they didn't have any tiebreakers, right? They just came straight through. Yeah, no. Top um, three, top one. It's just, it's an annoying hero to deal with, percent-based damage, uh, big team fight all, it's difficult to approach it. So, uh, and it combos really well with some of the heroes that, that Mongolia like to play, like the Mars, for example. You have Mars plus a Phoenix. That makes sense. It's a pretty sick combo, you know? Uh, Kyrgyzstan being the one banning this Ven, they are the ones that have been playing this Ven, pairing him up with a Warlock. Both of those heroes, well, Sven taken out of the pool, Warlock still in, but more importantly than that, we still have a Beastmaster and an Earth Spirit available for a pickup. Well, uh, have you ever seen Zayas play Chen? Does he Chen? I don't know. I mean, Zayas is a very skilled player, so I would so, not. I mean, I wouldn't say it's probably beyond his wheelhouse. But I imagine if you play with Puppy, Puppy would be the Chen player, so yeah. you wouldn't get a chance to showcase it so much. Um, but yeah, so they take out the Sven, it's a great kind of fighting man, fighting hero. PA bound on the other side for, for Mongolia. Uh, we might be leaning towards a Terror Blade, one of the heroes that has been played a lot in the group stages, but not as much in the playoffs. Um, but with uh, three of the main core carries in this patch being taken out, it will be interesting to see. And it will be Mongolia going back to the Primal Beast. Return to Monkey. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a hero that likes to run over you. It's a strong, uh, you know, center point for the draft. And uh, pretty good off lane hero, but can also be flexed for the mid lane. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did see some uh, Primal Beast support a few months ago, trying to make his way into the meta, but I don't want to see any of that. Primal Beast is uh, such a tank and such a strong presence. I love seeing this as a core. I, I think he's okay as a, like a position four because he really only needs like a BKB, yeah. like uh, item wise. And then he's like, pretty really obnoxious to deal with, you know? Um, yeah, so we got the Vengeful Spirit on this side that gives him good lane presence. It's, it's a good lane dominating kind of hero. It also accelerate, accelerates the process for... It's the Faceless Void! Potential. And we talked about Kami's Faceless Void. We did mention it, and uh, I overlooked it personally. I was thinking of the Terrorblade, but Kami did have one of the meanest carry performances this tournament on his Faceless Void. His use of uh, Time Walk in particular, um, with a reverse Time Second Walk... Second to none. Phenomenal use of it. Like I saw him time walk out on like 50 HP. He comes back in still with 50 HP, <laughs> but dodges like I don't know, like four spells. Yeah, in the projectiles. Yeah, and able to uh, able to murder off the back of that. 
it's super good as well. The uh, the vengeful spirit can kind of like uh, you know set up for a great chrono. And the air spirit coming through right now. As air well. spirit again, and this could be for Zayas. It could be for Mint. It's a flex right now. You have three heroes. One of them, it's 100% a flex, and you will have to wait to see what Mongolia will bring to the table before it's your turn. Uh, the thing as well about Rubik is he can steal the chrono, but it's not that great. Yeah, he can steal the chrono and help the faceless boy. Well, at least he can move in the chrono. Right? In the old school, <laughs> he's stealing. It's like I got chrono my team. It's the Naga Siren. Mm. Okay, now this is uh, this is what the team that played versus Kami's faceless boy previously tried to tried to do, and they got stopped. It didn't work. No, no, it did no, not. No. So the idea with the Naga Siren, of course, is you sing the song. And you reset. So at most, I want to see, I guess, a four Naga, five Rubik. Five Rubik feels super bad. No, so it could be mid Rubik. Mid Rubik, four Naga. I would be down for that. Uh, we have had. We have had Naga carries this tournament with not much success, so I don't think Mongolia wants to go for something with uh, close to 0% win rate in this elimination match. The problem is Faceless Void likes to build Maelstrom, likes to build Mjolnir, and it is a very, very good uh, tool for dealing with Naga. Neither the illusions are there. Silencer coming through from Mongolia and similar to Kyrgyzstan with the Earth Spirit Flex. Now we have, well, three play, uh, three heroes that Mongolia could move around the map. Uh, we have seen Silencer mid plays with various degrees of success thus far. It has a pretty strong win rate in pubs and in uh, some of the TI qualifiers. But what do you no, think the I Silencer? I think it's a five Silencer mid Rubik and then the four Naga. I think. Uh, Interesting. I think, yeah. And the Dark Seer not being banned this time around by Mongolia. And Dark Seer Faceless Void, they do have lots of team fight presence. Not the most common combo, vacuum wall into a chrono, but can prove to be very, very good. I think he also buys a lot of time for yeah. the Faceless Void to get online. If you can get some back walls going off with a little magnetize on top, yeah. that's a very that's a very saucy kind of mixture there. You know, they're already getting two or three heroes together, magnetize on top, and you basically don't need the Faceless Void for the first 25 minutes. So looking at uh, Kyrgyzstan's side, they do have, yet again, two melee cores. Do you think they're going to go for yet another melee mid-hero? And on the side of Mongolia, that Urshiker is still in the pool. They have played it twice. I mean, although the Dark Seer is melee, he has the Surge, he has the, uh, the Iron, Iron Shell. Shell. So it really forces Mongolia into the situation core-wise where, you know what the best, it would be like Faces Void would be like a really good matchup versus the Dark Seer, so you're denying that here. Anti-Mage could come in here, but I've not seen any Anti-Mage at all this tournament. Uh, I'm trying to think of other cores that would... Dry Ranger, maybe. I think we have seen a single anti mage that was played offlane. Offlane, yeah, yeah, not as a core though, not as a core. Another carry there, yeah, of course. Uh, I would love, if it was, if it weren't for the silencer on the side of Mongolia, I would not mind a puck on the side of Kyrgyzstan. Mashes up very well with the dark seer and the vengeful spirit, and takes advantage a lot of the earth spirit mobility. But that silencer is silencer is very annoying to play versus uh, as when you're a puck in the mid game. Yeah, I'd be okay with it. So take the Skywrath Mage out, they take the Clockwork out. On, uh, I mean, if Mongolia are going to play this Naga Siren as core, uh, we're, well, well, we're there then, we're looking for... Are we are we banking on these Rubik Mage, Jeeves? No, I think it's, I think it's, it's a threat, right? And they do have the last pick. We must mention Mongolia has the last pick so they can decide what they want to do and they have plenty of reserve time as of right now. But we have seen it. We do know that he will run it if it's, uh, you know... And I mean, he's got plenty of steel options on the side of Kyrgyzstan, so I, it wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen. I like Leshrak here. On the side of Mongolia? On the side of Mongolia. Simply because once you've got your stuff off, if you get chronoed, it's no big deal. I suppose even even to Kyrgy for Kyrgyzstan to some extent, but Spirit Breaker would be taken out. You get you get Vak walled as uh, Lashrak. You yeah. know what? It, the illusion does nothing. Yeah, it's it's done. Kyrgyzstan, 26 second reserve time, 15 in the bank right now. They will have to make a choice. They have the final, well, second to last pick. They will have to be very careful with this ban. And what will their mid choice be? That's if. The Earth Spirit is not going to be mid, but I think we're tending to look at a position for Earth Spirit, taking Earth Shaker out, okay. which could enable this Earth Spirit. No, I think Earth Spirit, if it's going to be mid Earth Spirit, he still, it still sucks to lay this Earth Spirit. 
I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, sure, Archaker beats them, but... Uh, so does everybody, every, so, yeah. every other range, male, uh, range, range mid player. So we got 30 seconds left for Kyrgyzstan to think about this final pickup here. They have pretty good lockdown, they've got silence, they've got stun, they've got good team fight. Tekki. And it will be the Zayat Tekis making his debut on the stage it's here in Yash. <laughs> it's over. Wow. <laughs> uh, I mean, this guy's Tekis is legendary. Getting Tekis banned against you at TI. And, and Tekis into vacuum, uh, you know, jumping in, AoE stun. That's new Tekis. True. Uh, I haven't really seen Zayas on new techies, but I imagine it's just as dirty as old techies. So. But that means the Earth Spirit will go back to mid, so Zodiac felt comfortable with what happened last game. What I'm seeing from Kyrgyzstan here, though, is absolute comfort pick heroes. By far. Across the board, literally all of these heroes for all of the players are things that they're absolutely comfortable. It's the final game you know, of the series, and they're going with comfort and what they know. And they're going to rely on their, uh, you know, experience. Their experience to carry them through here. Yeah, absolutely. But Mongolia here, another full minute to think about. Oh wow, we just got Tekis by Zayat. Uh, this hero is in a very middle of the pack type hero right now. But in the hands of someone as experienced as he is, we might be able to see some uh, some great plays coming in from the Bomberman himself. How do you respond to this? This is. Uh I, this I mean, is this could still be a great I, Rubik mid. I, I, this could still be a great Rubik mid. I mean, I like I like the lash, but yeah, I mean, if they go for the Rubik, then we're looking for something else for a uh, different carry for safe lane. We're assuming Naga would be before Morphling still in the pool, right? Morphling Terror okay. Blade still in the pool. I like the Terror Blade. I like the Terror Blade. I like the dry. The Morphling. The PA is already banned, though. So uh, Morphling. It Ember will be an Ember Spirit, Spirit mid. Spirit. Yeah, Naga Spirit. safe lane Naga carry. Safe lane. Okay. This Ember will, well, I think it will fare pretty well versus Earth Spirit. I Zodiac will mid. destroy yeah. Zodiac <laughs> in the mid. Um, it has a little bit more rotation potential over the Earth Shaker, I would say. Uh, like, you can yep. rotate, do damage, but you don't put yourself in such a vulnerable position because Absolutely. of the Slight of Fist, you know? But we do sub ourselves a full draft. Mongolia, they will play uh, off lane uh, Primal, safe lane Naga, Sanctity on the mid, Amber Spirit, and then five position Silencer, four position Rubik for Kyrgyzstan. We've got none other than Zayat himself, the Tekis Master on the Split and Spoon, uh, Blizzy on the off lane Darkseer, Zodiac on the very well tested Earth Spirit mid, Kami. The staple, the best faceless void of the tournament, and finally Max, one of the best supports this tournament on the vengeful spirit. All right, game three. They have everything to play for. Let's see which one of these teams will go to the grand finals, and which team has to fight it out in the lower bracket. What is your prediction for this game, Jeeves? Because I. I mean, I jinxed it last game. I said Mongolia had the better draft, and in the end, I was proven wrong. The Earth Spirit did manage to prevail. Do we believe in back-to-back -back Earth Spirit mid wins? Or do you think Mongolia has what it takes to finally prove that this Naga is viable in the current meta? I think the real danger here is that Sanctity gets out of control on the Amber Spirit. Yeah. But I think if, he can, if they can stop that from happening, 4 to 3 the Naga is very vulnerable. If Kami can get online, Kyrgyzstan are taking this. Kyrgyzstan are taking this, okay. That is the prediction, ladies and gentlemen. You have heard it. One of these two teams will fall down to the lower bracket and the other one will advance to face Myanmar in the winner's bracket final tomorrow. We are getting on the server as a little we bit, speak. A little bit of nerves from both sides. Of it. Both sides. Uh, I, I can see that. Uh, some of the Mongolia players have not looked this focused in, well, in the entirety of the tournament. And uh, we'll see if they are happy with what draft they got. That Primal Beast is going to be proving such a key element. Can he manage to force the Void out of the lane early? Can he maybe even win the lane for his team? They have to snowball this so hard. Yeah. you got to make... You gotta enable your off lane to the point of creating enough space for the Naga Siren to become an actual threat later on in the series. Well, I don't know. I think uh, Kyrgyzstan looked pretty confident, you know. 
pretty focused, maybe. Well, maybe not so much Zayas, but everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this game's so easy, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I've got techies, it's fine. I'm not even playing with my team. He's just going to play with mice for this. He doesn't need his keyboard. Yeah. That's, that's, well, what techies <laughs> players do, I mean. Um, very interesting to see if he can make the hero work. Uh, it has been played a little bit dispatch, especially in our tournament, but the only team that has found success with the techies so far has been Myanmar, but their sample size doesn't tell us much because Myanmar hasn't lost at all, so they can play anything and win. Myanmar are looking pretty strong. They, I mean, they're top three already. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a lock-in, of course, for uh, the grand finals. Um, so yeah, they'll, they'll be facing, all, well, for the, 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 not the grand finals, the upper bracket final. We are getting underway, both teams smoking up. Let's see who will have the early, <laughs> early advantage as uh, Aces Rubik has a very nice effect on the screen right now. Ah, uh, yeah, we had this, uh, we had this uh, last game as well. well not last game, but uh, previously. Previously on IESF. <laughs> Small indie company, by the way. Well, that's uh, it's difficult. Yeah, so whoever manages to win this game will get at least 20,000 USD uh, American dollars assured of the prize pool. Let's see who wants it more. Is it going oh to be... Oh my word, look at this. Look faceless at this Void versus Anaga Signer already facing off. There. I mean, a good use of the illusions here to scout out whatever Kyrgyzstan are trying to do. You know exactly what's happening down here. Uh, look at that observer. Space route. Observer word from the Radiant side placed on the bounty rune already, and I just have to say that Arcana Faceless Void plus the skins looks absolutely amazing. You like a little bit of technical? This is yeah, a good well, uh, let's for not go that far. We've got quite a young audience here, Jeeves. Uh, but Faceless Void looking like Vilgax from Ben 10. Will go on the high ground, full confidence, yeah, has yeah. the time walk. Little mano and mano here, and time walking off that damage. Thanks to left holding the uh, lack of health as it were. Little arcane curse action happening downtown as they try and force them away. And it will be three bounty runes this time for Mongolia. Again, I think this is the second time this series when we see Mongolia win the early trade with uh, three bounties. For sure, it certainly is. And uh, it's Zodiac this time, it was Zayas last time that saved the day, but Zodiac manages to scoop up a boundary room there. But, uh, <laughs> you know. What is this Rubik effect? <laughs> is, that, is that the way it's going to be all game, Jeeves? Yep, yep. yep. We had uh, Sanctity with this effect when he was playing Rubik mid, so. That's uh, going to be very interesting to cast, as uh, we're already looking at uh, Zayas getting a last hit, the wording, the Observer, very early on getting one in the back for his team, but uh, Mark's blood getting grenade. pounded down here. Is he about to be first blood under the tower? One more hit, and it's there. Ace actually snatching it from 11. Well, 11 not going to be too cross about that as he was heading in under the tower. And that's uh, what we want to see, Jeeves. Like I just mentioned, that Primal Beast has to punish the off lane void, faceless, uh, sorry, the safe lane faceless void in order to make the space for the Naga later. Yeah, Naga needs to get at least an item ahead here. I want to be able to see her get the uh, the Yasha and the Orchid out ASAP into uh, the heart of Tarask. And that should allow her to have her illusions not just insta die. Zaya is super low by the way, the Arcane Curse. He's scooting away here with a surge. But uh, I mean, he'll be quite happy looking for the blast off once he hits level two. Do a little bit of damage on the force. Nice oh! dodge. Or he just will. Ma he'll just uh, use the illusions to uh, to dodge it out. Really difficult to avoid that bomb damage. I think it chases you through uh, most splits. SE taking a bit of pain here as well. Look at the mid lane, by the way. Already Earth Spirit pulling away. Oh, as I said, that Ember is bringing one back in his favor, but. Uh, the tech is on Z in Zayat's hands. Will he have the impact? And one of the heroes that we didn't really talk about that much is the Silencer, uh, Jeeves. I want to ask you, uh, you mentioned about the importance that we have a bit of action here. A little here. bit of initiation, the lift back up for Max. And Max is going to be the dog's body, it seems, as 11. Trying to finish him off. Ace getting body blocked, actually, by the Primal Beast, which means they will not be able to secure the kill. As I was saying, the Silencer, yes? Uh, they do have a big combo wombo in the dark seer vacuum wall plus the techies, but there is a global silence and there will be something that can stop that from happening every single time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can press R, but you can only like generally react to one of them, right? So either the wall will go off or the arena will go off or not the arena, the, the, the control of here. Again, Max uh, in a little bit of a pickle here. He throws out the stun, but he's not going to be able to get away this time. And uh, Kami will use the time walk though. And I mean, we talked about this a lot the first time we saw the Faceless Void. He is a very self-sustaining hero in the lane because of this time walk. 
you have to be very sure about committing on him, and you kind of have to kind of rope the dope quite a lot. You know, you have to kind of like, uh, you know, nibble him down slowly. If you go in with too much damage, he's just going to time walk it off completely. Daya secures the Lotus here for uh, for Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Nagasaya, though, she's in pretty good condition right now. You know, max HP, max uh, mana, more or less. It's not going to be overly concerned. Uh, level 3 already on Blizzy. 423 will also get his level okay. 3, but uh, a bit of an early lead in XP department down Arcane bottom lane. Curse is doing some decent work on Zayas here. They're chasing him with the Naga illusions, and they do so much damage with that Riptide, by the way. Zayas super low, but he's playing it directly to the key, and he has the blast off available. So, the courier. killing off C's courier, it's a little bit of value on that. Um, 30 gold each? That seems rather low. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ace up top already with his boots. Oh, I'm busy. Trying to find the right outside here. That Arcane curse, the surge, the net though, perfectly timed. Not going to be able to purge that one off. 45. He's too slow right now. Is 4 to 3 Izzy's toast. Yeah. And Essie was uh, pretty close here, but I don't think he has any points in Glaze. So uh, no intelligence gain just yet. But so far, Mongolia with a pretty, pretty decent start, I'd say. 3 and 0. Oh. Too shabby. You really needed to kill that Darks here because he was pulling away the wave, killing both the small camp and the creep wave. 28 last hits, minute four. Obviously, some of those are neutrals. And for those of you that are not aware, the neutral creeps offer less resources than the lane creeps, but still a very good start for the Darks here despite dying early. So Kami trying to contest this pool away here. Doing a pretty effective job of it. Max is hanging on the side there. The big tomato creep worth a lot of gold. And Ace going to snatch it up with the Fade Bolt. Meanwhile, they're going in downtown as well. This Arcane car is very good indeed, by the way. But Blizzy will uh, force the Naga Siren low in the process. And now 11. Uh, he's having a good lane, though. I mean, he's 19 and 6. It's not ideal CS-wise. But uh, he's, uh, he's out CSing, at least for now, the Void Spirit. Ace with the nine lasses on him uh, of his own on the Rubik. Level three, almost four, stick, lotus, another blood grenade flown in just now. On uh, Power Tread's hand of mind is for Kami. He's uh, settling in for a long game. He realizes that he's gonna have to uh, find his farm maybe elsewhere. <laughs> you you were telling us that December Spirit's gonna dominate. And he hasn't. Last hit wise, uh, Zodiac has done pretty well. Sanctity uh, will get level 6 after this, but Zodiac fortifying his own creeps. Do you want to dive? You don't want to I mean, he's 32 and 5 versus 30 and 0. So, I mean, he is, he is coming ahead. I did certainly expect him to uh, be more dominating, maybe. Yeah, maybe be a little bit a little bit up. You know? But the Airshaker, of course, has uh, the damage from uh, uh, the Enchant Totem, yep. which allows him to actually secure more CS. Lizzy going in. He's feel, feeling the. Uh, Feeling his luck here, it's 4 2 3 trying to scoot away. Max to beat bottom. Okay, they look for the silencer, he's been so much of a problem, but the Arcane Curse is running. Rubik's coming in now as well with a Fade Bolt. SE, oh, he cancelled it at the last second as he realized that SE was going to die before he got there. Um, yeah, Kyrgyzstan, one of these teams that we have noticed throughout this tournament are making the best use out of these old Looking for the roll forward here. Really unfortunate as that level 6 magnetize comes out. 43. Yo, hello. And Daga Siren goes down. Kyrgyzstan finding two quick kills to almost even the score. 3 2. Meanwhile, Kami gets caught. Oh, no, 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 nice no, 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 like this. Nice time walk away from Kami. Good usage there. You saw he had lost about 75% of his health. He gets a little refund there. Oh, very well, uh, chain stunning coming in from the side of uh, Mongolia, though not enough to get down the void, the spaceless void. But we're back in mid, and still only three last hits more for Sanctity. He has got eight, uh, eight denies. Uh, but Zodiac hits level seven again. Yeah, he got the uh, kill stone bomb, and you know, Amber Spirit wasn't really able to capitalize on him being away. Zayas moves across for the wisdom rune here. Max. Uh, didn't make the little sneaky play this time. So Wisdom going to go the way of Ace. And even Stevens. Power treads already in the hands of Zodiac. And he has the courier flying in, probably the full one. Okay, he's going to go for the uh, the urn this time as well. Urn, the spirit vessel kind of build up. Kind of booby Sanctity here. Interestingly enough, though, uh, Sanctity doesn't have many points in Flame Guard, obviously. Uh, Earth Spirits are very physical heroes, so it's not going to do them too much good to invest in that, but it also makes it more difficult to come close to the, the Ember Spirit if you have a uh, few points. Kami finally hitting his level 6 just before the Primal Beast would get his. 
But look, looking at Sanctity, he's snuck up top. Final Beast, I think, just finished his Vanguard. Just gonna make this lane kind of difficult. Start. Nice. Start. Oh. Yeah. Chrono not there just yet. And he'll murder Max and Ember Spirit goes back to the mid lane. But hello there. Picks as up the shield, shield rune. gets denied. Oh. oh, wait, what happened there? There was two shield rune spawned. One, one, Sanctity got one and he uh, denied the bottom one. What? I don't know, it said two shield Yeah, I did read that, yeah. <laughs> What just happened? Uh, Sanctity clearly has a shield rune, and Zodiac is not very happy about that because he was next to the rune waiting for it to spawn with. Nice play coming in from Sanctity. Zodiac will get a bottle refill from the recently fallen friend Max on the Vengeful Spirit. Why were there two runes? <laughs> was there the six minute rune still there, and they were both shield runes? And then just as the eight minute rune came in, so he denied it and he picked up at the eight minutes? That is possible. That is possible. The new recycle started, of course. Yeah. Uh, again, runes are no longer randomized as they used to be. They are coming in uh, one at a time. So if you had a shield rune in the first stack of runes, you Should cannot it be get a shield rune again. Yeah. Unless it, the stack has uh, finished and you started resetting it. Interesting. Very uh, small indie company. <laughs> Lizzy right here farming uh, the yeah. triangle with the iron shell. Which is very happy. Done a, a good job to get these stacks going again. We got another uh, fat engine stack as well. Arcane already Vanguard on the side of Blizzy. A primal beast still slightly behind in the uh, Vanguard department. Ace is getting in a boulder to the face from Zodiac, who's very happy thus far on this Earth. Chrono Sphere up top. All right, cuts Chrono on two, but it's a defensive Chrono here as they fall back. Yeah, so he had enough money for the Vanguard, but he decided to go back for the pipe insight instead, I think. And Zayas is uh, dipping into the lowest pool once again. Very, very happy with that uh, placement of the Observer role towards of Mongolia. Uh, defensively in the radiant jungle and aggressive up top. Okay, he goes in, he goes out, and shakes it all about. Minute 10. And he's got the luck again, Arcane on his side, and he can start walking back up. But look at the Dire Observer, he spotted that. Oh. They see him coming up here. But now look at, oh, I thought there was a TP. It was yeah, just taking take over the, the Watcher. watcher. Yep. Yep. Trying to get some vision dominance. There's three heroes top for both teams now. Oh, how did that Darks here so far? And those stacks did wonders. Oh my him. god, Max getting absolutely annihilated with the damage. There's Zayas trying to come in though. He throws Level six. Down. The lift up from Rubik is there, pulling him back in. The Arcane Rune going to be doing some work now as he starts to juice back up. Zayas with a nice disarm though. It's going to stop the Amber Spirit from being too potent. Now, One of course, more second. Still no points in this uh, Flame Guard, so. If he had Flame Guard there, I think he gets a double kill. Rubik with the stolen proximity mine from the techies. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Until you make mistakes. And uh, yeah, look already, Zayat's planting a stack of three proximity mines just behind the tower. Let's see if Rubik is going to try to do the same or he wants to get I the think, kill. I think the plan is you kick somebody into those mines, right? Let's see how that works out here. The stomping. Oh, I like that. Tries to bait them in, but he's having none of it on 11. He just tries to back away. Nice Charming with the boost forward. He actually throws out a little time dilation. So 11 going to be a little bit of a pickle. There's four heroes chasing in here. A little bit of space created, but for who? Naga Siren, I guess, farming down bottom. Yeah, yeah. Some some space coming in for Naga. He was 1.3k. She was 1.3k behind the Dark Seer, but now has reduced some of that deficit. The Dark Seer can't farm as fast unless he has the stacks, but he already killed those. Has a pretty good uh, advantage over the faces void for now. Yeah. Not great though. Not not huge. The Primal Beast will start falling behind. Obviously, doesn't have the same luxury as the Dark Seer, but can still kill the Creep Waves quite easily. 5-3 scoreline, uh, the gold lead is pretty insignificant and Sanctity will be building into this Maelstrom and so will this Kami, Graceless Void, after the Midas. Yeah, he has his Midas online job on the next item for him. This gives him already gives him a little bit of Chrono Damage. So he's keeping himself fresh. Oh, SE trying to get out of there, but the Spirit Vessel ripping him down. But Zayas! So they go looking for Rubik. Wait, the wall goes down, trying to pull him in on top of this. Nice hit, nice kill. Oh wow, Ace doing a lot. Of he goes down, but he's Light. doing a lot of work here. Sanctity finally with the flame guard. Silence. Spike eh, on top of her old. Wait, oh, actually, a nice another shooting chains holding on to Zodiac here. Brother on brother action as he tries to finish him off. The spirit vessel shrectifying him. This double damage. He pops it off. He keeps him fresh. Naga Siren applying the pressure. We got a TP across from Zayas to try and push them off of the tower. But a seven to five. No change to net worth though. Sanctity. Now got 1200 gold away from the Manta style, and sadly, Zayats died early at the beginning of that team fight to the arcane curse of the silencer. But the Kami 
building the Midas and a thousand gold away from the Maelstrom will be able to attempt matching the farm of the Naga Siren. Yeah, but the, uh, the Tukas Courier down there just now, so he's going to be waiting a little while before that Mithril Hammer in the end. Sack to two. Going for a Maelstrom of his own. Almost done. He's got about a thousand gold to go. And now they go for a quick smoke and a little rotation, perhaps. I have yet to mention the fact that Sanctity did uh, complete the Orb of Corrosion, and that's why we've been seeing uh, him get so involved in this early team fight. So that's what the Orb of Corrosion enables you to do. Super high value early uh, early fighting, uh, especially for Ember's Kami. Just slight of fist allows him to connect on multiple heroes at once. Kami, yep, they're going to smoke right on top of him here. Um, he does have Chrono, but the silence is out pretty quick. Global Silence and the Titan nice Pirate done. really perfectly connected there, guys. 11 played through the Titan right play, though, as they come through. Blizzy going to bring down the Rubik. Now the Seeding Chain's holding him at bay. Zayas looking for an opportunity to jump in. He's not going to find it, though. Vacuum Wall still up for play. But you are 100% okay with this Mongolia. You're you trading out the Faceless so Void. Position at. 1 for uh, position 4 Rubik. And Naga has free farm. Uh, okay, uh, Silence are kicked into the next game. <laughs> SC, uh, maybe still, you know, waiting for his TP out. Unfortunate situation right there, but the Faceless Void, every single moment when you're dead, when you have a Midas, is not good. So the uh, farm on this, uh, on uh, the Darks here, is actually quite exceptional. 8k net worth, he's leading the Naga Siren. Nice dodge. <laughs> Sanctity getting out of the way of Zodiac there. But yeah, so I expect to see Guardian Greaves pipe um, yeah, he's coming out on, he's on the Dark Seer. 200 gold away, I think, from the, the Guardian Greaves for the Dark Seer. This is a huge team fight injection for Team Kyrgyzstan. We can also see both of these teams are playing way more cautious than in the first two series, not throwing everything at the wall. They know how important this one map could be. I mean, they have it all to play for, the upper bracket final awaiting, awaiting both teams. And $20,000. Yeah. Ooh, nice jumping from Zayats. All right, they get the Chrono off. Kami pounding down on top of this uh, Primal piece. The Primal. Yeah, he's toast. First six. Oh, nice pick up from uh, Ace right there, but we'll get silenced. Zodiac popping. Great Mookie. kick from Zodiac. Actually, Ace using the time walk to get away. There's a wall down, and uh, it's not going to be enough, though, in Ace. <laughs> Shadow Amulet at its finest. No Beautifully century. done. Beautifully done. I see that a lot in my games, but they don't normally play afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Syads get caught by a rotation for 423 that now has the Manta style. Uh, the Arcane Curse is running through Sanctity gets it with a slight fist on the back side there. Um, uh, I don't know, I mean that was a lot of space made, but they do bring down Zayas' taggies. Zodiac waiting to maybe jump while Sanctity is on the low ground will not do so just yet. As Blizzy doesn't have the wall. Yep, he already just used Stun. It. Silence. That. Go ball. Toast. Dead. Ah, really nice uh, combination there. And it's actually just playing a little bit too aggressive, a little bit too greedy in that situation. I mean, he has his mails from finished up, so he feels like he can make these moves. Yeah, but Kyrgyzstan denying him. Yeah, overconfidence is always a danger when you are feeling like you're very farmed on your hero. And that's that's a big mistake, especially from a player like Sanctity. Gets punished instantly, Vengeful Spirit coming out of the trees. Kami will keep on farming down bottom. And uh, this Naga Siren, though, has finally caught up to the Dark Seer. She's now neck-to-neck, uh, -neck, top network with Lizzie. Guardian Grease up, Vanguard up, Cloak as well. Uh, Naga only the Manta trades. So she's uh, she's gone instead of going Yasha into Orchid, she's gone Manta Orchid. So she wants the extra survivability, the ability to get the silence off and uh, get rid of uh, you know the, the pain. Uh, punish this faceless void for going uh, a somewhat greedy farm oriented build in the Midas Maelstrom instead of getting a Manta himself. No, I think that's okay. Yeah, I think, I, 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 I think, I, okay I think he's not expecting to fight. If he is fighting, it's on the back of Chrono, and he's not expecting to then be silenced. You know, be silenced, or even if he is silenced, hopefully his team is there. You know, so Makes sense. I think uh, the attack speed is really important from the the Midas, because obviously Maelstrom doesn't give attack speed anymore. Go away course. from Yonner. So I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Zayats. Ah, he catch all the Zayats. Yeah, BKB piercing disable. Uh, he's gonna drop a little sticky bomb here, a little sticky bomb there. Wow, he's uh, fast. He has uh, some nice jukes here for sure. There's a full pipe up on a lemon, so the magic damage not too easy. Now Ace has got a little bomb bomb of himself. Nice 
Uh, still alive somehow. It's so much space, though. Even though they bring him down, it takes him a good 12 seconds to do so. It was uh, very flashy, but doesn't buy that much time. The creep wave just reaches uh, uh, the radiant side. Uh, Sanctity, uh, just chilling. So, yeah, so the flame guard, as you can see, allows him to uh, be toe to toe with Blizzy and not get Shrek too yep. much by the, the shell. Pop stun. Nice. Brings in two, though. 4 2 3. The Naga being chased by his own. Toto. Uh, backside. They had the song, though. Into the TP. Oh, the bomb. This could be good. Oh, nice timing. Really nice timing. Global. He's got the global science. He's got the pattern time. Kami in a big trouble. Yes. What a great setup from Mongolia. Able to execute on the back of that one. Now Net's the net through. going down on the dark seer. They throw another bomb down tank. Rubik has better tankies than tankies right now as they start to follow up with this. Sank he without flame guard doing some serious Back work on Lizzie, but he's out of there. And uh, a little bit of an overextension right now for Mongolia. I want to see them fall back and reset. But uh, overall, a really good uh, set of um, a really good uh, set of fights for them. If I could break down the replay right now, that would be absolutely amazing. The way Mongolia faked a TP out with the Naga Siren that only went back to the T1 mid and then re-engaged with the Primal Beast on top of the Faceless Void, catching him off guard. Absolutely amazing well, communication. Because the song was up, the timing for the bomb plus the plus the primal beast had to be absolutely perfect. And they so as soon as she were. gets out, the primal beast didn't quite connect, but the bomb was there, and then he was able to follow up with the pound. Yeah, and that's why we said this is still a great TP game. Max to fall. He just wanted to deward, man. He just wanted to get that vision back. 26 seconds, no vengeful spirit. This Naga is already one point, well, 1k in front of the Darks here. Almost 2.5 in front of the Faceless Void. Yasha will start being well, it's built right now on the Void, going into either a Manta or a Mjolnir. Yeah, I think he realizes after getting caught by the net and watching his friends get caught by a net that the Manta is going to be pretty instrumental. Same for the Global, actually. SE actually getting spanked here. Back to On three, not too bad. They're going to get some illusions here. Ace goes down. Santi throwing out this light of fist, but he's in a bit of a pickle. Nice stun from Max. Stops this reinitiation in from 11. And who goes looking for Tech? He's, he pops off the pipe, though, and throws in. A little bit of damage, the disarm is there. He is clouded up here, trying to fall back nice through chase. this wall. And it allows them to retreat to safety without losing anything. And they've got two kills off the back Off of screen, the Naga Primal Beast killed the Faceless Void. Somehow. So you got two supports, but you lost your main carry in this attempt. Uh, Naga Primal Beast again chaining the spells and the Orchid, like I said, proving to be fatal for this uh, Manta-less Faceless Void. So now that the Orchid is online, the Manta is so close to being finished. And this is like one thing. He needs something to dodge the net, and he needs something to dodge the silence. Spelling, One yeah. or the other. We got uh, Rubik with the Glimmer Cape finished up. Uh, regeneration room for Amber Spirit. We can put BKB, Sanjin Yasha, Sanjin Kairi. One of the things that we wanted, to, well, we needed to see from Team Mongolia was obviously shutting down the Kami Faceless Void, and they have done nothing but that for 21 million minutes. Blizzy getting the wisdom room for his team, the supports needed. Zodiac getting their way out of there. <laughs> they were so close there, <laughs> right next to each other. And Zodiac getting out as the... Vacuum the, the, on the cliff! Oh, two on the cliff, but the song on top. Can they get themselves the TP to safety? Ace, you need to start TPing, my friend, or you're going to be stuck there. Okay, you're, you're stuck there. His TP was on cooldown, there was nothing he could do. A kill, and you baited out the Naga song. Your Faceless Void has ultimate. You should probably go right now. I don't think you can afford wasting these 30 seconds uh, or 70 until the song is back up. I mean, very, very good. You have the chrono online, so... Yeah. yeah. And the wall. The wall was not used. That was only a vacuum play coming in from the darks here. Stunning. I mean, it's always awkward to fight around these high cliff points when there's darks here in the game. It's also super bad when you're with uh, Rubik as well. Rubik yep. can lift you up and kind of dump you down there as well, so... Now we're seeing what I was afraid of in game one from Zodiac. A core Earth Spirit can only have such a high impact versus certain heroes. That's why I don't really believe in him in this current patch as a core. Has a Vessel, still trying to beat that yeah, DKP. So he went for the Vessel kind of build as opposed to the Blade Mill build. Now Vessel yeah. build you normally see on position four. Exactly. Um, but... Uh, I think the heroes here are a little bit annoying. You can't really go Blade Mill versus this, these heroes. So I think it's the correct itemization choice. And he has his BKB now, so the timing's not too bad for that. 
Uh, he's not that far behind the Ember Spirit in regards to net worth, but maybe a little bit behind in regards to impact. Yeah, I mean, we do see him creating these beautiful stuns and rolling boulders and silences on top of vacuums, but that's what an Earth Spirit position 4 can also do. Yeah. So, uh, Smoke top bottom. We've got the BKB Primal Beast going for Heart next, and that's going to make him even more tanky. Was he? He's going to surge himself to safety here. Uh, Naga Siren, top of the bus right now, 14k net worth, finally completely surpassing Glissian net worth. No longer any kind of contention there. And the next real contender will, of course, be Kami as he starts to farm up. He has Manta. the Manta style finished up now. But there's a BKB on the Ember Spirit, and yes, Chrono is, doesn't care about BKBs, but the vacuum and the silences will be negated by this 9 second BKB on Sanctity. So they have the illusion here of the Naga Siren to cut the wave on to scout out a little bit of... Uh, yeah, a little bit of what's happening behind the T2 in mid lane. All right, the tower fortification for, for style. This is a tier three fortification used. Kami downtown here, Manta style delivered. Next fight is going to be proving absolutely crucial. Whoever takes that can also convert it into a Roshan. Uh, Manta and now a Mjolnir will start being built by Kami. Needed to kind of deal even better with those Manta Illusion, but a double damage bottled up by Sanctity. This is, this is pretty strong, actually. Like, neither team has a... Uh, neither, <laughs> neither team has a clear advantage. Neither, yeah. No, neither team has the, a really easy way of doing Roche outside of the Vengeful Spirit Aura and the uh, uh, you know, Wave of Terror. So if they can Sanctity. deal with that first, this is pretty good. The so silence yeah. into the net. Now Swap. the fade bolt on top. Swapping might to safety with the slight of Fisco to connect on three. Eleven looking for a way into this fight. That bomb on the high ground causing a few issues. Ember's Burrito tries to come down on top of Zodiac here. He pops off the BKB, but it's not going to be enough as the Global Silence comes out. Still alive. We'll actually get him out of trouble though with the Guardian Greaves healing him up. Chrono still in play. Nice play from Blizzy there. Oh, Zayas okay. get caught. He finds Zayas. Yeah, he's got a bomb in there, but it's not going to be enough. And now Kami trying to TV to safety. Sanctity, he's in here, he's having a little look around. Now there is a Tormentor to steal here, but the Vak wall is still available, so it could be incredibly dangerous. They are going to attempt it. Uh, it will go down very fast, and the damage will be split between the Illusions and all these three tanky cores. Ace, oh, uh, no, uh, uh, Illusion Stone uh, absorbs the damage anyway. Oh, didn't, don't they? Oh, very no, no, interesting. No, 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 no. Uh, but the uh, Ag Shark on the Rubik will be able to have a slightly longer range on Telekinesis and use it on his own teammates. Yeah, he now has uh, an effective save, which they can, uh, which can use to get people out of Chrono. That was going to prove even harder now for Kyrgyzstan to land the teamfight spells and actually have impact on that, unless the Rubik gets caught in that. Seth. Heart of Tarask finished on the Naga Siren. Oh, the Naga has her heart as well. So uh, this uh, Team Mongolia is going to have a lot of heart by the end of the game. <laughs> I mean, they have a lot of heart now, but uh, yeah. So Naga Siren, we're getting a bit more like a powerhouse. Faceless Void, the Mjolnir's coming online. He's working his way towards the Agadon Scepter. No sign of a BKB right now, though. He feels like he's not going to need it. The only disadvantage you have as a Naga Siren is uh, your levels are way lower, but they're initiating with jumping in. Okay, she's Silence. got the mantle to get herself out of that trouble. And then the split as well. The Chrono the back side. Rubik with the save, though. It was a swap. The stolen, stolen swap. swap. Clutch. He goes looking for more, but you don't want to You don't want to go too far forward. Kami, of course, can move much faster than the rest of his team, so he doesn't get too out of, out of position. Vacuum. Did okay. you find C? Okay. AC and a courier. This might enable them to Roche. Global is out. Ruby yeah. out for 24. Perfect time to go into Roche on. It's up top here. Couldn't go any better. But they do have the Song of the Siren, and there's no Chronosphere. Yeah. A that will play, but the Naga Illusion make, will scout this out. Yeah. Very, very risky. You can take it down quite quick because of the Wave of Terror from the Vengeful Spirit, but they don't want to risk it. They don't have Chrono. You I mean, just got two kills. It's fine. Just disengage. Yeah. The Sight of Fist, uh, Searing Chains combo, right. the Song of the Siren. Yeah, Primal Beast Ultimate. 
Polarized. All right, here we go. Kami, a little far forward here. Can you get back. Block from his Gobo's back. Spirit? Yes, we can. And he comes back in with that time walk usage that we talked about. Very nice indeed. Sanctity looking through Dash. that back line for Zayas. Can he find him? They get a hold of Max here. Max going to go to Parent Town right now, but the wall coming out on three. Rubik getting smashed in the process. The Song of the Siren comes out as they try Bye to back. disengage. But Zodiac with his VKB immune to that song for now. Buyback, yep, from the Ventral Spirit. He's going to come TPing back in here. They fall back from this wall. Yo, here goes the Primal Beast, he goes looking for Zodiac, but Team Kyrgyzstan falling back pretty effectively here. Sanctity's still chasing though, he throws out a slight fist, but I think that's going to be it for now. 4-2-3 up top though, he's being chased by his own illusion. Yo, Sanctity going back in, the old fake back, they go on Global. Kami, the Global Silence is out, they get a hold of him, they can start to him down. The Vak is going to save his arm for a few seconds, though here goes Tech, he's there, he's going to jump in. Out. One bomb, thank you mom, as 11 goes down. It's a pretty decent pickup. They do have a buyback available. SE on the side of things Zodiac. here. Zodiac's a little bit low. He's got the Arcane Curse running him. He rolls out of there. The net comes out for 4 2 3 on top of this tanky monster Blizzy, though. He can't do literally anything to him. Sanctity trying to chase up, trying to follow up on this, but they won't be able to find anything else. Now, jumping back in. Dangerous. Silence. Zodiac goes looking. BKB cool down 60 seconds. They no more remnants. Find him here. Sanctity. No, oh, we had one laid back. Very nice. That was a two-for-one trade, two supports buying back, and every single piece of utility being used multiple times. Both teams pressing all of their buttons. Very, Very good. Spaka. So uh, 10 seconds for uh, the Primal Beast to be here as well. Still got the ult available, but no saw. No uh, there either. is a Chrono. Yeah, that fight was so long. We started with the Chronosphere, and by the end of it, the Chronosphere is off cooldown. You could try to get into the Roche Pit right now, and that's what we're seeing. Mongolia does not want to contest. Don't have Global, don't have Song, uh, and we're just going to give away the Aegis for free. I mean, it was hardly for free. <laughs> well, true. <laughs> they, paid, they paid a hefty heck of fee. Uh, the fight recap probably doesn't show us uh, the gold swing just yet as of right now, as Mongolia seems to be going up from 2k lead to 4, but this Aegis is going to turn it around, and Kami is going to be feeling a safety net now with his Aegis. Hitting level 18, uh, 3 points in Chronosphere, but starting to purchase the Axe parts, and uh, this Faceless Void is slowly coming to the piece that we come to know and love. Yeah, so I mean, he has the Mjolnir online, and that's the aim. He needs to deal with the Naga Siren when it comes to close combat. He's working his way through the Aghanim Scepter now, and then he's going to look for the Satanic afterwards, which will give him that next purge that he needs. Obviously, he's got the first one with the Manta, then the Satanic for the second one. And the Titan Sliver as well for the Faceless Void, going to help him a bit with the base damage and some of the magic status resist. Ogre Seal Totem for the Primal Beast, and Naga Ooh. completing. Bloodthorn wow. finished up for the Naga Siren. She also has uh, the uh, Titan Sliver. Very, very good. SE out of position. <gasps> nice dodge. But Max Potsons, four staff okay. on the ground. He's, uh, he's going to swap. swap back in. All right, puts out the Arcane Curse. There's no support coming here, though. So he's literally just trying to make space. Juking through the trees. Now they bring in Blizzy and Zayas to make sure they find this kill. But he does have a buyback available. Now, that's all you have to do on a position five silencer is have buyback. You can just buy back and press R from anywhere. Sadly, his observer word will get deworded uh, immediately. Uh, you, if you wonder why the silencer was out of position there, he was trying to get some vision across the dire side, uh, former known uh, part as Triangle. But uh, this faceless void is only half a level away from level 20. It's, it's, he's getting bigger and bigger, and I only don't know. 400 gold from Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, I don't know how this uh, Naga Siren is going to keep on matching up versus this void as we go into the later portions of this map. We're going to get the Aghanim Scepter on Amber Spirit eventually as well. Quite he's halfway away. there. He's maybe got like uh, 2,500 gold or something to go. But it's done. Faceless Void has purchased the complete Aghanim uh, Scepter. So Ace's next item, interestingly enough, he gets himself the plate mail just to be a little bit more tanky versus his minus armor, but he's going to get the Lotus Orb. And the Naga Siren is uh, fast queuing a Silver Edge. What do you think about that choice? Uh, so it's pretty good versus the Bash of the Faces War. But uh, also maybe to try and get himself out of trouble. And obviously you don't expect a Naga Siren Shadow Blade 40 minutes in the game, so you might get caught by surprise by her. And he already has the Bloodthorn, so yeah. he's going to be he's going to be critting. That's okay. Can definitely burst out one of these heroes of the team. They're smoked stuff. up. They're hunting right now, and Primal Beast is going to be the one that that smoke breaks on. 
That's a Palmy on the low ground, though. It's going to give them the information. He's Chrono. going to get jumped in on the Chrono and unleashing the Fury. Unleashing the Fury. Dash. Very Run. slowly. BKB. BKB. And away he goes. If he can get out of this, it's a real nightmare scenario. You can't improve until you make Damn. it. Huge victory right there for the Primal Beast. And yeah, maybe not the target you wanted if you're a Kami. That means the next two minutes, which is the remaining time of your Aegis, you won't have a Chronosphere. So that's going to feel very good for Mongolia. 100%. Yeah. He does have the Arc Scepter online. And, uh, Building that shard. We the, is that about. still the AoE bash? I think so. Yeah, pretty sick. Pretty sick. Bro, look at the hero damage on this Amber Spirit right now. Double anyone else on the map. He and did so the... much in that long team fight up top because he had an arcane rune and kept on spamming slightly facing and searing chains every single two Okay, they're coming across though. Yeah, there's here. no chrono. They want to fight. There's a Naga Siren here, almost managing to find Zayas and Max. Zodiac's have a quick look there. at Zodiac in mid lane, make sure he's not there. It's fair enough, Sam's so going deep now. The silence coming through from the Orchid, uh, slash Club Thorn. The wall's out though, Blizzy, nice back, back, back in, bringing him in. But here's Zodiac arriving on the seat. That's Rask, uh, Levin's going to come in, he's going to try and get a grab a hold of this lad here on Zodiac, smashing him down. But here comes Chrono Boy, does a little bash, just comes flying in. The Spirit Vessel is frozen Havoc. Here's a song, but Zodiac with the BKB what? cancels the TP. What? Gives him a little tippening. Trying to back up. Sankity coming back to the other side. He actually dodges it off one more time. Tries to get away from this, but they are sticking to him like glue, and he is toast. And that's a kill that they really shouldn't have been able to get with no chrono. Another bash coming in from the Axe Scepter. Global, too late. It's silenced. Can Sankity get away? He's going for the slight of this. He's trying to get aggressive on him. Wow. Very nice. Nice, in, nice sight. The Spirit Vessel taking him down slowly but surely. And Mongolia. In a really rough situation right now, Kyrgyzstan are feeling it. 20 seconds for Chronosphere. Aegis with 20 seconds still on it. Can they take a tier 3 off the back of this? The Guardian Greaves to refresh them and allow them to move back in here. Let's have a quick look back in what yes. went so wrong. 4 2 3 tried to initiate in here, but it's the Zodiac roll from up top here that changes everything as he comes through, hits off a Magnetize on 2, and starts to do some damage. Oh, I didn't even do the Magnetize. This attempt to focus down Zodiac was not quite successful. And here, I think 4 2 3, maybe a bit quick on your fingers. You can see Zodiac pops the BKB. Why do you go for the TP? Giving your life away, basically. There are tips coming all around. 4 2 3 still being vesseled up. Kami with the axe bashes, gonna take out this Naga Siren. And we saw Sanctity did so much work. 7k damage in that team fight. Uh, running back and forth, left and right, almost escaping, but it's too much, too overwhelming. Uh, mobility on the side of Kyrgyzstan for him to escape, but that was a very nice left-right. <laughs> it was a really good juke. It was a really good juke for the Spirit Vessel Chamber. And Zayas feeling himself. He is absolutely in it now. In it to win it, my friends. In absolutely. it to win it. Absolutely. That's what they told us in the post-game interview yesterday, and they're showing up right now in this map three. Finally, Kyrgyzstan taking the goal lead for the first time in the last 27 minutes. Gem purchased by SC. Mongolia knows they're starting to fall behind, and they need to gear up the map vision. Yep. December Spirit, if you thought he was elusive last fight, he's 200 gold away from finishing his axe. And when he gets that Arc Scepter online, he's going to have a lot more presence. He's going to be able to move a lot faster. And after that, he's going for the Refresher. So potentially, we could see 16 Remnants. Wow. Meanwhile, Kami has overtaken the Naga Siren as the top spot net worth on the map. And this is the first time the Faceless Void is uh, at the top of the charts this match. I mean, it's it's pretty early for him to be hitting that point, actually, to be hitting that stride. It's only 36 minutes into the game, and he's already in ultra late game territory. The Agnum Scepter's online for the Amber Spirit. Refresher, as I say, next in uh, next in line. Dias is a gem of his own, a Lotus Orb of his own, four staff as well. What is the next item we're looking at for the Naga Siren here? Because I think she should be probably consider, or someone on the Mongolian side should be considering a hex. Uh, so she already has the Bloodborne. I mean, she could go for Hex, but uh, uh, maybe just uh, Shiva's Guard or something. But maybe Shiva's comes out on the Primal Beast or, or maybe an AC. Oh, swap. Oh, AC oh, okay. Zodiac going in here. Dust. Oh, the Lord is going back, and he gets a double stun going back the other way. But a little <laughs> kick this way, and that way, oh, and all oh. time walk away. But he's making Not space, enough. but he will just go down. Too many heroes on top of him, and not enough to get out of the danger zone. 
It's going to make a little space for Amber Spirit to push in this tier 2 down bomb, but uh, we might actually take it. And speaking of a Shiva's guard, it is completed on the Earth Spirit of the side of Kyrgyzstan. Sanctity, untouchable down bottom, will convert this tier 2 tower. No more 45s, will like, get the last hit with the help of the Naga Siren so Illusion. The X will come out on Amber Spirit. Yeah, he's been having it for a few minutes, already 2k towards his either Hex, like I suggested, or Refresher Oracle. So we got the uh, ninja gear for the Naga side, a little bit more uh, hiding, you know. Um, two spell prisms actually, one for Earth Spirit and one for Faces Void. Uh, I mean, I, how do you feel about the, the cooldown reduction? I, I feel like spell prism is probably the best in slot for the majority of heroes. Yeah, I have to agree. I love spell prism and uh, getting into that tier four neutral items is always a sweet, sweet spot, no matter the position you're at. You support can't core. until you make mistakes. Sanctity, though, uh, still picking up the, some of the net worth left behind from the Naga Siren. Sanctity has been playing a flawless face Ember Spirit game, and I, I have enjoyed this every single second of it. Yeah, I think, like, uh, like I said, Naga Sirens are a really difficult core to play in this current meta. Damage. And uh, we're definitely seeing that here, whereas uh, Faces Void pretty much buffed non stop as, Sanctity. We, uh, as we approach uh, TI here. Looking for uh, maybe he's gonna show. Control. Oh no, he actually shows before he sees Sanctity though, so Sanctity able to get a little slight of fitness action. I don't think you want to commit Chrono! to this, Chrono is gonna make sure that you go down That's pretty it. quick. Silence coming in and you're dead. Dead. roll in and he's toast from Zodiac. Sanctity, maybe a bit overconfident. I was just praising him, cursing him essentially in the process. 80 seconds has a buyback, but this is going to be a Roche and cheese from the Aegis. <laughs> Uh, Regis and she's from the Roche for Team Kyrgyzstan. I don't think you want to buy back and contest this. Split push the lanes. We see them draw the line. Zayat telling the team, okay, we got to TP back and deal with the creep waves, and then we can go finish with the Sages. Chronosphere will be off of cooldown at that point. Look at this Look at this fleet of couriers coming into the Roche pit. <laughs> Four of them, uh, one after the other. Naga Siren putting a little bit of pressure onto the Tier 3 Towers mid and bomb. But not able to get much of a consolation prize even from this uh, Roche potential. Meanwhile, we haven't seen Zayat in a while, but he has somehow managed to sneak up to the level 18 and a Lotus Orb on top of his Glimmer Cape and Four Staff. Yeah, he's had the Lotus Orb for a while, uh, but now he has this, um, the, the extra invis, right, from the neutral item. A scented cap, the fourth and fifth neutral items of Tier 4 respectively being found by the Dire side. Okay. A, little, uh, a little lull in the combat here. Heart of Tarask. <laughs> Completed just on Zodiac we're waiting again. For, uh, wait, oh, we got Trickster's Cloak on Rubik as well as Techie. So we're just waiting for Chrono to come offline. And uh, 30 seconds or so. But he's, he's willing to make a little bit of pressure here. Oh my god, this Dark Seer's stock, by the way. He's got the pipe, he's got the Crimson Guard, he's got the Lotus Orb, he's got the Guardian Grease. He's made a really good use of that big fat farm that he's had this whole game. Overcome here. Slight Naga. fist to try and push him off the tower. Naga Siren, like I said. Total up in five seconds. No TP and no courier for the Naga. 33 seconds until the courier is dead. Thank you very much, Observer, for pointing that out. But she is building into that Hex. She knows she needs more of a lockdown for any of the five heroes on the Kyrgyzstan side. It's pretty wild, actually, how many buttons that guy's got to click right now. I'm looking at this uh, Faceless Void from Kami, and no matter what happens over the next three and a half minutes, he is either going to use the Chrono and try to end the game, or if he does die, he will complete the level 25, which is a huge power-up for the Faceless Void. What is this, a Skadi he's building? He has like one uh, item left to build? It looks like that's the case. He will have the Skadi for the ages when that's done. Yeah, purchase it completely right now. I mean, you can swap out the boots, but then you'll be a very slow faceless void. Yeah, yeah, or uh, you just find 1,600 gold from killing a couple of guys and eat your axe. 11 with a shard, with an axe, but starts to feel less and less as a core and more and more of a support. I think we really need an, an assault cuirass on this hero, but currently, trying to build a heart to Tarask. Well, he was going for heart for a long time, but he swerved it and went for alternative light, and so he's gone back for it now to just try and get that tank up. We'll complete the refresher here for Sanctity. Can purchase it if he doesn't want to have any buyback. I think in this situation, he needs the buyback. I, I Things agree. are very threatening right now. We'll pressure and force some TPs yeah, back. Yeah, I like this, I like this, yeah. Obviously, there's a huge wave of the Dire coming down that, uh, all the, the off lane of the Radiant Zone. 
Getting any kind of a any kind of a TP back right now would be super good as they go up to the tier three. They've got a full wave of Naga illusions though pumping through this tier three tower. The courier is here. Naga has a TP now. She can TP back when she wants, but they are still pushing bottom okay. and mid. Fortification on fortification action. I imagine one coming out. Yep, from the radiant immediately. sanctity has got a little slight fist chunking down Kami. And the longer it takes, whoa, he's satanic though. Naga has not defeated the void, jumping Ooh. in and out. Bash just poking and prodding and will convert the tier 3 tower. Wow, Naga finds the tier 3 tower first. Can they stop the TPs? Oh, wow. Really well. I mean, they don't really have that option. They may be the seating chains, but they're going looking now. It's only yeah. illusions, though. And that is a huge... Oh, Zodiac is looking though, and coming in through the mid lane, it's uh, it's Kami looking for a potential chrono here. Just tossing the rock away. And obviously, we talked about this at the beginning of the match. The, the lineup that Turkistan presents here does not have near the same split push potential as the Mongolian one. And Naga Siren versus Faceless Void, we just saw it firsthand who can take down the passive tower, and the Radiant one hasn't even fallen. Yeah, it's always a danger when you can commit multiple moves to a push, you know? They bought so much time though. One more minute on the ages. Naga's, Naga's back. Though. Level 25 on the faceless void. That's what I was she expecting. Is, she's looking for uh, she's looking for these racks right now as they go pushing down mid lane. Naga Siren getting ready to get a little push on of her own. An ace time walking uh, in synchronicity with Kami What's as the, the counter smoke comes out from Mongolia. What is the button? Kami goes deep. He tries for the time dilation. Doesn't land on anyone. It's a little bit of a risky play. Naga Siren munching down a ranged racks right now. What is the status on the buybacks? They are going to be crucial in this upcoming team fight. Uh, so buyback on Darkseer, buyback on Primal Beast, buyback on Zayas, Rubik, uh, Silencer. Jumping in, back again. I mean, when he jumps in like this, if they hit the global Sounds Sanctity's in the back line. Okay, he's going to give a little go here. He's making it happen. 11, he's got a hold of Max once again. He's making the space of Sanctity, going in with the BKB, the slight of fist. Actually, no bounce there because Zodiac's the BKB's up. Here's uh, 43 as well. Now the Lotus comes out trying to protect them. They're going to try and deal with Zayas. He's already scooting up to the high ground here. They drop down with the wall. Max is out. He's trying to make a play here. He tries to get back on top of Blizzy. Zodiac following up. 43 he sees the Naga, but he's not sure if it's a real one or not. So he doesn't that's nice. Goes on Sanctity instead. Trying to keep him down here. Kami ready. He's Song? got no chrono though. Wall again. That was a oh refresher. Oh my word. They're getting set up. Vacuum. Yep. Pulling them back in. They think they can fight this. Ace thinks he's got this. He's glimmer caped up, trying to move away. The little pine time is Blizzy trying to scoot away. Can Ace find him on the outside? They cannot. No uh, vision. This, uh, this uh, magnetizes skills. So many problems for Mongolia right now. Has to go in hardcore on 11, but 11 has buyback. So even if he falls here, it's no big deal. And Ace still pulling Zodiac away from the fight. Has completed a Kaya 45 minutes in on, in on Zodiac. They'll go for the Sanjin Yasha. But what happened there? Zodiac had to TP out. Naga Siren is literally pushing tier three, uh, uh, sorry, pushing melee racks right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zodiac had to TP to deal with the illusions, and that's why he wasn't there at the beginning of the fight. Oh, the for him. The Silver Edge through. is paying off in massive amounts. Ace. They go looking for Ace, but it's Glimmer Cape keeping him kind of fresh right now. Zodiac thinks he sees him. A little oh, lift oh, up, a little juke back down the rib. It's the highest. What is he actually walked right through him with the Glimmer Cape. Meanwhile, Naga. Naga Siren chasing down Max. Max is up on the high ground. A little VAT combo there. They finally get Ace. They uh, do get him, but it costs them so much time. Now 4 2 3 being chased through the woods by Kami. Kami trying to lock him down. Somehow able to. Oh my god, look at these bounty rooms. Three seconds. Able, no, the hex. Turn it around. As he's ready, by the way. No silence available. They'll just bash straight through him for a shortcut. Four bashes in a row. Are you serious? Jam on the ground. Perfectly balanced hero. Three bounties for pickup in the Dying Jungle. Sanctity, he's coming across here to try and apply the pressure one more time. It's coming with the TP back. And we get a pause. FPS drop for the side of Mongolia. We got a loss. Hopefully not. I hope that's not a spoiler. I hope it's just a you know FPS loss. Uh, but yeah, we are taking the time. And that that mid team fight was good for Mongolia. Uh, two su both supports, uh, position fives died on either side and had to buy back. But now. After this chase around the dire jungle, Kyrgyzstan looks in a very, very good position. I mean, they felt like they could make a move with a song, right? They, the wall was out, they dropped the song, and then it kind of felt like they wanted to reinitiate on it. But the team at that point, I think, was too fractured and split apart. Yep. And they weren't really able to kind of secure anything off the back of it. So uh, in this particular situation, it probably benefits Mongolia even having this Tactical pause. Yeah, I definitely uh, believe so. Yeah. Just kind of reset their humors and uh, you know get everything under control. This quick look at the crowd there. We have we Team Myanmar. Pretty, pretty packed out there tonight, guys.
Team Myanmar in the audience, you know, uh, looking at their potential next opponents right here. Uh, the Romanian crown being very focused on this series. Yeah, we're now getting uh, back a little bit of a replay. No, we're so live. We are live. The chronosphere. There you come back in after the pause. Sank Sank to pops off BKB Can off. He, he, he can't. So Chrono again being kind of debated out here. And Sanctity like a missile. He's, <laughs> he's out of there with that acceptor. Yeah, we sort of don't have any sound. The Jeeves, if you want to add the sound effects to the game. Oh, sorry. That was your chance that to shine. Just was. a bit too late. All right, all right. A little pew pew, a little choo choo. Okay, if, if Faceless Void stepping would be a noise, what would the noise be? Sorry, what? If Faceless Void stepping would be a noise, what would the noise be? I just like a... Oh, I think it would be more like a... I think he's got claws on his feet. I don't know. He Let's have a little like a replay here. He comes in, he drops the chrono on top, but the Ember Spirit, he's just a little bit too tanky. Yo, that's pretty awkward, right? If your Faceless Void with six items can't kill the Ember Spirit. This is a very big Ember Spirit, but look at the network. 36k for the Void, 34 for the Naga Siren. Uh, this Primal Beast, again, slightly behind, but uh, he does have a refresher on the Ember Spirit, and hopefully, oh, I think he might even overlook uh, he might start to overlook the Hex in order to go for the Mjolnir, which it's is... It's a Gleipnir, actually. Oh, Gleipnir, yeah. So, uh, a little bit more control. It's actually super good versus the Darks here, but I he can obviously you know, surge away. And uh, full Scotty finished up for face as well. But I, uh, I saw a cheeky demon edge there. Are we looking at rape here, time? Minute 47. Probably one of the 19. longest games we've had on the main stage. It's a well. real testament to how close these drafts are and how close the squads are and skills that there's only a 2k net worth difference between the two teams right now. And they are fishing. They are looking right now. Almost Primal Beast on is down. in that general area, but he falls back to the high ground. And they have to go back to deal with the split push. Look, the T1, T2 tower. Zayat has to be there and take it. And the hex has been completed on top of the heart of Tarask. And another 5.5k in the back for the Naga. The buybacks are definitely there for the carry of Mongolia. Yeah, they got buybacks uh, on three of their heroes right now. Nothing for uh, poor old uh, Primal Beast, but uh, other than that, they're looking pretty sweet on the Silencer, Naga, and Ember Spirit. Cool. Only buyback available on Dire right now is the Dark Seed. We need to get those buybacks going. Uh, Chronosphere is back off cooldown coming. We'll pop a clarity to get his mana back up. Uh, another gem purchased by ST. I think this is the third one in this map. 48 huh. minutes in, and I think we could be looking at yet Another Roshan being attempted and contested. Well, he's top at the moment, but it's a minute and a half before the switch. So team will have to be pretty focused to go for it right now. I think if you're the faceless... Sanctity, way, though, he's dangling. A nice TP across from Max. This could be really risky right now for Mongolia. I think Sanctity is too fast on his fingers. I right mean, there. there's four heroes coming in behind him. He's going to take this tier two down. Oh, he's not! Oh, Luli gets the BKB off. He is more than quick enough as he goes scooting out of there. But maybe this buys space for the uh, for the Roche potential. There is uh, another Chronosphere available. Kami will start to go towards the pit. No BKB on Ember Spirit for a minute. You want to get this Roche right now. They've got to do this up. in 50 seconds or less. Yeah. It should be no problem at all with Wave of Terror. They might have damage that they do have. Not quite decided what he wants to get out. Uh, moving out the items in and out to get more mana from the Guardian Beast. And uh, it will be a pickoff. No contest coming in from the Radiant. Backtrack to It's going to cost them a ranged rack, though, perhaps. A melee rack. The, ra the range oh, one. Yeah, yeah. The range, the range one is already gone. Yeah. No, it's fine. Sank, he's going to have to bail. Refresher shard coming on the way of Faceless Void. And that's such a strong double chrono. If he does lose the first life, he can swap in the Refresher for the Aegis. And we'll have it once again. This Faceless Void is ready to go up as he had just hit. 40,000 net worth at minute 50. It's an easy 40k net worth, no worries, no yeah. worries. Casual 50 40K. minutes into this game, game three, 50 minutes long, neither team wants to give up on this, neither team wants to go to the lower bracket right now. The thing about this though, the face is wide, no BKB, so he is still kind of vulnerable to these hexes, to this Bloodborne. He obviously has the uh, Manta and Satanic that he can deal with that to some extent. And SNY completed on Zodiac will add a bit of a status resistance to this Earth Spirit, but 
We could be in for a long one, because I don't think Mongolia wants to have a part of any of this uh, Faceless Void Ages. Oh, Sanctity with a little stealth here. Hello he's, there. He's so greedy. He's trying to push this hero to the absolute limit. Zayat with a nice attempt to catch. Oh, Zodiac going yeah, looking here. He's going fishing. Stun. Oh, that was so, so close from Zodiac. But uh, he is... He's teasing everybody across the map, yeah, and the Naga Siren does the same with the illusions. And every time he gets out, he gives him a little jive, you know, a little, a little psychological warfare, you know, trying to keep the mental game strong. I think he ran out of tips and he started using the Void Lines from Gabe Newell more often than before. I mean, what's more powerful, a tip or Gabe himself? Oh, that, that is a great Answer question. carefully, TI approaches, my friend. <laughs> Uh, Faceless Void, uh, checking some, some vision. Blizzy almost spotting that Rubik. That Rubik has had the time lock stolen for the time lock stolen for maybe the past 25 minutes. I mean, it's, it's a really good ability to get a hold of. Uh, He's got the Arc Scepter. That is a there, hex or? on the Dark Seer as well. I just wanted to point that out. All right, Boots of Travel on Faceless Void. He's got the Monkey yeah, King Bar now as well, just in case the Butterfly hex. was coming out. There's that Hex reveal. Chrono on top as well. They're beat down. They're doing the beat down. Yes. And he's no! gone. No! Unbelievable escape. BKB being popped. They're not chasing. He's very close to them, but... That was amazing. Chrono consumed another three minutes. We will have a Chrono for the last 40 seconds. Eats a Moonshard on the Faceless Void. You know, maybe with a little bit more attack speed, you'll have enough damage next time. Let's just find out. Yash, are you here for Mongolia to win the map three? Or do you back Kyrgyzstan in this one? Oh, wow. Kyrgyzstan, oh, okay. a, a bit of a favorite here, uh, Jeeves. I think it's Zayas' hat. Yeah, I think it's Zayas' hat always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're Started going, looking, they're going looking with the smoke. They've got the tempo, they've got the Aegis, they've got the cheese. And they don't have the BKB and on the Ember Spirit. Rubik right now on the end. Oh. Silencer as well. They're Rubik going to be the one that's getting spotted out though as he shows Does he the have wave. the buyback? Uh, Roll in. Time lock gets silenced. Buyback, yeah. Spirit Vessel, time locks away. Got his little sword for a little purge action. They're right on top of him. No, a little stun back the other way. He ends up stunning two heroes, but they do bring him down. 65 seconds. That is very low Get level. Get a hold Rubik. of the Radiant Gem of True Sight. And that is the second gem they lost in the span of eight minutes. So they'll have cooldown. Chronosphere again. Ember, Ember, is that this time? Yes, that's what he needed. The Moon Shard makes it possible. 2k gold lead for Kyrgyzstan, and one of these buybacks will get forced. No chrono, but ages for another minute and a half. And if you are Sanctity right now, yeah, you'll be gone by the refresher up. shard, huh? No cooldown on the uh, Faceless Void and the Darks here, but he will get it in a couple of creeps. And they're going to start hitting the towers. Both teams have the fortified Back door protection. Going to make things awkward. But the Naga is in base. She can't split push from base. All right, they roll in with Zodiac up to the high ground here, trying to try and bring this tower down while they've got bench. the advantage. They you don't want to, want to buy back right now on the Emperor Spirit. Global Silence comes out and they bench go nice. on that back line. They get the Lotus Orb off, though it keeps Venge alive for now. Back the wall. back wall on two, it's beautiful. Naga starting getting caught out just a little bit here. They come in with even more damage. Naga starting getting absolutely slapped down. The buyback comes through. Emperor Spirit coming flying through with all of these uh, remnants right now, but they are in on top of Eleven now. They're surrounding him and bringing him down, and Mongolia are running out of options. They are full here comes HP. Kami straight on in to take down their ranged racks. Full HP right there for Kyrgyzstan as we take a quick look at the crowd. Let's go, Kyrgyzstan. Try to convert this melee rack. Sanctity. No more buyback. Three of the cores had to buy back for this. If they die, that is game. Well, Sanctity is going to give a little poke here. Tries to stick on top. But the Aegis of the Immortal keeping Kami more than happy right now as he goes looking for bottom lane of racks now. No They're all up. They, I mean, the Song of the Siren is there. He has no BKB. They definitely can go in. But the Ten same seconds for the Aegis. Line. They got to deal with Max first. They're going to take down the tower. Eight seconds. They got to wait. He, no, he doesn't want to risk it. He's like, that's enough. Fake back. Chrono back in 20. Okay. Okay. No more refresher. It was used in that previous team fight. 15 seconds until Chronosphere. Ember, Naga, Primal, there's no buyback. He jumps in with a time walk. Gun jumps back. No global silence for another 45 seconds. Both teams waiting patiently. Kami up to the high ground one more time. He Maybe approaches the rocks. Sanctity! Chrono! The Chrono on the back Lift. line. Let's go. On top of the beautiful wall as well. It doesn't get much done Beautiful though because song. the song's out and they're going to go for Max. Try and take him out of the equation. The low zone again. Pretty quick. He gets smashed into bits. They get the global silence and they're all in on top of Kami right now. He's got kind of low damage, I would say. Sanctity silence. Up. It's a flight show. <laughs> it's hard to do anything right now. Another global coming through. Right now. 
Ace got another Chrono, Chrono was bot stolen. line. Okay, Chrono on Zodiac, keeping away from the fight. Maybe they can finish something off. Hex Blizzy can find the low. He's Max is out. Low. The jam's on the grind. They're going to take down Blizzy. They go leap for number 11. 11 is going to go down. It's a die back for him. No Thanks again, enemies. Pretty Grim. Right now, is Sanctity. He's got three heroes contained here. He goes in. Four, two, three. He's, he's on top of all of them. Ah, Kami. He's quick with the time. Won't get that HP orb. back, though. Zodiac giving a little slap down. The BKB, the low absorb. Going to get him out of danger. No. Four, two, three is the out. The cores are tied. No, the court. This is the moment in. for Kurzakson. Take down the rocks. The roll for him. He's looking for Sanctity. He's into the final. Three versus four. Three rocks. Can Sanctity keep the team hopes alive? He's been playing phenomenal in December, but he's a one man army. Faceless Void with a rapier purchase. All right, Divine Rapier. Hex! Right Sanctity! Now. They bring him down. Stun! Nice Silence! Box. Two no, box. Three it's out. over. It's down, it's GG, and Kyrgyzstan will Have go to the, uh, the upper uh, bracket finals. Mongolia, Mongolia is in the lower bracket. What a performance from Kyrgyzstan with a reverse sweep, Jeeves, and they have made it onto the next round. What a performance, what a team, so much resilience. Round of applause for Team Kyrgyzstan once again. Mongolia with a valiant effort, but in the end, it proved to be the late game, Kami, Faceless Void. I think basically what we saw here, though, was Comfort Heroes winning out over Meta. Yeah. And I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's all about playing your own game and forcing the enemy to react to you. But it couldn't have been a closer series. It couldn't have been a longer series if they tried. What a beautiful performance from Kyrgyzstan. And commiserations, of course. Uh, you know. Yeah, so. definitely a great, uh, a great performance all around, and what a show here. And just for all of the crowd, this is not the last match of the evening. United States will be playing here in just a short time. Playing so, for their tournament lives. Playing they for the tournament facing lives. elimination. Will we get the interview? Will we have yes, yes, we are waiting for a Team Kyrgyzstan interview with the players, but uh, they are feeling very hot right now. We spoke to Zayats last night, and he was telling us, this is amazing. We love our country. We're doing this for them. Hopefully, we are going to keep growing the scene. And uh, I am giving word that we might be getting the chance to interview Kami himself about that performance on Paceless Void. Fantastic, fantastic. Kyrgyzstan, though, yeah, like you say, they want to show that there are like legitimate Dota, uh, Dota 2 players from Kyrgyzstan. Yep. They've definitely done that. Yep, they, Without they, any question of a doubt, they are top three for the you know the world championships right now yeah from the tiebreakers one game away from losing in the group stage to all the way top three twenty thousand dollars being cracked right now and it's uh it's impressive and they will be facing Myanmar who has looked like the unbeatable titan they have been the unbeatable titan tomorrow so that's going to be a hell of a match but uh, there's still plenty of time to there and now they're just going to sit down and celebrate which they deserve i mean you can relax a little bit i imagine they're going to take some time to uh, you know really look at young ph on uh, skill day and uh, kshs hero choices yep. make sure that they're ready going into it for the for for tomorrow but uh, here we also see Mongolia, one of the other teams that has looked like a top three team. And honestly, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if they will go to the lower bracket and make the run all the way back to the top three. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I can see them putting up. A, I mean, they've already pretty much faced off versus some of the teams that are in the lower bracket. Yes, they have. Uh, very strongly indeed. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the lower bracket final. Yeah, neither would I. And uh, with such an atmosphere and a crowd here, both of these teams must be feeling very proud of themselves. And yeah, it's not the end of the journey for Mongolia, as uh, they will still have plenty of footage to look back at for today's uh, three map that they just played and learn from a lot of the mistakes. And I want to go back, Jeff, sorry for interrupting, to that Naga Siren. It's not the first time we see it here in Yash, but still yet to win a game I, know, I believe it did win one game on day on day two as a core as a core it was quite surprising but the tempo of the game was very much in favor of the naga siren team interesting so uh i i, I don't think you can i don't think any hero really beats faceless void when you get to 50 plus minutes though especially he uh the way they were able to secure the Roshan and get that uh, fresher shard, yep. it was super key. He dropped the uh, he dropped the Chrono on the Ember Spirit on the top lane, and the Ember got away on a fraction of health. He picks up the Moon Shard, and then he goes on Ember Spirit. Now Ember was probably feeling <laughs> one guy. How bad could it be? Oh, he's got Chrono again. Oh no! And then Moon Shard damage. You know, yep. speed over the Moon Shard, extra attack speed, gets those extra few bashes in, and that is when Ember Spirit like. What, like he spent all that time baiting them and, and jibing them and thinking, yo, look at me, look at me. You take him down, it's a knock to the confidence. 
I felt though in the final team fight situation the Naga Siren kind of held the song for a really long time and it meant that they were able to commit for this. Fabulous. Well, we are now joined by none other than uh, the man of the hour, uh, Kazakh uh, Kyrgyzstan with a huge victory. Congratulations. How does it feel to be in the top three uh, here at the World Esports Championships? It, it feels great. You know, there's a lot of teams, uh, like very great teams, USA, Myanmar, Mongolia, and we're winning them. That feels like impossible for me <laughs> because I have no experience in big tournaments and I've never played on stage actually. Wow. Well, uh, we wouldn't be able to say that because you are like a diamond under pressure. You've been absolutely excellent. So you guys went down one game to start off with. Uh, were you nervous? When we lost the first game. The first game, yeah, yeah. Um, I, they actually like I think they cheesed us a little bit with Dark Willow carry. Yeah, we didn't really yeah, expect it. Certainly did. Uh, and I think our drafts weren't really great because Mongolia team really likes to play active Dota. Uh, they play like a favorite. And we picked like really late game heroes like Doom, Pango, and a lot of other stuff happened. And I think that's the main reason that we lost the game. And then TA Meat actually crushed me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then they just snowballed us really hard. And the second, third game, we picked uh, heroes who can uh, counterattack them in the early stages. So I guess that's it. So going into game three and you got the faceless void, where you're just like, oh, this is fine, this is perfect, I love this hero, let's go. Faceless void? Yeah. I think faceless void because we have Earth Spirit and Darkseid yeah. really active yeah. early game and securing the late game with faceless void was a great idea. And we knew they were going to pick Naga, so, and they didn't ban Darkseer. That's Perfect. why I think that. Yeah. Um, after playing a bit with the crowd while you guys were playing, uh, you were the favorite team, so do you have any final uh, words you'd like to say with the, to the Romanian audience here in Yash? Thanks, everyone, uh, for cheering for us. I hear a lot of, when I was playing, I heard a lot of cheering for Kyrgyzstan. I really appreciate that you guys vote for us. Thanks, everyone. And obviously, a final question tomorrow. Well deserved round of applause for Kavi. Um, the final question tomorrow, Myanmar, upper bracket final. How well do you feel prepared to, f uh, to face them who have yet to drop a map this tournament? Uh, we haven't prepared for Myanmar. We, we go like this we face it, another team and we prepare for them. Like for Mongolia, we prepared yesterday. So for Myanmar, we have the whole evening to prepare. I think they're really great team. They crushed us when we were playing Asian qualifiers in Riyadh. And they were like, they lost the Philippines, but they were still second place. I think they're really good players. So we're going to prepare hard for them. Well, we cannot wait to see that. And once again, Yash, round of applause. Show some love to Kami and Team Kyrgyzstan. Fantastic performance. Do you have any, any words you'd like to say to your people watching at home, to family, friends, your countrymen maybe supporting you? Yeah, I want to say thanks to everyone who cheer for us, especially the guys who watch me, watch us in Kyrgyzstan. There's a lot of players and uh, people who uh, always say good things about us, and thanks for that. Well, congratulations once again. A pleasure to watch you play, and cannot wait to see what you have for us tomorrow. Have a good evening. And that was Kami, ladies and gentlemen. Team Kyrgyzstan making top three. They're now assured a little bit of the prize pool out of the $100,000, $20,000 is at least reserved for them. But with plays like that, I wouldn't be surprised if they could make it all the way. I want to see these guys in the grand finals for sure. And definitely uh, from the very first time they beat USA on the main stage, yep. uh, we kind of felt like, okay, there's a little bit of magic going on here, a little bit of specialness. And uh, Zayas himself, like I say, like they want to show Kyrgyzstan I've got what it takes, and they've done that. You know, yeah. they can relax a little bit maybe before their uh, before their next series, but uh, well, you don't relax too much. Well, my don't is take the, yeah, yeah, don't take your foot off the gas, of course. But uh, what a great sportsman as well! Fantastic. Give yeah. it up for uh, Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, and they seem to be aware of the dangers they have to face tomorrow. But tonight is theirs. They're shining on stage. But let's see if the next two teams for tonight still have it in them to stay in the tournament and shine as we will go onto a quick break. But when we're back, we're going to have the lower bracket matchup and it's still going to be another best of three. Stay tuned. See you then.
obviously want to win this tournament and we have a lot, had a lot of time to practice and we have a lot of talented players that we brought to this tournament. Over 700 gamers from around the globe will join us to compete and battle it out for glory to earn their place in the Parfion of Champions. Because of this event, so I'm really happy that I saw uh, a lot of female team. Like it's an opportunity to play against them all. We've been looking at the other teams so far and we've been scouting them like what they play and how they feel like. Cel mai bun eveniment de până acum la care am fost eu în țara la noi. Beautiful country, beautiful people, amazing food. Good luck to everyone. Let's enjoy together these days and share moments. We have a couple of things prepared, so we're, we're coming in with a, a little strat book, but enough to, to win our games. The top three players will make it out there, right? So basically two people will make it out on the lower side and one person gets it advanced. So whoever's the main winner, they're ahead of everybody. I used to be a competitor in it, now I'm a commentator in it, obviously. But this game itself, right? There's a lot of fighting games out there. This is a one, two, 3D fighting game. Having so many countries in this city is something very special and it's an honor to be here and play against Moldova. Că sunt foarte multe echipe, sincer să fiu nu prea mult în ultima perioadă de meciurile, dar cred că USA o să ne surprindă foarte mult. I'm confident uh, and I have plans for my opponents, but uh, I know they are good players, so I'll do my best.
Bună seara, România! Bună seara, Iași! Suntem live aici în Amfiteatrul Palaș. Sunt Waxen, acompaniat de colegul meu, Jeeves. Rândă de aplauze pentru Jeeves în vizită în România. Uh, finally, we are here, Jeeves, with the last best of three series of the day. And we got a bit bamboozled. We thought we were going to see something else, but we're going to see something even better. Yeah, I think this is definitely going to be a pretty hot matchup. We've got Jordan fresh from the upper bracket earlier today. Taz, Mage, Isla, Aframush, and Nagato. Uh, fantastic squad so far. Been doing really well in the tournament, so excited to cast them one more time. Now, this is a do or die, though. Like, you, uh, you win, you go forward in the lower bracket, you lose, and unfortunately, that's the end of your time here in, uh, in the tournament. But, uh, you know, it, it should be uh, should be a pretty good game, though. We got yeah, Indonesia I, on the other side of the, the fence. Yeah, Indonesia, and we're going to take a look at their roster in just a moment. Uh, they are the champions from 2022 of the World Esports Championships, IESF, and they are here in the lower bracket. And it hurts me to say, they are probably one of the weaker teams in this tournament that is still playing currently because I think Jordan is the heavy favorite coming into this best of three. Uh, we've seen what Aframush, Ayla, Mage can all do. Whereas Indonesia has kind of been lacking uh, at sorts compared to their 2022 form. Compared to 2022 form, sure. Uh, earlier today, of course, they came through with the forfeit from Ukraine. Um, yep. so uh, maybe hurt them a little bit, you know, if they were able to play through that matchup and uh, pick up some steam, get a little bit of momentum, you know, as opposed to going in, being prepared to to take that team, and then the brakes are put on hard. We got them here on the stream before you, Dremacel, of course, Wami from the off lane, Pota two, Flappy the four, and Hyde, a very well known five, of course. Dremacel has been the standout, um, you know, uh, performer Player. for yeah. uh, for Indonesia. Uh, we've seen some some really nice, uh, I think, uh, Skyrath Mage from Flappy. Absolutely. Hyde has been uh, has been on point. Wami's Dawnbreaker has been super good as well. So uh, yeah, I mean, there, this is definitely going to be a, a competitive series. For yeah, sure. I think it could go all the three maps, but uh, yeah, we're getting to talk about heroes and let's talk about Jordan. Obviously, Indonesia coming off of a forfeit win, but uh, Jordan, on the other hand, coming off of an 0-2 loss versus the undefeated Myanmar here. But one of the things that I want to talk to you about, uh, Jeeves, is the picks that they went for uh, Aframush in today's series, because we've seen Aframush dec decimate absolutely everybody in his path on the Chen, on the Enchantress, and the Chen was banned out by the opponents, but Enchantress was in the pool for both games and they just stayed away from it. Why do you think that is? Do you think Enchantress is so situational or a p player like Aphromus can just make it shine no matter what? Uh, what did he actually end up playing? Uh, I think he played a Spirit Breaker, I want to say, at one point. It was a Spirit Breaker game one and I'm thinking something else for game two. I couldn't quite remember, but it was definitely not 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 the usual comfort picks that we see from him. Sure. So I think we saw earlier today as well that Enchantress can be quite vulnerable to some lineups. If you've got the correct kind of, yeah, if you've got some kind of, if you've got the correct uh, AOE kind of damage to deal with her, yep. you can, like we saw the Klinks taking it apart from Kyrgyzstan earlier today, for example. So I think you have to be kind of careful about picking the Enchantress. I think um, his Enchantress and his Chen though, are phenomenal, are phenomenally strong. Still situational. Uh, um, I would say Chen you can probably pick first phase though. Well, if it makes it through the draft, but let's take a quick look at the head-to-head -head support. So we're just talking about them. The two that we have here are obviously Nagato and Hyde. So the position five players and Nagato, first of all, 16k damage on average on a position five is very impressive. But more than that, I wanted to tell you, Chiefs, he's been one of the most impressive positions five this tournament. Obviously, he's played mostly Grimstroke one of the stronger heroes this patch, yep. but he is absolutely stunning, even on the Vengeful Spirit that we've seen from him a few times, and I think he's had a game on Silencer, if I'm not I wrong. I think he had Tusk as well, which and to is Tusk. Pretty, pretty good for accelerating his uh, his core, yep. uh, the damage and stuff that he was able to pour out. Hyde, of course, like I say, very, very, very well known player. He's got a nice, um, I guess, average tower damage. That's an interesting statistic for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's very low for both of them. Uh, I mean, the supports don't really hit towers, though. I mean, Chan, obviously, would be the tower hitter if there was going to be a support that hits towers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, very, yeah, very sort of similar play style for these two teams, for these two players. Hyde, he's all about saving the core, of course. So. Yeah. 
it will be very, very interesting to see how these two will match up. And uh, what feels like this tournament has actually been dictated a lot by the level that the supports have shown up. And a lot of the top six teams that we're currently looking at have had very high impact supports from the position four and the position five alike. Yeah, so on support, if you can buy time for your cores in the first 15 to 25 minutes, try to get that uh, position one accelerated, make sure that your position three doesn't get sacked too hard. If you can, uh, you know, if you can enhance the position three's game so that you're able to then leave him alone in lane so yep. he's in a strong enough position that you can move around the map, and then, you know, then you can enhance what your position two wants to do. And it buys the time for the position one, the safe lane, the safe lane carry, you know? Yeah. Plenty of space being created oh, wow. right now. <laughs> I mean, Indonesia are in very high spirits coming into this series. Um, uh, they did they did get the chance to rest a little bit because of uh, the, the other circumstances of the match with Ukraine, whereas Jordan has played just two series ago, so maybe Jordan... Uh, there's two ways of looking at this. Are they warmed up or they may be slightly tired after playing uh, what was yeah. a very close series? I would have thought... It would be, I, I guess because Team USA are going to be playing versus... Um, Whoever just... Uh, Kyrgyzstan that just uh, defeated none other than my brain... Uh, Mongolia. Mongolia. That's so, the one. Uh, because Mongolia literally just played, they'll be playing versus United States tomorrow. So it'd be a bit unfair for them to play back, back to back, back. games. So. Yeah. Uh, which is fair enough. So uh, both teams like uh, would have had a game today. you know. Uh, and so I guess Indonesia are coming in a bit more refreshed. Uh, Jordan though, yeah. I mean, this is a this is make or break for them here. They've played phenomenally so far. The draft is underway. We ban out Wami Stonebreaker. They respond by taking an R from Ushis uh, Chen. And, and, and we talked about the impact that uh, Maga Nagaro just had on the Ventral Spirit as well. So another one of those supports, and that's what we're talking about. The impact that the supports, but the Nature's Prophet, we still have three bands to go, still in the pool, as Jordan takes out the Primal Beast. There's no way Nature's Prophet gets through, right? But we get rid of Primal, we've seen him all day. Uh, Here's the going out on yeah. the giant helicopter kick to the curb so uh, yeah I mean, these are pretty stable bands so far dark will is still in the pool we haven't really seen it from either of these teams though very interesting a uh, radiant first pick and I think from the games that I had the pleasure to cast, we have mostly had dire first pick this far. So let's see if that's going to change anything as Jordan is now thinking about the next band paired up with their first pick. Yeah, so four bands for Indonesia, three for Jordan into the first pick. Uh, there's many, many heroes you can be looking at right now. We've seen the Dark Willow first phase. We've seen the Beastmaster, of course, one of the stable and the more stronger heroes right now. Uh, does Indonesia run anything like uh, the Techies that we see from Myanmar and Kyrgyzstan alike? No, but Techies isn't really the specialist hero that he used to be back in the day. You know, like there's a lot more people play Techies now. He's way more of a stable kind of four position, whereas old Techies was more like a you have to have a special kind of sickness. <laughs> <laughs> a sick guy indeed. Well, three guys actually, because obviously Techies is uh, three characters in one. It's uh, Spleen, Spoon, and uh, Earth Spirit picked right now, by the way. Okay, I mean, this is a flex pick, of course, and we have seen it a lot in the mid lane. I don't think we've actually seen it as a four so far, though. You say it's flex pick, flex pick. I think, I think, I think we have That's had a game late play yesterday. Play no, no, Zayat's not played that as a, as a four at all. I think it was, I want to say maybe Jordan. I want to say Jordan might have played it as a four because uh, Mage obviously opts for more of those mobile uh, farming heroes. Than yeah, the so Mage Invoker is pretty classic. Is Ember Spirit going to get robbed by Indonesia? They're going to make sure they deny it by picking it here. Two spirit rows already on the field for sure. Hey, I'm trying to just uh, double check right now. Uh, I think in the group stages is where I saw he played, or Myanmar actually won the team that did run it as a four earlier today oh, versus Jordan. That's okay, the one. Okay, so maybe My Jordan taking a page out of Myanmar's book and saying, "Hey, it's pretty good." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was very successful, but it was paired with a Nature's Prophet that enabled the Earth Spirit to get even more involved with the fights. Sky Rat taken out and the Morphling. Interesting. This is this is good though because you're kind of taking Floppy's main hero away, the Skywrath Mage. Uh, Dramacell Morphling was incredible, uh, did incredibly well. So uh, one of really yeah. solid bonds. There. One of those heroes that you can, uh, if you are, you know, if you get enough space, you can put the whole team on your back and just carry it. Morphling has always felt that way. I, there are certain heroes that kind of shut that dream down. Of course. But, uh, like yeah. That, that dream, dream of self. Nice, yeah. that's yeah. good. Uh, Ember Spirit. 
Uh, first pick for Indonesia, uh, paired with a Rubik on top of the Naga Siren ban. Was is Ember Spirit a first pick hero, or is it because it's a second phase ban hero? And Jordan finally going back and picking up that enchantress. <laughs> Return to Monkey, yeah. No, so the story of the Ember Spirit is Mage has a phenomenal win rate on the Ember Spirit, right? 70% 70, 70 or so? Yep. So rather than uh, leave it in the pool or yep. using a ban, they're going to steal it. Steal pick, love to see which it. Is good, which is good, and we get the Grim Stroke. So it's an Ember, it's an Air Spirit mid. Enchantress uh, on the five, Grimstroke four, I think. Very interesting looking right now at uh, Jordan and what they are running. Uh, yesterday, they had a very similar comp when they ran the Enchantress, obviously alongside Avenge. That's not the case here. But what they did to complement that, they went for a Mars that's still in the pool. Well, another option you have to be looking at is going to be the Doom. Oh, Night Stalker! I've been hyping up this hero so much, uh, Jeeves. We had it once yesterday, a bit underwhelming, but I still think Night Stalker has such a strong presence in the current meta, and I hope Indonesia will be more successful with it because I want to see more of Night Stalker. So this is an awful Night Stalker as opposed to the mid Night Stalker, I would say. Oh, you could wear, you, I mean, Dremacell could play Amber safely. So Black was telling me that he prefers the Night Stalker as a carry in the current patch more than an offlane. That's a cheesy pick. I, 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 okay, I mean, it's black, though. It's black. You have to kind of consider what he says, for sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Safe lane, Night Stalker. It's whatever you need to get him online quickly, right? The faster yeah. he gets online, the better. We've got this Bat Rider, which is kind of like floated around five and such, but I'm not sure where it's going to go in this draft. The, the way Bat Rider functions, traditionally is there a lot the way Night Stalker functions in this current patch. Uh, both heroes like to go from above, we'll go in behind the enemy lines and clear that out. And Ember Spirit also has that capacity. So this is a very dynamic jumping kill your backline type heroes. But Jordan with the Jeeves Bloodseeker peak uh, kind of nullifies that. All of the, both of the heroes, Night Stalker and Batrider, do not like getting ruptured that we saw earlier today. No, well, no one really likes being ruptured, <laughs> except from Razor, I think. But, you know, Storm Spirit. Yeah, Storm as well. Um, so, safe lane, Bloodseeker. Medusa ban. Devalues, of course, the, the Night Stalker, and it devalues the Bat. Yeah. The bat. Both of them really want to be mobile moving around. Ember Spirit doesn't really care about rupture or whatever or anything else yeah. the main thing that i see here though is the sleight of fist the fade bolt and the sticky napalm with the uh, the, the flame break they're all really good answers for dealing with the enchantress you know we talked about yeah. heroes that can kind of shut that uh, enchantress down and they definitely have sort of kill potential on her so but now we have the blood seeker with the double rupture from the grim stroke yeah. grim stroke together uh, especially if you land on <laughs> Night Stalker and Bat, but I wouldn't be 100% confident as Bloodseeker in this game, though. Uh, you've got the lift from the Rubik, you've got the Searing Chains. Night Stalker's actually annoying for Bloodseeker to deal with because he just kind of comes in and beats the crap out of you. Uh, he kind of comes online a little bit faster sometimes. One of the things that is obviously here uh, and has been telegraphed since the third pick, this Earth Spirit is going to be played as a core. Yeah, he's gonna be, it's going to be mid-Earth Spirit, I think. Uh, and we saw the kind of impact it can have with the blade mail, and we saw the kind of impact it can have with the spirit vessel. So I'm not saying build blade mail, but <laughs> uh, Tidehunter Mars, like I said, uh, the, the hero that Jordan likes pairing that enchantress with Tidehunter uh, does a lot of the same thing. Uh, but uh, looking at Indonesia, potentially still wanting a carry. That's what Jordan believes. Oh. Peel out, Medusa out. But I'm looking at this, and I just want to say, Sven still in the pool. Uh, what, for Indonesia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sven's not a fan of being ruptured either. True. Although the Stormhammer, I believe, makes him invulnerable while he's, uh, if he gets the Axe. Yeah, I don't think Axe Sven is the current meta, but Indonesia has two minutes right now to think about their next hero. And uh, Phantom Assassin's still in the pool, but she kind of suffers from that rupture. She wants to be very mobile, agile, jumping back and forth in team fights. so I don't think she's an option here. Although Bloodseeker is not necessarily an NKB builder. She does build first out of Maelstrom, which kind of deals with evasion and a little bit in the early game. Could build into a Silver Edge, I suppose, a more uh, old school Bloodseeker Mjolnir build. Mjolnir can be quite good if she blinks on you, but I, I mean, it's, she doesn't want to blink when she's ruptured, but it's still, it's not ideal. 
But uh, Grimstroke, of course, if you ever get to the Yogg Scepter, does he still do the Dark Reflection? And then you've got a PA who's very much decimating and murder your own team. But it will be an Underlord. Okay, I love this, actually, the Uberlord. Now, the reason I like this is because of the Pit of Malice. It makes it really icky sticky for Ember if he does come in. It makes it really awkward for uh, the Bat Rider and the Night Stalker to move around. Yeah, and uh, it's a hero that we've been asking for to see. He fits a lot of the current meta heroes. Obviously, not a Mars, not a Tide, but builds those auras, a team fight presence, global presence. It can join the fans Bloodseeker around the map. But Indonesia now, two minutes, thinking about, okay, what is the best carry still in the pool? And, ooh, does Indonesia run? I, I would say a Slark would be cool, but a, obviously Bloodseeker is a You can't the play ultimate. Slark and a Bloodseeker. Yeah, ultimate Slark counter, so that is kind of off the table. And we have seen some Terror Blades, but uh, again, teams have stayed away from that hero since they started playing main stage. Yeah, so I mean, you could go back for uh, something a little bit more... Uh, Stable in the mid, like you could play this Ember safe lane. It's unlikely, but you could play the Ember in the safe lane. You could play the Night Stalker in the safe lane. Let's see what they go for the bond. You can pick up the Juggernaut, the old faithful. Jug or not, Juggernaut, and I, I, have we seen a Juggernaut thus far? I don't, I don't think so. But Juggernaut does negate some of the Bloodseeker effect when everybody is low. You just pop the healing word and uh, reduce the thirst that Bloodseeker provides. He also can uh, pop the ult on the Swift Slash from the Aghanim Scepter when he's ruptured. He won't take any damage yeah. when he's jumping around. Can kill the Enchantress with the ultimate, of course. Doesn't have to struggle with uh, hitting her. But even the spin is a problem for her, honestly. Yeah, it's it's not the worst pick, but definitely not the most traditional meta here currently. And uh, how would you say the Bloodseeker fares against the Juggernaut? Oh, I mean, it's, uh, it's not the best situation. To be honest. Okay, so uh, you're preferring Indonesia's draft currently? No, I mean, I'm still going to go with Jordan. <laughs> Bloodseeker, bro. But uh, my only real question in the draft is uh, the Mage Earth Spirit. And I've not seen him play it yet. I mean, I'm sure it's phenomenal. But uh, that's my only kind of question mark here. But uh, we break it down. We've got Mage on the Earth Spirit, Afro Mush on the Enchantress we saw him on before, Nagato picking up uh, the Grimstroke, Taz on the Bloodseeker, and Isla with the, uh, with the offlane. Um, yeah, Underlord there. And on uh, the side of Indonesia, we will have garbage down the mid lane. Uh, floppy, uh, flappy on the Rubik, Wami on the Night Stalker off lane. Uh, Hyde with the Bat Rider position 5. And uh, last but not least, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, the dream itself, Dream Ocell on the Juggernaut safe lane carry. I imagine he's going to do pretty well there. Uh, yeah, versus an Underlord inch la uh, lane. Very interesting. We will we'll be curious to see how fast Nage decides to get active around the map as well on the Earth. I imagine we see the crit come out on Dremacell, maybe uh, third or level three, level four, just to try and compensate for the aura. <laughs> yeah, um, stats don't help me that much as of right now. Uh, Mage has not played Earth Spirit in Pops in the last week or so, if that helps by any sort of imagination, as he's only played Leshrat one game. Uh, but it will be very, very interesting to see how this early mid lane will go in. Uh, we have a rematch between the brothers. we just seen Ember Spirit versus Earth Spirit, and we are going back to watching them compete versus one another to see who can come out on top. So Ember Spirit last time around had the most CF, but Earth Spirit found the levels faster. Yep. So this should be an interesting... Uh, Due to the early gang that we saw yeah. from... Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Indonesia versus Jordan, game one, best of three. Tournament lives on the line. A little bit of a, an audience shot there. Give it up for Indonesia and Jordan. What a fantastic crowd. We know it's getting late at night in Romania, but come on, Yash, come on, give him more of a noise. Let's hear it. Woo! That's the spirit. Welcome to Romania, and let's see this final best of three of the evening. Is Jordan going to make it through? Is Indonesia going to do it? Or one of them will have to take the tickets to the plane and go home. Jeeves, if you would have to make a prediction right now for the entirety of the series, who do you think is going to take this? And do you think it's going to be a 2-1 or a 2-0? Uh, I want to say Jordan 2-0. Wow, I, I'm, I'm on the Jordan side. I don't want to disrespect uh, Indonesia too much. You know, maybe there's a little bit of secret sauce in there. Maybe the mage air spirit doesn't quite kick off. 
But uh, you think Jordan game one? Or? I'm a Jordan 2-1 victory. Okay. That's okay. what I think because I want to see that game three and I think everybody here uh, that's been waiting. You're going to go for the caster's curse just like uh, we all just go hardcore in <laughs> on it? As we are getting uh, down into the server and uh, yes, the Mage Earth Spirit probably my biggest question mark this draft but we have the Aphromoosh Ench and he can replicate even half of the success that he's had in the past few days on this uh, jungler essentially the way he plays it uh it would be very very scary for the night stalker and even the ember spirit early on in mid i think he's going to suffer a little bit with the with the night stalker for sure Ooh. but they're uh, they're, they're, they're moving down. in here smoking up looking for that early vision advantage oh i like this actually around the outside beautifully done okay and then it's Smoke going to break on the high ground Nagato in a beautiful position here the, the stroke of fate could have done so much work there and he will actually skill up now the silence Nagato getting kind of low but ember spirito will fall as well so first blood goes the way of the indonesia travis that was super low actually he uh, says give me the old high five as he tries to run away here <laughs> where are you going bro my friends are dead he's so fast I, I think he's so fast, but he will be fast to the grave because I think Mage with another boulder slow. Kaz can have a silence up on the high ground here. There's the slow on top of Dramacel. Omega low. Roche is not there. Bye, bro. Dull. Oh. Two kills going in the favor of Jordan, already taking the gate up top. Let's see how many bounty runes can they secure on uh, the Indonesia in a pretty good place to get three bounties here, though. As they should, but I'm looking up top, and Aphromoosh she's already going through the jungle. Is he going to get faster oh, than the Batrider? Oh, a little rotation yeah, through the portal. Oh, beautifully done, beautifully done. So two kills. The first blood does, of course, go to Indonesia, but two kills for Jordan. 50-50 on the bounty rings. It evens out. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you're quite happy with this. Uh, Taz did have to scale uh, Blood Rite first as level one, which is not the same. Honestly, I've literally seen every single Blood Seeker in this tournament do that. Yeah. So, um, Current meta. It seems like uh, it seems like it. Uh, Isla on the. Uh, I feel like I feel like the nerf to the eight percent uh, heal only is just it devalues the the passive so much. But hide uh, position five. Uh, we saw some real good success from SC on this hero, so. Has to be a little bit of a fear for the hero, for sure. A bit of a chip damage being dealt right there from Isla, but Aphromoosh and Hyde are trading blows. You don't want to use the impetus from up to close, but now we're going to see a nice impetus hit going the way of Hyde. Uh, I mean, it, it goes to show how confident Aphromoosh is on the hero that he doesn't want to take the uh, the heal early. He's going for the impetus, and that's going to allow him to be a lot more aggressive I on Dremeson. I think it's not confidence, but more of the team fight that happened before the <laughs> zero minute mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, ooh, nice impetus, oh, but nice spin back, is going to come through. Back down the Taz feeling a little bit of pressure from this nice Edge stalker up top. Edge to fall for the spin, and we kind of talked about the vulnerability there. Taking out Aphromoosh early on. That's going to be feeling very, very good for Dreamo Cell. That did give away a uh, kill early on. He's going to come back into this game. But uh, this Ember Spirit is doing very good work right now. Mage trying to harass, getting them quite low. Uh, yeah, I mean, he played that one beautifully. He actually harassed Garbage away from the lane and man still wants to find a CS on top of that damage he's doing. So this Seven and three right now versus six and one. But that's kind of what we expected, right? The CS advantage to uh, the Ember Spirit. This is the fifth Ember Spirit I see today in the first one that puts a uh, Flame Guard point at level two. Well, I mean, I talked about that last time as well, where I felt like the Flame Guard versus the Earth Spirit is probably your better bet, yeah. just so you can like stop them from being able to approach a melee hero, obviously. But they're uh, they're pretty even. On neck the and neck, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Juggernaut, uh, seven last hits to the Bloodseeker 4, but ooh, after no, your play. Know your place, just what they needed. Nagato and Wami having a time of their lives uh, right now on the opposite se teams. So, uh, pretty good situation to start things off. Very bloody uh, start to the game. And you kind of expect this from the Indonesian team. And certainly, Jordan, no fear for these early fights. And, uh, with last mm -hmm. hits. Can Mage get all of them under oh. tower? Garb is very nice. <laughs> oh, nice. If this, ooh, range trip being lost right there in the process and Garbage is doing very, very well. But despite that, Mage hits level four before him as Garbage needs one more creep. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is down to the two kills uh, early on, of course. Uh, make sure you get this creep. Nice, and Chant is getting good as well. Now, Wami, the ink swell on the Bloodseeker means that they can do quite a lot of damage here. Now, Night Stalker's fast, but he's not Bloodseeker fast when he's got the passive online. Doesn't have the boost. He's toast, actually. I would die. Mage? Yeah, I would have died. Garbage but. diving after that fortify, but it's only one creep that can tank the tower in mid. 
Yeah, he's super low, though. He needs to be careful. He can definitely take advantage of this. After the win on off row, but he's going to TP out successfully. That's okay. He uh, TP'd back the tower, though. He really needs to get a point and, and heal. Unfortunately, though, the mid lane very much going Bobby. Oh, nice lift back. Ah, saved by Flappy, but just kill Flappy. That's the answer. Beautiful dodge uh, from Flappy there, more though. squishy. Helping by dodging the silence coming in, the Inkswell from oh, nice the range. Range. Yes. 23 and 6 versus 16 and 2. Amber Spirit absolutely bodying Earth Spirit right now. And it all started from those two the creeps in the tower, didn't it? Yeah, a, a little bit of tilt maybe over Mage. <laughs> Again, not traditionally the Earth Spirit player, but the Ember himself, Mage. Uh, meanwhile, Nagato gonna try again on Tuomi with Taz. Tremosel getting pumped up top here as well as Isla chasing away from the lane. Hyde, he's got the flame, uh, the Firefly running here, and Aframush still running through this though. He's uh, he's okay with that. Got flame break available, but no points in uh, no points in the uh, the napalm. Sticky napalm, yeah. yeah. Is. Maybe they have sticks already on the lane and you don't want to... Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. The enchant is already with the full wand, indeed. He's got himself the tomato creep here. Going to try and hunt oh, down oh. Hyde here. Impetus? He's got some impetus angles and keeping the vision there, but he's quite happy to zone out. He wants to make sure that uh, Isla is not left too alone. This yes. Ember Spirit topping the last hit chart, but Isla on the counterpart. Uh, this Underlord with the Vanguard Bracer. Yeah, this is a so tanky, pretty, beefy boy. Pretty sick start to the game. And Mage finds his level 5, but uh, CS-wise, he's suffering quite a bit. Oh, double observer placed by the Rubik and Mage himself uh, onto the top of the cliff. Ah, one, one Dire, one, one, uh, yeah. one Radiant. But look at the early rotation. Yeah, actually got him with the rock. No level 6. Coming through, get him a little impetus action on top. Whoa! Boom! Nagato from the long distance with the green stroke. Hyde comes in to try and help a pro out, but Nagato running the ink swell here, so he can't go back up. And now Aframush seeing if he can get one more impetus, a little roll forward from Mage. Hyde gets collected and selected by Mage. It's a double kill for the mid. And that's what you need is the air spirit. We saw before, you need those double kills exactly. to keep Same story game. as last game. And I talked about Nagato's Grimstroke and Vengeful. Indonesia went by uh, banning the Venge, but left the Grimstroke in the pool, and we saw that beautiful TP throw the paint dust on the floor and get the kill in the end uh, for the Earth Spirit. I was still a little bit impressed or surprised, should we say, to see... Oh, there's oh. a slight fist curl from Garbage. Uh, to not see the Doom, but to see the... Uh, you, know, you got, the, you got the, the Link, you imagine you get the double Doom. But I think uh, versus the Night Stalker and the Pot Rider, it makes a lot of sense. So both of the Spirit Bros level six right now. Amber with a remnant sitting there. Aframush just kind of chilling here. Bloodseeker 36 and 11 versus the 22 and three of Juggernaut, having a way better lane. I think it's the best lane we've seen a Bloodseeker have today as well. Today, definitely. I think we had another strong Bloodseeker a couple days ago, but yeah, this is definitely by far the best one today, as uh, both of the Spirit Brothers have hit level 6. Uh, I think slightly more of a power-up for Mage's level 6 so than Ember. Interestingly enough, Mage has decided to go for the Spirit Vessel build. Which is what we call the losing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's about to become the winning build, though. Flappy, he's going to be there to pick up the Wisdom Rune. The Wisdom Rune already picked up on the far side, of course. Uh, already done and dusted. Uh, just to clarify what we mean by... Uh, and I do think the Spirit Vessel is not as bad in this game as in other games because it works very well alongside the Bloodseeker. Uh, chip damage over time, keeping the targets low, enabling the Bloodseeker to be well, faster. I mean, even against the Ember Spirit, if you get on him he, before he slides and he tries to run away, he's still going to be taking the damage. So it's like a poison apple chalice type situation. Mage smoked up as he just spotted the Ember Spirit uh, TPing back to heal the Remnant to, to here and will Remnant back to mid, but will it be too late? Dream of Cell, not it's level a 6 yet. far forward here, and Earth Spirit in a perfect position to take it's advantage done. of this. All four heroes here, Dream eradicated as Isla taking a real strong kill there. And Mage, what does he get here? He said, they say, oh, please have some creeps, sir. Sorry, your rotation uh, didn't get you a, a kill specifically, but got one for the team, got some assist gold. 
Now a little smoke play, a little counter play from Indonesia as they go looking for something of their own. But Jordan is looking phenomenal right now, looking at the top, top occupying They're the top three They're actually with the fight with this uh, this uh, Creek Wave push here Haste. under the tower. Hide. Look how low this tower is already. Amber Spirit is coming in on three, slight of fist, uh, Susan James. Got good catch now. The level six as well, but Bloodseeker arrives with a rupture. Actually goes out on the Bat Rider. Bat Rider gonna get handled up here. Taz going looking for kills, but what can he find? Okay, maybe he can find Flappy here. Putting the beat down, the smack down. Hide on the fight far side of things here, still showing up. Taz trying to get his ass to safety. It's working. The Gado getting collected in the meantime. Wami just kind of flying around and <laughs> Taz wishing he'd maybe ruptured that guy instead. Kind of flying around, but still a double kill. And the Bloodseeker is just gonna run. Nope, gotta no, 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 no. He wants to get in here. He's got blood right in two. Silence is back off a of cooldown. Blood right coming in. Uh, he actually gets a good silence on two. He's actually got so much speed right now, but only a javelin and phase boost. So, roll again, oh, man. This is great though. Turn up from Mage. He gets on top of garbage. That was a hell of a long range on that rolling boulder. They took the tower in the meantime. Isla does go down. It's a pretty big kill uh, for Indonesia. At least they're seven for seven for kills. But it feels like Hide. all of it is with uh, all the momentum right now is with Jordan. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. He's hiding. That was lame. That was lame indeed. Yeah. I you mean, what, my joke, right? what is it? <laughs> <laughs> What is there to say about uh, about that? Yeah. All right. I mean, uh, yeah. So we, we see the early impact of the Night Stalker. It's first night, of course, for uh, Ted Moore seconds. I think uh, you're going to be quite happy with that. He's sitting second top net worth. Just in behind the Earth through there. This is a really, really sick combo, though. <laughs> Actually disgusting. Uh, the stun him from the Gato, Taz with the Blood Right. He's actually, this is his home now up top, where they already took the tier one tower. He's able to rotate here, um, just uh, accelerate farm. He's 400 gold from Maelstrom. 11 minute Maelstrom phase boots is a, is a pretty good start to the game. Definitely, I was really looking right now, hide. We don't lasso, a thousand gold away from the Blink Dragon. So maybe trying to jump onto Flappy. We'll deal some damage with the tower, but currently sitting at 100 HP. Okay, Amber going to TP in behind the tower here. The catapult wave is uh, chunking away catapult on catapult action. We've got some Skelly Bros as well. He's got the uh, pushing creep on the uh, from Moosh. Nice portal opened up as well. Mage with a zoning play here. Beautiful rock on two. Flight of Fist comes through and Isla showing up here. They are applying so much pressure. The fortification going to come through. Garbage. He wants to fight into this though. The Pit of Malice. I don't think they skilled it up just yet. Oh, silence again. They're going to do a repeat oh, of what we just saw. Roll in on a little stun. Doesn't matter if you take him out. Uh, actually worked out really nicely there. Was able to dodge out the Inkswell stun. Rolling away his safety as they come back in with the ult of Wami. Uh, for Mushin, a little bit of a pickup. But this rupture goes out once again on the position five Bat Rider. And meanwhile, Mage going to get hunted down by Wami. And all this time, Dreamo Cell is farming away, claiming the T1 bottom, and his four teammates are winning the team fight without him. Four versus five. The power of darkness in the hands of Womi's Night Stalker. I think Ta Taz really needs to save this rupture for the Night Stalker. I have to agree. Like, uh, two, two fights in a row, getting punished by targeting someone else, I guess. It's the bat, and yeah. you imagine it's going to be a really good uh, a really good guy to go on. It's a position five bat rider, so. Yeah, I, I guess the bat didn't have the chance of using lasso, but still. Yeah, I mean, if, if he lassoes someone, rupture him then, sure. Well, this is good recovery for Hyde here. He's going to get some nice uh, golden experience here. Immediately gets a shovel into a bounty rune. Can't ask for a better so, so start than that. And has the blink dagger. Maelstrom completed on the opponent, the Bloodseeker. But again, the tables have turned. Indonesia with the top three net worth occupiers. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the uh, the Wami out there making a serious I hear difference. a blade mail somewhere. Yeah, that must be... Underlord? I guess so, because it's double bracer on Wami. I don't think he's had enough money to get the blade mill. Full spirit vessel finished up on our spirit. Ember spirit, garbage in the corner. It's garbage that has the blade mill, by the way. Oh, wow. So kind of saw that uh, similar idea with the air spirit earlier, air spirit blade mill, but uh, picking up on the Ember spirit. 
Whatever my brother can do, I can do better. That's the motto of this match. Uh, Earth Spirit's a strength hero, though, as he tends to have a little bit more bulk around True. the old waist. Hide yeah, flank cool. dagger. Now we see the lasso. Wami following up on top of it. The Pit of Malice goes down, but a little fateful action. They will secure the kill. That was the highest network hero on the side of Jordan, just getting taken out following that blink reveal on the Batrider. Garbage. Flying around the map. Spotted. Looking for wow. Afro Moosh here, and you can see the kind of damage that that Slight of Fist using Chain Combo is going to do. Batrider coming through again. Flappy's on the sidelines of things. Mage throws a little stun down time, but it's not going to be enough. Well, I mean, a silence. Afro Moosh. Mega, mega kill streak on the, the Night Stalker. Already Echo Saber face boots. Double Grazer going into the Blink Dagger, and he's still chasing the same level as the opponent mid laner. Just going to poke that children a little bit. Hello, I'm here. Yeah, so another minute or so, and he's going to have Knight again. And uh, they're in a, a little bit of a pickle. So BKB for Bloodseeker, the next item I'm looking for here. He's working his way through it, no problemo. He's level 10 now. And uh, that's a full battle for you. 14 minutes finished up for the Juggernaut. It's going to start accelerating his farm. Smoke. Coming in. Meanwhile, Isla oh, down Isla bottom alone. Again versus the Juggernaut, who can spin right in on top. He's going to go for the Omni Slash and bring down this kill. Not something you want to see right now. Just taking a quick look at the fantasy points. All of the heroes up to three fantasy points. <laughs> I think it might be broken. <laughs> Silence. Roll. Late mail. Okay. Turn around. Trying to come in for this. It's, uh, it's a thing. You put the ink swell out on them. They take a nice D ward there on top. And uh, um, some stacks as well that the Bat Rider's uh, making there for his boys. Dream of Cell, Battle Fury, Power Trades, and already starting to build towards that Yasha. Yeah, gonna go in for the early Manta style. It's gonna be able to get him out of the silence of the Bloodseeker. 15 stacks on the Dire side compared to the three of the Radiant in Jordan. Afro, which usually tends to be stacking way more, but he hasn't had quite the impact that we were expecting from his edge thus far, but still early on in the series. Uh, I mean, like I said, they do have heroes to deal with uh, Enchantress, and Enchantress breaks ankles, and that's how she starts to actually do some damage, so... Nice slow, though. Wami making sure that's not going to happen. Now the Bloodseeker comes in, he's got a little rupture action. And they can bring down Wami here, it's a huge kill, and it will go the way of Aframush of all people. Five times mega kill streak. Taz super low, though, he burns under the fire. Committed way before his BKB. And uh, they took down the big kill, though. Lapis just turning around onto Mage. This is a level 9 Rubik. Garbage coming in. Can Mage get away? Wow, very nice rollout. But meanwhile, across the map, Hyde. Uh, he, get by Nagato. he was a big kill as well for Nagato to get there. But he gets Hyla with the uh, with the fire damage. So 10 to 15. 6k net worth for Indonesia. When did this Rubik got to level 9? Unbelievable from him right then. Also dealing around 2.3k damage in this team fight. It's just because he's staying alive in the team fights. You know, and he's throwing in the Fade Bolt. He's getting that XP. He's getting that gold. He's got his Glimmer Cape online. He's got Arcane Boots. Almost um, level 10. This is uh, some impressive Rubik performance right now and positioning, of course. Bloodseeker going ahead of the Night Stalker in net worth, but... Uh, we got Dremacell with a full 1,500 gold ahead. Okay. Blood right to get a uh, 2 HP neutral. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's like a four second cooldown. Thing. That no. was a Wami kill. A kill onto Wami during night time. So that must have felt very, very good for the Radiant. As Wami got a good stun by mistake. Glimmer Cape and Nagato's out. Mage going to get himself to safety, so they're quite happy to lose the Nagato here with the four-man rotation, as long as they get Mage out alive. <laughs> yeah, Darknik's being popped right there, but Wami's on the prowl. Doesn't have the Blink Dagger quite yet. Mage He's should be coming. safe. But there's a Blink on Bat right there! a Blink on Bat. He's got a triple kill. Oh, wow. And they're really deep in behind the tower. A Mage a little bit greedy right there, not using the stone in order to roll further away. Gets do get, he do get the high tier, which is the majority of his four staff. And most of his mobility items going to get taken out of the equation. Aframush also level nine, though. Yeah, Wami kind of falling behind a little bit. The real unfortunate thing was that Aframush got the kill on Wami when he was dead. And Bloodseeker kind of committed quite hardcore for the 5,000 mega kill streak. And uh, didn't come up with it. 
But he is uh, chasing, he's chasing the Juggernaut. Once he has BKB online, he feels a lot better. Juggernaut, 500 gold away from his Manta style. Meanwhile, this Ember Spirit uh, building into a BKB follow up from the Blade Mill. Very, very curious build. Hyde is up here, does not have the lasso as of right now. Afro will show himself on the lane, will take the last hit, and will slowly disengage. There's a double damage on the guard. Isla. We got good presence on the high ground here. Afro is keeping the needling going here. Got it, getting that level 10. First talent tree for the Enchantress. So I'm a mage Earth Spirit mid. So far, almost falling behind the Batrider in the network. Again, not one of his comfort picks, and we are seeing it right now. Dreamo Cell lining up for a kill. The role has been used. Can Dreamo Cell get the skill with the Manta and the Omni Slash? Level 15 already on this Juggernaut. You could say he was a Juggernaut. Yeah, I mean, he still is. Isla, I'm back in behind his own tower. The slight fist pushing this creep wave in. Leveling Evan on this support position five Batrider. It's almost the same as the em Ember Spearman. Uh, yeah, he's had a very active game for sure. Jamisil. Gonna try. Oh, Mage. Oh. oh, wow. He goes through the portal. He's gonna get chased by Wami. Yeah, Wami not decides not to, uh, not to follow up on But that him. was the Blink Dagger reveal. Yeah, Blink Gecko Saber up, of course. The uh, smoke now from Jordan as they go looking to try and defend this tower. Play. Uh, three oh, versus wow. Four. Hope your BKB's ready, bro. Rupture out. Okay, the silence. The root. Yes, that's a big kill on high. Elsewhere, the rupture's out on the Juggernaut. He's trying to make some space, get away from this. But look how low he is. Going into BKB. BKB, gets popped off. He tries to take down Flap. He's got to be quick. He gets the heal, nice, Omni Slash all up in his face though, not enough bodies going to follow up with him. Dremacel going to get that kill on Taz. Dremacel. Unfortunate. Wami trying to deal with the Enchantress, but they got the Pit of Malice there. Wami getting super low right now, Afrimush trying to juke him. Uh, now Wami the one who's trying to juke away. Dremacel chasing nice forward, Mage is in on top. Good it times for the silence, good times. Afrimush turning now for Dremacel. Mage is kind of baiting a thing now, but obviously Dremacel doesn't have much left at the time. BKB getting popped off, he tries to run away. Mage right on top of him, they got nothing to stop that, so just ignore it. But Dremacel, he's kind of down here by himself versus three heroes. Wami did his best in that team fight. He killed the Grimstroke without allowing him to use the ultimate and uh, then trying to keep Aphromush away, but Aphromush, it's such a hard hero to kill that uh, Untouchable, even though still level 1, does not allow the Night Stalker to get the kill onto the Enchantress. So Isla as well, Night with the Guardian Greaves online. Uh, so yeah, I mean, damage. Rupture did like 3,000 damage or so, or not even, but he did a lot of damage, but they weren't able to follow up on it because they went after the Rubik and so forth. I think if he pops his BKB a little bit earlier, he's in a, he's in a slightly better situation there. But you, when you are in a 7k gold lead during nighttime and you barely trade equally, it, it's it's not the best of looks for Indonesia. What well, Dramasol able to solo, the, uh, with, the, with the help of the healing ward, able to solo the Tormentor, so Hyde getting a little bit of an upgrade there. There's a Wisdom Rune to be collected as well, 21 minutes. They get a hold of Aphromoosh here. Can they bring him down? He's close to the TP. Oh, uh, nice garbage. swing chains. Good job, garbage. Almost got the TP off, and then it would have felt kind of bad. You've used your lasso for nothing. But yeah, yeah. Oh, the Juggernaut now 4K ahead of the Bloodseeker. Orb of Corrosion will get finished on the Ember Spirit, minute 22. Uh, <laughs> very, very odd sentence to say right now, but uh, let's talk a bit about the Enchantress build. Dragonlance into drums, not the first four staff first. Uh, he just wants the extra range, right? Uh, the four staff, I think I would have preferred the four staff. So would I. Uh, you uh, gotta she's help still an team. intelligence hero, right? Yes, of course. So it, it gives her a damage boost as well. And obviously helping the team. Meanwhile, Isla getting dropped down bottom. Okay, Wami trying to come to the rescue here on the rest of the boys coming through. So Isla getting smashed because the rest of his team not going to be able to respond. What a yet. fight this There one. is a rupture available. Mage, though. Mage come in and hot. Um, the blood right on top. But Dremacel is straight to him for a shortcut with the Omni Slash. Question mark. And now they can poke at the T3s. No buybacks. That's a great seating change. The blade mill doing a lot of work. Lasso! The lasso Killing the back line. Bloodseeker. You know what? The four staff would have really helped there. 
That's Rax. Could be a team wipe. Yep. And it is. Indonesia showing up on the main stage. Mage? I mean, that that was all... Okay, you got an Isla kill, but it's all on the back of that Mage overcommit with the rolling in. All right, cool set of rocks down. They can't take anything else. Cause they're still tier two until tier, uh, tier they one up from they top They can definitely lane. take Roche. Mm, it could be a little bit risky with everyone up, though. You can TP in there now. They don't have a great vision situation right now. They will opt to go back for farm, building damage. Uh, yeah, spread across, uh, well, the entire board. Uh, only only Afrom was being significant on the side of the Radiant, but that was a uh, that was a big, big mistake coming in from the side of Radiant as they are trying to jump on Wami. No more wall. Uh, it's a pretty spicy kill if he can get it. He's, uh, he's worth a decent amount. Afrom is going to get that kill. It's going to give him a little bit more acceleration. He's uh, got the BKB finished up on the Night Stalker now. But uh, yeah, I mean, Jordan definitely feeling the sting of, uh, of that team fight for sure. Ooh, very narrow, almost catching that. 22,000 damage. Arbor is still down here though. So much damage dealt by that position five Batrider though. 14,500, second on the entire server. Yeah. He's done so well, actually. And this Ember Spirit uh, Blade Mail build has proven to be very, very successful for Garbage. Yeah, I mean, it feels like when he goes in, he pops the Blade Mail, there's not much they can do about it. Taz is going back for the Mjolnir now. Do I like this? Uh, I want to see maybe... Maybe Basher or something. Nighttime yet again, oh, another five minutes. forward here. Much aggression. This tier one tower being threatening on the seating chains. This Kachi two straight away. Taz pops off the BKB. Mage rolling in. The silence coming through. Garbage quick to dodge it. The back line. There's a little rupture action coming out. I don't feel sure who it was. It's going to be nice to get the spirit link out first. Garbage. He goes for the slight of fist. He brings down the Grimstroke. Falling back from BKB. Now the lasso pick up into the Omni Slash. Isla. Oh, it's Swift Strike. Holy moly. This Juggernaut's got himself an Aghanim Scepter already, it seems like. Well, me gets flashed down. Okay, in the meantime, Jemsel finds another kill. Double kill for garbage, though. And Jordan, an absolute shambles right now. Is Indonesia looking to defend the title? And like oh, it was an Omni Slash. It just didn't run very long. No, it was both an Omni Slash and a Swift Slash. What oh, was it? Swift Slash first onto the uh, Underlord, and then an Omni Slash on the last two targets. Ah, yeah. Uh, I just want to point that out. We've talked about the impact the supports have been having this tournament, and Hyde on this Batrider has been instrumental. Phenomenal play. Yeah. Gonna get another Tormentor. Oh, they're gonna steal the Tormentor, they're gonna rob it. I feel like uh, early target prioritization from the Bloodseeker may be costing quite a bit in this game. That might make sense, yeah. Those early ruptures used on the Batrider instead of the Night Stalker allowed... Uh, the Night Stalker to get ahead and yeah. the space for the, the Batrider to flourish afterwards. Isla with a Crimson Guard, Guardian Greaves. Uh, but this, this Ember okay, Spirit... Okay, Ember Spirit's going for a Nullifier. What next. is... My, what am I watching? A Nullifier. KB for the Night Stalker so as well. 27 minute items coming out now. They're looking to take the vision here and to get hold of the Roshan. 20k net worth up. Uh, Indonesia need to be careful Stop because it. there's a lot of value in there. Isla just getting absolutely hammered again though. Plus what did he even do there? I'm not sure. He pops off the BKB. He backs it all night up there. Now they go chasing after Aframush, who's surrounded by three heroes. And oh my god, her spirit's just out of there. He's like, no, no. I'm good. What an absolute statement from Dreamo Cell right now. Showing us why the experience. Oh, they're is still chasing this Earth Spirit Mage, trying to make space, trying to stop them from being able to take this Roshan. But you know what? They're going to get it anyway. Well, me chasing forward, hunting for Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit running for his life. Yeah, the darkness hasn't even been used because it's still nighttime. No, my word. Silence. Finally, catch him. He goes for the TPI, though. 
Wait. Oh no! He got your pit! <laughs> I thought garbage was there. Phenomenal play from Wami. Oh my word. Oh, unbelievable. And we will be looking at a 25k goal lead. Ages in hands of this ginormous this juggernaut. An incredibly difficult game for Jordan. Yeah, this is getting harder and harder as every single minute progresses. Goes for uh, the full Mjolnir. Taz he, has this he has got the shard as well picked up on the Bloodseeker. So. Taz managed to escape there yeah. by popping the BKB, but right now he's falling almost behind the Blood... Uh, Rubik has rupture, by the way. Oh, that's going to prove to be horrendous. Hyde. Hyde going in, looking for Isla one more time. He's got a Lotus on the Batrider. Phenomenal play from Hyde. Just going to de-word very nicely. Isla getting tagged. Glorification. They're going to hold back for now. One second till Air Spirit's up. Hitting the towers away. Nothing That's to not going to be a fear for Dremacell. Even uh, if it was, you can pop the Manta off. Another set of rocks getting ready to fall. Jordan. Beautiful reaction here. Melee will fall. Searing Chains coming in onto the Air Spirit. This is the last two jumping in! And they go for it, Mark Schur with the lasso. They pull up on Taz. Taz nice flashing up. Nice play from Ayla. Wami going through that back line. Taz Ooh. into the fight and murdered by Dramasos. Oh, that's going to be a godlike double kill for him. Now looking for Mage, make it a triple kill. Turn it around and there will be... Oh, Flappy gets it. Okay, fair enough. Still Maybe alive, Mage coming back, back in. Kick him in the base, in. kick him in the base! It's something. It's maybe the Aegis. No. He goes for another swift strike. He gets put back into the base. The Glimmer Keep protects low. him. Ah, oh, nice play. And the GG Good comes game. out for game one. Indonesia taking it with style. 29k net worth. And it felt like Jordan were hopeless there. Absolutely phenomenal performance from Indonesia. That goes 1-0 up in the series. But they still have one more map they need to win. Jordan right now with the backs against the wall, Chiefs. Uh, yeah, we saw Indonesia, they were feeling in good spirits, and we can tell why. They knew what they wanted. Uh, the Juggernaut pulled, coming out out of nowhere, not really played in this current meta, but proved that Dream Cell is an absolute monster on that hero. Yeah, I mean, he's an absolute monster on every hero. That's definitely correct. a standout performer for <laughs> Indonesia, but it's the rest of his team who have really shown up in this game. Hide. Hide. Wami. Yeah, unbelievable. And the, the, that bad rider support, though, getting the blink so early and the, the entire impact. And we saw bad rider earlier today, I think, uh, that went for the blink into an octarine. But just get the blink, four staff, and we saw the impact. Just get away one hero, and they're dead. I mean, we saw a similar thing from SE earlier on the five position uh, bat rider, right? Yes. These five bats are, uh, it's a whole new hero, it feels like. Yeah, this is a beast hero, and it's TI season. But the tempo, the tempo was really, really good there. They didn't ever really took their foot off the gas from Indonesia. They know they're in the lower bracket. They know they're fighting for their tournament lives, and boy, what a fight that they put up. Jordan, they've got a lot to think about in this short break. They're going to have to reset. They're going to have to think about things. Um, and maybe, maybe try to go think about the air spirit situation. Yeah, you know, I, I know I, that Mage hasn't really practiced much in the last week or two. Everybody else is prioritizing the air spirit, but if you're not comfortable on the hero, why would you do that yourself? Just let the teams that want to play it play it, and you go for your Linas, for your Invokers, oh, for I mean, your they Embers. Played a super good Alchemist before as well. And absolutely, well that that is a great shout. The Alchemist was absolutely amazing as. We will be going on a quick break, but when we're back, we might have the deciding map between Jordan and Indonesia. Stay tuned.
And we are back with the map two between Indonesia and Jordan here, live from Yash, Romania for the World Esports Championships. I'm Vlad Waxen, joined by none other than Jeeves, bringing you all of the action from these two formidable teams. Lower bracket, Jeeves, Jordan is one map away from going home empty-handed. Well, our spirit, no, uh, no, I mean, <laughs> this is a time that they're going to have to reset. I mean, most teams can handle taking one game down, you know, yep. they are probably aware that it wasn't going to be quite a smooth sailing when they saw the draft, when they, you know, the, the heroes they picked, they thought they would give it a go. Yep. Hopefully they, uh, they knuckle down and, you know, they try thing it up. It's a classic caster's curse. You know, we say, oh, 2 0. -oh. <laughs> For Jordan. Indonesia go, what? No, I no, don't no. think so. We are here to play, and uh, they've showed it. And uh, Dreamo uh, is playing like a man possessed, but hide at the same time on the support. Again, following up the trend of the tournament where the supports are shining, whatever they do. Afromush got his hands on the inch, but way less impactful than what we've been used to. So. I kind of saw that coming, though, like, yeah. because of the heroes that they have. Like you saw, there was no real time where she was uh, super evasive on the enchantress. They had plenty of things to deal with. That Night Stalker, in particular, uh, he can't really punch her too much. But uh, you know, I think it's his uh, his E is or his Q. Just when he throws on the um, the damage to her, it's like a instant damage, and it's something that she does not cope with well at all. I mean, yeah, if you've got Heart to ask or something. Yeah, fine, you can <laughs> absorb the damage, but Night Stalker got his Zags, Juggernaut got his Zags, and uh, they were just really, really well played. I mean, this is the best form we've seen from Indonesia all tournament. It feels yeah, like. absolutely. It feels like they're finally coming into their own, and including that Night Stalker pick, it was exceptional from Awami, showing us the, the possibilities that you can have if you pick a appropriate Night Stalker in the offlane. Had the uh, Echo Saber face with Double Embracer very early on, it took some time to get into the Blink Dagger, but it didn't even matter. At that point, he was making so much space across all of these areas of the map. And we all know how traditionally overwhelming Night Stalker feels during the nighttime, but Wami did that so, so well, cycling the Darkness Ultimate even during the daytime. Sure, of course. And uh, Bloodseeker, he had a pretty good lane CS-wise, yep. but as soon as first night hits, you know, Wami starts to bully him a little bit, and he's able to, like, actually move across the map. Uh, the rotations were really good. The counter rotations from uh, Jordan didn't work out so well. And honestly, the Underlord hero, he felt like paper the whole game. There was no point where he felt like particularly tanky. Even he had a, like a vanguard five minutes with Bracer. <laughs> they just they were going through him for a shortcut. Yeah, the focus target was impeccable, and Underlord was at the forefront of getting destroyed early on, not having the chance to use the Guardian Greaves, not having the chance to pop the Crimson, just being picked off instantly, silent, stun after stun, and that was it for the Underlord. Yeah, it didn't feel, uh, it didn't feel great. The roots were good. The roots were good. Um, like I think uh, one of the key kills, of course, was when the Night Stalker committed quite heavily. Um, it just so happened that the Afromush got the kill after he died. So he got the gold, but he didn't get the experience. And then the Bloodseeker died quickly afterwards, and he didn't get the gold. He committed his, his rupture for it. It's the first time he ruptured the Night Stalker, and it paid off. Yeah. But uh, he, didn't really, too late. he didn't really get the gold. He didn't really get the advantage out of it. Um, yeah, I felt like he needed to be rupturing the Night Stalker every time he saw him. Even earlier than that first option. At, at the start, you know, he used yeah. it a couple of times on Hyde before that, and Hyde was just like, hey, you know what, well, I'm just gonna stand still, I don't care if you kill me. Yeah. And then he weren't even finishing him off he, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then it was a really messy fight top, and I, the, it was just such a good rotation from uh, the Ember Spirit that came into the fight, and it just kind of got really messy. And Bloodseeker had the opportunity to get kills, and then again, he went in. He was like, uh, I don't know, 500 gold off of finishing the BKB for that fight. Uh, you finish the BKB first, then you're fine. And uh, let's look towards the next uh, set of pick and bans because one of the heroes that is slowly making a resurgence, at least here in Yash, is the Rubik. Uh, winning a couple of games today, and obviously, maybe the impact not being felt as much as we were hoping for, but uh, a couple of those pits being stolen, rooting uh, the opponent, dealing some of the damage, did pretty well in the laning phase. What, where would you put Rubik in the current meta as a support use? I mean, Rubik is always going to be relevant because it doesn't matter which other hero is super meta. Rubik is going to be able to steal some of the stuff. 
Uh, the Rubik play was really good, though. Like, obviously, um, you know, he's been playing as a support Ooh. here, and it's kind of worked out for them. Philippines, uh, sorry, Indonesia are an amazing... Uh, <laughs> that's such a stark contrast. Indonesia are in super high spirits, but Jordan have got their game faces on. They ban Nature's the Profit! Uh, yeah, they ban out the Night Stalker Gyro, and we get the Nature's Profit through Chen taken out. Eventual Spirit, no more Primal Beast. Dawnbreaker, Invoker, Gyrocopter banned out. Nature's Prophet, this hero is absolutely disgusting. Indonesia have managed to get it through. Well, I mean, what is the solution for this hero? Like that uh, Disruptor or uh, GG out? He, he TPs in, you just glimpse him? Okay, Jordan must have known this is what gonna, that's what's going to happen. Uh, if you don't ban the Nature's Prophet and the opponents have the first pick, they'll pick it. And that's what Indonesia is doing. And we've seen. This is the second Nature's Prophet already making uh, his way onto the stage. And uh, the first one dominated top to bottom. It was completely overwhelming. So Jordan will respond still with the Enchantress. I, I don't hate this. You've got to believe in your, uh, in your player. It's in the pool. Try to do as much as you can. Is it a direct hunter to the Nature's Prophet? No, not necessarily. But it can try to match some of the early aggressiveness and dominate a bit of the lanes. I mean, Nature's Prophet is such a difficult hero to uh, to match up versus. Um, and Jordan didn't look too happy when he saw it. It didn't seem like they actually had a plan for for the Nature's Prophet so far. I know how strong this Night Stalker is. Is it worth it of the first phase ban? Well, they're really kind of focused on... So they take out the Gyrocopter, which has just been an absolute thorn in the sides. They take out two of Wami's heroes, the Dawnbreaker and the Night Stalker. A lot of focus on there. Over the other side, Terrible. Terrorblade gone, wow. PA gone. Damn. Okay. This is looking very interesting right now, but Indonesia seems to be at the forefront of leading the direction of which this draft is going towards. I feel like PA would have been a pretty good answer to the Nature's Prophet because you can actually get on top of him before he gets away. I suppose they were afraid of what would have followed as counter picks. If you do get your Phantom Assassin as the first pick, it's quite risky. So they, uh, they at least take away the Bat Rider and they pick up the Tusk. So they get themselves the Snowball save. This is also pretty good for like uh, early aggression, uh, early early blood potential, but it's a good save, it's a good catch. Can escape from the uh, Sprout from the Nature's Prophet. It's quite good at getting a hand onto the Nature's Prophet. Maybe uh, Legion Commander, no? Legion Commander, I would love to see that. Uh, but Indonesia will go back to the Lich the second time today, and the Ember Spirit will not leave it in the pool for Jordan. Well, I mean, we saw the fantastic performance on the Amber Spirit earlier there, that, that previous game by Indonesia, so I have no qualms about that. Lich, of course, just makes everything more difficult with his, uh, the Frost Armor. Batrider will get taken out of the pool. We saw, we saw the phenomenal performance from Hyde. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, the you mentioned the ban earlier. But, yeah, looking at Jordan, Jeeves, what do you want to see them bring it to the table now? Uh, yeah, like I wouldn't mind seeing like a like a legion or something, just something that can get on the blink uh, on the back line of this nature's prophet. Obviously, he's gonna have treants. The uh, overwhelming odds could be a pretty good uh, could be a pretty good solution to the problem. Other than that, maybe something with an inherent blink or you know somebody who wants to build blink pretty fast, so they can get kind of uh, through that back line. Ember spirit trying to catch him. Um, I wouldn't have been, like I said, I, I would have quite liked the Disruptor. Disruptor, I'm a big fan of Disruptor, and I'll be honest, it works very well with the Tusk, uh, Inch as well, but if you do go for the Disruptor here... You can't, you can't get it in anymore. It's yeah, like you would, would have to run a Tusk there. core, which you said you wouldn't mind a Tusk mid laner just before we went into the draft, right? Very situational. Man. And I think it's not quite what made. You don't want to play it versus Ember. Yeah, it's your elimination game. And it's going to be another support, not the Disruptor, but it will be the Ancient Apparition. So we are going to run Tuscore, though. Or A mid. Oh, nonsense deadly. Um, yeah, OK, A, A mid would be pretty dirty, but I don't see it faces Roy. And right, now that's a hero that can catch both the Amber Spirit and the Nature's Prophet. Faceless Void, very good pickoff right here, and now it's a nice combo with the Ice Blast on top of the Chronosphere. Uh, Indonesia will be looking
looking very interesting at this pick, and uh, Jordan seems to be kind of picking some strap out of their pockets. They, they seem to be very, very confident in what they're doing, and if this is going to be a Tusk off lane, maybe, uh, Tag Team plus Ange is going to be very, very strong in the lane. Yeah, they'll definitely get some work done. They have to put it somewhere, of course. So. It's, uh, I mean, it's pretty good. Like, the snowball is going to get you in and out of trouble. The edge is going to give you some nice damage into the corners here. Oh, the Slardar. I mean, Indonesia slowly becoming my favorite team. Jeez, I've been, like, talking about the Night Stalker and the Slardar. They gave me the night. They had the win. Now Slardar as well. This is looking formidable from them, taking out all of the strong heroes here. But if this is a Tusk mid, would you like to see a Beastmaster on the offing alongside the Enchantress? No, I think... No, uh, okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I think uh, I think it's going to be... It's going to be Tusk offline, right? But uh, um, the Slardar versus the Faceless Void, I think the Slardar is going to beat the crap out of the Faceless Void. This, this Slardar is such a strong snowballer. If you can somehow dominate the first well, five minutes, and then build towards the items that you need. You can just run down pretty much everybody on Jordan's side. Yeah, I mean, it feels a lot like the Night Stalker in that regards. Uh, similar item build up as well, to be honest. Um, they did like the Pit Lord, but I think this time the Pit Lord is Wonder Lord is way stronger because uh, Nature's Prophet has the global presence and you want to do everything in your power to stop them from yeah, getting... It sort of allows you to chase backwards and forwards. They get rid of the PL, they get rid of the Naga Siren. Uh, PL, pretty good versus, um, I mean, both of these heroes are illusion heroes, though, so I don't know whether I'd have focused on banning them, especially when I the face is void. Wait, Legion? I heard the Legion ban, right? We both no. heard the Legion. No, I heard that, that was uh, Dawnbreaker, but I don't know why the voice line came at this point. Impossible, that's Dawnbreaker. Oh, that's some high quality voice acting right there, Jeeves. But yeah, uh, Legion Commander still in the pool, and you said it. You want to see it still? Nah, it's nah, I don't. <laughs> I don't like it with a Slardar. Oh, I think it would be hilarious. Slardar <laughs> would just ramp up with some damage from the minus Legion armor. Duo. He's seeding chains, then he gets gazed. That's, That's no, fabulous. No, 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 fabulous. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm trying to look at what other heroes would be here for Jordan, but it, it depends who is going to be core and in what position from the Ench Tusk and Ancient Apparition, as we will get an Indonesia with a Templar Assassin. And Safe lane TA for Dramasaur. <laughs> One of his staple heroes. Again with the impossible. Uh, and obviously the OD. <laughs> OD ban early on, and I don't really like TA dispatch, but... OD is actually would have been a sick pick. It's great versus Nature's Prophet. You can actually shut down the Slardar when he comes in. Other than the station Ancient Apparition, TA currently has a pretty free game. Yeah, until uh, Faceless Void gets online, until Enchantress gets online, it feels difficult to deal with what she's got there. I wouldn't mind seeing some sort of... Uh, Lash Rack or something to try and deal with that. Lash Rack would work like miracle here. Even maybe a Death Prophet to some extent, but the Lash... Oh, I like the Death Prophet actually as well. I think uh, maybe Death Prophet... Well, they both have some legs, right? Yeah. They're both quite quite fast heroes. I think that would be very, very good. Well, Death Prophet is flying, so... She doesn't uh, actually have... Well, she yeah, she doesn't, she's not using her legs. And it's the Alchemist for Mage bringing it out in this elimination game. And he has all the tools needed to nullify the Acid Spray onto the Templar Assassin. It's yep. amazing. Yep. It's scales way faster than uh, obviously the support for Furion. The stun out of nowhere onto the blink, well, blink stun onto garbage. How could we forget about this, Jeeves? You mentioned it in game one. Oh, I didn't forget about it. I just didn't want to get them a ban it, you know? Oh, you <laughs> thought it could maybe read your lips through the webcam. <laughs> right, so we got, I mean, we got this. This is a pretty good solution. It gives them some rouge potential as well. And um, it's a Tusk offlane. And a Tusk offlane, I think. Uh, That's a strong lane, Tusk, Ench. So the idea is Mage is going to create space and he's going to buy time to get this Faceless Void online. And it's such a good solution, actually, for uh, Dremacil. You can get an early AC, um, which is going to counter what uh, Slardar wants to do. The problem here, though, is Indonesia's early Roche potential. It's and their minute 12 to minute 28 dominance. Yeah, mid game is in your hand, but it's all on mage to try and shut that down. I think you will try your best to abuse the Furion and the Nature's Prophet and the Lich here with the Tusk Enchantress because 
when this Templar Assassin gets level 3-4, there's not much more you can do to her. This te the tempo is going to be pretty sick. Break it down, we got Aphromush Enchantress, Isla on the Tusk, Nagato on the Physician 5 Ancient Apparition, Taz on the Faceless Void, and Mage, of course, on the Alchemist. And for the side of Jordan, we have a bunch of players playing, playing a bunch of heroes, including Dremusel on his uh, Templar <laughs> Assassin, Hyde on the Nature's Prophet, uh, and the same Ember Spirit that we saw in Game 1, the Leech uh, on the Position 5, and last but not least, it will be the Slardar offlane coming in from Indonesia. Do you think it's enough to hold back this Indonesian tempo? I think if there is someone that can bring it back in a hero combination, it has to be Mage the Alchemist. So I want to see a Game 3. Yash, let me know if you want to see a Game 3 as well. Make some noise for Jordan. Or if you want, uh, you know, just the reigning champions to keep going in the tournament, Indonesia to take this 2-0, make some noise for Indonesia. Ooh, big Indonesia favorites then. Uh, let's get into it. Both teams smoked up, moving down the map, and oh my word, <laughs> where are Indonesia <laughs> going? They're on an adventure. Um, this is like the Monkey King play when you go there and you get, uh, kill the couriers, level up one. Yep, yep, that was, a, that was a pretty sick ward, by the way. I like that, I like that. Okay, Nagato might be on the receiving end on this game. Oh gang. no, it's Mage. No, he's on the low ground, he's fine. Is he? Garbage will place the observer. Mage is spotted. I think he should be fine as long yeah, as they're, he's okay, the they're all good. They're all good. I don't know if Aphromush is good as he's going to spot five heroes his way right now. I love with a shard block. Though Dremusel actually kind of held back. Aphromush running for his little life here. Nice stun on two to hold some back. Dremusel suddenly in a bit of a pickle. Isla trying to follow up on things, but things are all very slowed up. Nagato here all over Wabi. the place here. Isla's Wabi. the first to fall. Mage is backing out. He doesn't want anything to do with stun on two. And, and it's a disaster! The garden falls. Okay. They do find a little kill back on garbage, though. Offer which brings one back for Jordan, but like an exact opposite of the uh, the start we had last. Taz is not safe. Taz is not safe. He's got time walk soon. Not well, really. Ten seconds. He's one more right dead. click is dead. He's gone. Wow. And oh no 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 no! Kato. <laughs> not like this. Double kill on the leech, and I think those were three sprouts in the span of 40 seconds, and that's why you don't let Nature's Prophet go through. Perfectly balanced hero. As in all oh, things. look at this, Nagato. He's going to die on himself to the tower here. No, not Nagato, it's the Lich. Puppy. Yeah. Two white guys, uh, old white guys together. Yeah, very icy in this Yash heat from Romania, but... Yeah, so far so good for Mage. Already five last hits in, that's, that's a lot. Six last hits, minute one. What, what's happening? Uh, he is, uh, he's dropping a lot of pressure. This, suck, this lane sucks uh, for, the for Ember. Yeah. Yeah. Nice stun from Wami, but will not... Uh, let Taz get the deny on the range group. I mean, this is probably one of the few heroes that's going to be able to at least get himself out of trouble versus a Slardar. Nine Mage uh, feeling a little bit of pain from uh, Garbage, but the Acid Spray goes out, and uh, he should catch up on Ember, though, CS wise. I do love myself the Alchemist, but I do have to say that uh, corrosive uh, armor coming in from the Slardar is very painful on the Alchemist. The corrosive haze? Yeah. yeah. You need to go for like uh, phase boots into AC. Not like sec, like maybe second <laughs> or third item, not like the first item. Mage is just gonna hit garbage away. No, he's quite happy. He's gonna just chill out here. He's got the ball. He's gonna head down here, get a nice water, refreshing, uh, nice refreshing water. What do you think the name change for uh, garbage uh, just in mid tournament? Oh, he's been garbage the whole tournament. Well, okay. Well, until today. Now he's pretty good. Afromoosh. <laughs> Again, Hyde is here. TP is in with a sprout. Someone in the audience, please tell me, why is Nature's Prophet not banned? Uh, maybe they forgot about it. I, I, it does feel that way. Nagato right. going to get stunned. Wami. Slapping, happening. Good sprout action. Actually, Wami's still going to try and chase this one down. Ooh, good bash. Bash, yeah. Ooh. Oh, things gonna. This is the lane now. Oh no, he turns back, gets the bash on the other way. Wami going low, nice, nice bash. Off. Wami getting super low, and yeah, Good nice trade. play from Nagato. He gets the kill on Wami, but uh, Hyde now uh, he's uh, he's looking to be position uh, position three Up top. He will sell. Yep, this frost armor shredding through off from Mushes and Chalice. Oh, that was a sick play off the side blade. And that's what we said, this Tusk Edge can only pressure the support. You can't do anything to this Templar Assassin once she hits that level 3. Very, very tough, but uh, 
Mage, maybe the only silver lining going on in the favor of Jordan right now. Down three to six, minute three. We'll try to go for the bounty rune because all of the water runes have been taken stolen. Yeah, uh, he actually went for a bottle very early on as well, which is a little bit unusual, but uh, he wants to be able to control the tempo of the mid lane. Will not miss any cre creeps. He will get the XP from the melee one. Taz, trying for hide here. And, uh, no bashes though, Gaben. He is uh, watching, but not smiling. Medallion already on this Nature's Prophet. <coughs> that's, uh, that's a minute three medallion, yep. And uh, Tusk working his way towards an urn, but still got quite a bit to go. Maybe another hundred. Oh, he's got it. Okay. So, not too shabby. Garbage standing in the acid here. Mage. Nobody in the concoction. Very nice proc right before the slide <laughs> of this comes off. Of a little ground. fortification, though, just to be, uh, you know, a little bit vexing. Aphromoosh level Floppy one. Waiting, though, by the Aphromoosh way. level one. Mage is really low HP. Uh, the TP's nice coming TP from hide. hide. And this is exactly what the Nature's Prophet does so well. Waits for you to go for a rune and then comes in and ganks your mid laner. That was two supports that just killed the mid laner, though. That is a level one position four enchantress versus a level four position four Nature's Prophet. And uh, I mean, Garbage is able just to chill in the mid lane, you know? Yeah, this like, is... It's all right, guys. Thanks very much. Taz, 19 last hits on this Faceless Void, 20. Doing pretty well for himself. Mage will probably... Oh, allow. nice dodge. Yeah. He has his level 5, though, at least on the Alchemist. You know? Level 6 will be coming soon. Rolling in. Yeah, a little so. snowball action. Can they do anything about this, though? The shards are still available. Okay, this could be... No. He's, he's going to turn it around now. He's getting kind of low, though. Yeah, he's well, okay, they get him. Uh, Nagato, as soon as he hit that level 3 and got the point in the Chilling Touch, plus the Ice Vortex, that is a very nice way, an easy way of breaking the Templar Assassin. I mean, they had three heroes beating on her as well, so... So uh, I always say when I'm playing Alchemist, as long as I don't die more than three times in lane, I'm gonna have a good time. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't follow that in your pubs, kids. No, Just it's don't fine. die at all. Yeah, I mean, obviously, don't die. But like, even if you do die, his recovery is very quick. How is this Nature's Prophet higher than Wami in level? Now he's got both gonna hit level four. Oh, I mean, you're about to see why he's about to uh, try for another kill in the Gato here. A little cold uh, feet going out though, and uh, high one to bash. Okay, still alive. but guess what? Here's Flappy. He's rotated over here to try and make the situation a lot better. Hide is worth a lot of money. The Gato coming in from the side. Can he find a right click? Yes, yes he can. can. Woo! We'll, we'll trade his life, but yeah, you're very I happy. mean, but worth it, worth it, absolutely worth it. Yeah, as a, a, any single moment when this Nature's Prophet is dead is a moment of happiness. Garbage the will have to The only problem is, now that he's dead, he's kind of like a free agent. You know, as soon as he respawns... What is happening on the Slardar? Slardar? Building Treads Midas, picking both the gloves of haste early on. Very interesting. Uh, Taz right in with some dashes, but like okay, you said, the free time. agent is here. Back. He's, I mean, he's supposed oh, to be oh. here. That's fine. Turning back in here. Nice use of the uh, wand. He actually already has a Lotus as well. The double the double uh, gloves of haste. The extra attacks. We build up those four stacks for the instant bash. Flappy is here as well, tanking the tower. Okay, Nagato, the gaze coming back down here, but Flappy made a bit of a mistake here, so he's going to take a hell of a lot of punishment. Uh, good effort. Oh good my effort. word, Zeus ult now. A cold wind blows truly through this evening in Yash. 1k gold league, 10 to 5, and 15 kills in 7 minutes. A yeah. very bloody start, uh, two, 2 2.1 kills per minute so far, 2.2 kills. This Enchantress has been impactless compared to this Nature's Prophet again. Yep. Second time today this is coming through the draft and we see why everybody else is banning him. On CS wise, Alchemist is ahead but he's been hitting up some jungle camps, garbage in behind it, cutting some creep waves here. Half from Rush trying to come over here. Oh, they got this, the Alchemist alt running here, a little slow. Up That's to the high happens. ground, a little juke out the other way, but Stop. surprise! Punch. Isla was Concoction. ready for that. Looking for a little bit more here as he tries to juke Whoa. down to the low ground. The snowball's chasing him, the shards, can he catch him before he gets up to high ground? Yes siree! The iron running on him now as well, you need a little bit of follow-up, but down time Taz is it's getting alone. bashed up by Wami under his tower. A TB across from Hyde, make sure that kill happens one more time. Nagato comes in and secures a kill back the other way on Wami, but guess what? He's TPing to his death one more time. Oh, 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 he's still 
gets away. 74 HP, and away he goes. Floppy, this is a very, very speedy lead. Oh, though. Floppy. <laughs> Yeah. And the dunk, and the dunk! He's toast, he's yes. toast. Beautiful dunk into impetus coming in from Afro Mush, but that guard, this, this player, he's not garbage, I can tell you that much. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it says right there, gar garbage. <laughs> okay, nice we got a little, a little replay here. They were so close to, uh, to making this happen. Let's follow this one up here, the shards come through. Follows up, where is Mage? He's on the high ground still. Still level six. Earn off, and he can't do anything about it, it's unfortunately. And Taz did very well down bottom. Tried to turn around and kill the slug, but he was very unlucky. No bashes going his way. In the end, losing his life. The TP coming in late, but 12 7. And when you're running an alchemist and you're not top network chiefs, this is not a good side for the mid late game. So the only thing I can say about that is it's less than 1k net worth difference. And the alchemist, he's not that far ahead of the rest of his team. So the big danger comes when the Alchemist is hugely ahead of his team, and he's all of the net worth on the team. Isla, though, ready for this. Garbage came in. He wanted to give it a little poke. And he used up that uh, shield and backs off again. Taz doesn't really want to fight. He has a full creep wave this under his tower. This glitch is doing so much, though. Lappy. Again. In, there, in the outside lines there. He's going to get brought down, though. Tactical feat. Yeah, I mean, they moved heroes down there. Uh, oh, the Primo Cell. Yeah, this he's is a dead. really good situation. No dust, no dust. I mean, he's melting, he's melting. Well, he's not I'm melting fast enough. I'm melting, I'm melting. There you go, unleashing the Fury now. He's going to try and back it up. They get punch. the punch, throw the shards ready to follow up on it, and it's all over for Dramo Cell there. That was a very necessary kill. Going the favor of Isla, Dreamo Cell getting out the server will hopefully uh, get Mage into the top of the net. So Chrono there's bottom. the first Chrono, and there's a double damage though on the no! Ember's Burrito, no! and they lose it, and here comes Garbage to chase up. He didn't even need to make that rotation though. You know and, I mean? and that was on the back of the Wraith, Nature's Wrath coming in from the Nature's Prophet. So much damage, Void gets stunned, bashed, dead. Yeah, just hide things on the uh, on the Nature's Prophet. All right, they go in here, and Mage, he's, uh, he's got some ancient stacks. That's going to put him back into contention. So far away from his radiance. But uh, he, will, he, he should go ahead on that network here. Using the ultimate. T1 mid going to probably disappear with this uh, Temporal Assassin being present. Okay, they're going to use the fortification to buy a little bit more time for Mage to get done with what he's doing there. And he goes up, uh, he's, he's top of the bus for net worth now. Kind of where he wants to be. I think the fastest radiance we saw this uh, game was uh, at this tournament. tournament. It's been like uh, 10 minutes or so. So It's pretty far behind for your average alchemist. And uh, now he did farm and got back into it. But now look at Dreamo. So he's going to do some catch up of his own with all of these six uh, triangle stacks. Yeah. And you can see how quickly he can get make his way, work, way through those. He's looking for an early desolator. And this is a tusk support. And we talked about this. This draft in particular from Indonesia from 12 to about 28, 30 minutes, it's just going to dominate this mid, this mid game. This is not a core tusk. He's definitely, like, you could have these items pretty much in a position for support. Wami, okay. going to run away. Uh, the AA Blast actually going to connect. Nice Hide enough. Here. High TP into the box. Like garbage is, is here. Floppy is here. Wami's still alive. Wami will fall. Here's Mage though. He's running the stun. He's trying to find the target. Going on high. The perfect target actually. If you ask me, the chain frost coming back the other way. A little bit icky off. Romush, if you could back up. Thank you very much for that chain. That, that, that ice. That would be great. But Dream also is here as well. Mage is dead. You got a little snowball save. They go in, try and get another kill down before that happens. Floppy to fall. Now Dramacell. Looking for an option here. This is Spirit Vessel running on Isla. Afrimush. Afrimush is toast and so is Isla. Oh no. Yeah. Double you. kill for Dramacell, double kill for Garbage. You got a double kill on your Alchemist, but you lost four of your teammates. And this Faceless Void is looking like he's not about to have a game. Uh, he's about to get bashed by Roman. Uh, Nagato's here though, this could help a bro out. No Here's the rotation from Garbage, the seating chains, high TPing in. Bam bam, thank you mom. And Nagato just food at the moment. It's a little ice pop. Mage running, but the seating chain is going to catch him beautifully here. He's going to try and back down over the hill here. And they've got some nice vision coming out from the TA all over the place. Isla gives a quick bottle refill though. 
no Radiant still. Mage has been trying to join his team. He knows he needs to help them because they're so on their level and on their farm, but he doesn't have the Radiance yet. Okay, a little bit of enchant, a little bit Barbage. of... Uh, Barbage. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. The Remnant coming very slow. He's dead. One more Maybe hit. The blast. A blast. Oh, Kaboom. there it is. That's huge for Nagato to actually get some something off of this map. After was pretty fearless in front of Wami, gotta keep on pursuing with the sympathy. Yeah, watch for the gaze, watch, watch for the frost blast, we'll pull him back. Mage, Mage is coming there. running in with a stun. This is actually a pretty good setup if they can get up to the high ground. He goes charging in there, one punch, two punch. Hide, he sees that TP. TP actually cancelled. All he needed to do was threaten it. To, this, is, this is a level 11 alchemist. He pooped his pants. This position, five Nature's Prophet, is uh, 500 net worth above the opponent carry Faceless Void. Yeah. Uh, we do have the full Radiance up for Mage now. It's a minute 14. Maybe this could stem the flow a little bit. And you are getting dominated by a Threads Midas Slaughter. He did not go Echo Saber, he did not build a Crimson, not a Blink Dagger. He just have a Mida. He just runs at you. Yeah, I mean, he went for uh, the Double Gloves of Haste. So, he, like, he can't get those four stacks up for the Guaranteed Bash Qu pretty quickly. Uh, threads done on the Enchantress of Aphromoosh. He's doing, a lot, doing lots of damage, but he is only a support. Desu is up on the Dremosol right now. And another 1k in the bank. We've seen a different TA earlier today going for that blink into Shard very early on to have the global silence and multiple traps. Yep. Uh, Nagato and Tusk trying to initiate something, but this Tusk is so... A little so sneaky poor. peeky, and it's hide that they're actually going to find here. Okay. I don't... Yeah, they don't have division. The well, they have division. Well, they the do now. Okay. A A blast Damage. on top, a little punching, downtown you go and high. That is the that's exactly why they picked the task there though. You can see you can get in on top of it. Now trying to bring down this tier one tower top to try and even things up. Ember Spirit once again cutting the creek wave bottom, making sure that pressure's coming. I don't think they can really fight here. Aphromoosh is in the mid lane, he's vulnerable there. Midas Javelin for the faceless void okay, alongside the threats. Interesting Nagato Isla play. Yeah, they've got low cooldowns on the Walrus Punch and the Ice Blast. Uh, they're trying to play together as much as possible. After Moosh gets spotted by... He's uh, just trying to soak XP right now and get set up. You see Nagato there and they're thinking maybe oh. not. After Moosh taking an absolute pasting this here. Not Mega a TP's coming in though. The Chain Frost unleashed at just the right time. Taz goes through that back line. He's got, a, he's got a Chrono for the boys. Mage plus uh, Taz can still fall forward here. Good silence though, coming back the other way. Those traps, that shard doing all the work. Mage to fall. And again, Jordan worked. are absolutely struggling here. This is. There's some, another 15 minutes of this. This is some of the most impressive Dota Jordan we've seen from Indonesia since last year, maybe. I think they've been saving strats for the lower bracket. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. This has Look been at these TPs coming in here. The chain frost is absolutely perfect. It bounces off the creeps. It catches the two guys TPing in. Yeah, Taz doesn't feel confident enough to throw the Chrono in the air up onto anyone. And this is where Mage just goes. Boom. Searing chains, crit, last hit. The minus armor of that Desolator slicing through just a meager phase boot action. And they're looking for a blade mill next on top of uh, the Ember Spirit one more time. And look at this straight into the Roche Pit. 16 minute Roche. It's gonna melt. Yeah, yeah, they're ready for this for sure. That corrosive haze as well coming in from the slaughter. Yep. So much damage. Corrosive like haze, desolator, on melt, uh, strike. It's all uh, minus armor. You, sh you see how quickly they go through it. Yeah, natural counter. Oh, they have a solar crest as well oh, and a full crimson uh, guard. My solar crest and a full crimson guard right now on this next problem. Oh, this could be something. There's though. a remnant. Ah, no. uh, oh, from Rush getting melted by the spirit vessel. Down to 60 HP, we'll have to go back and recompose 400 gold away from finishing that Dragon list. But we're looking at an Aegis for 5 minutes, 10k gold in minute 25, 11k gold lead. Oh and my god. <laughs> armor of destruction as well for warming for extra minus armor. This might be and an all hell mirror. Void right? is having an absolute nightmare of a game. He only has the job in Midas. This, this is this might be a hell mirror play, honestly. They might be trying to use a Chrono and get a few kills if they can. Do they don't even have the damage to kill anyone through a Crimson Guard? I mean, they don't want to go on Dremacil, he has an Aegis. Aegis to being, and they Alright, all right. there we go, that's a pretty good uh, Chrono actually right there. The follow up. Trying to come through the back line, he bashes, he smashes, the garbage is still alive. That Blade Mail, he pops it off, now Mage being surrounded by five, and this is over. I mean, I mean, this is... 
Yeah. Oh, Hyde with a triple Ooh. kill on the Nature's Prophet. This is, again, a position five. Of course, it's not a position five. We see the items he's got. But Nature's Prophet making his way through the, uh, the draft. Jordan thought they could counter it, but did you really want to take the, lay, the, the risk when you're 0-1 down in your elimination match? What happened here? The, the, look at this. Wami Slard gets the bash on two with his, sla with his you know, slam, and then he gets one on the right click. Garbage gets out of that alive, which is unbelievable. And, I mean, they threw everything in the kitchen sink, and it just wasn't enough. Now they're just going to bring down this tower, even through backdoor protection. The, the creep wave's here. This tower's gone, so... Officially, the Nature's Prophet has overtaken the Alchemist. Aphromush, not long for this world, again, I mean, dominating. Uh, it's over. Like, I, what, your Nature's Prophet's ahead of the Alchemist, mid? By 600 gold, uh, well, 19 Jordan, minutes into the game. I, I would like to see the win percentage. Does, does the algorithm think there's any 1% chance for Jordan to come back into this, or are we looking at the beginning well, it's not the beginning of the end. It's the actual. I'm going to say. I'm going to say this is a 98 percent. Right I now. think it's at 100 percent. Spirit vessel on the out. One he's, bash. He's dead. So it was They're toying with him to right now. They space. are toying. They're with getting him. chased by him by Wami. He eats his way through the trees here, but Wami following up nicely. And now the TP from high. Not like this. He looks for a TP out of himself. He's toast. In fact, I think he stunned himself there. Another kill going in a favor of the Ember Spirit that has played very, very well. 17,000. Hey, yeah, they got a D Ward. They got a D Ward. They have the Maelstrom onto the Faceless Void. Finally, level 12, double point, and that Chronosphere will get 13 now. 800 gold away from the Yasha. That is going to scale his attack speed. Uh, 45 for the T3s being used right now. Still two minutes on the Aegis. Shard looking purchased. looking for heroes, but there's no heroes there. <laughs> Shard purchased on this Templar Assassin. Now the trap's silence as well. Looks All right, so they get a hold of Nagato. They throw a little damage down on top of garbage here. The blade mail is going to sting a little bit. Maybe they can do something here. They, Nagato's uh, almost dead. In the back himself to safety. A little AA blast on top could be quite tasty here. Which stuns himself somewhere in the distance. Really clean play from Indonesia as they back off before things get a little bit too sticky for them. They may have a massive advantage right now, but that means there's a huge amount of gold can go the other way if they do slip up. And they are not slipping up right now. Yeah, we got the uh, almost enough money for Yash. Like Gosmer Cave coming out for the Tusk. Could be quite instrumental. Might keep him alive if a mail strike misses and you still have more than 20 HP. That might be very crucial for the Tusk, but uh, the Tusk, it, it was a core, just in case you were wondering, geez. Uh, the Leech is about to overtake the Tusk as well, and the Silence, Stun, Bim, Bash, Boom, that is it from Taz in this world. Yeah. They'll get a kill. Okay, they take down Floppy. It's a high value target. <laughs> <laughs> Gosmer Cape! Not gonna save him. Nagato. Nope. Nagato, Nagato dead. dead. No, he gets out. He gets out. Not enough damage. Guess what? Oh, they'll come looking for Aphromush and they go straight through him. No problemo. 19,000 gold lead. And I think this is, this is impressive in so many levels. Yeah, still have a 10 minutes of ascendancy on this Templar Assassin. Up to the high ground they go. They're going to try to move straight to the bottom lane, take out these rocks, the fortification, holding them back for a few seconds. Chrono will be back in eight seconds when the Faceless Void is alive. This will be the final stance. Jordan will put everything in this, or Indonesia will move on further in the tournament. All right, the Aegis will expire. This is their timing. It's this now or never. Opportunity. We've seen miracles happen before. Can they happen right here in Yash? Let's Indonesia, see. though, very patient, very so patient. cautious. They are aware of what exactly hangs in the balance here. And Indonesia starting to look a little bit like a dark horse themselves. They are showing us why they have won this title previously. I can't believe this net worth on this Nature's Prophet, my dude. All four heroes. Uh, above the alchemist of all humans. And they're going to start hitting away. We'll get the Tormentor. We'll go to Aphromoosh. I think you were more happy with the Faceless Void somehow getting it. I mean, it's not the top bottom two network, but you could have I mean, he's pretty close, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
finally this leech is uh, falling down in network, but still Ninja's Prophet on top of this Alchemist. This is not Ooh, Daedalus finished up by the way. Desolator with 12 stacks on BKB it. BKB on Slardar. Slardar's got this orb of destruction. There's so much minus armor coming through here. Almost a full hover finished up on top. Taz of does Amber's have Yasha now. We'll get level 15 maybe. No, probably not. Uh, as he's potted, look at the slaughter to ping behind the Taz. Taz yep, is coming for him. And it's solo, he doesn't even care. He, he thinks he can take him solo. Let's go. Probably can. Yeah, he I think so. Okay, Taz. He he's coming in, but look at the rotation. Ember is already yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, Hyde is there as well. He's ready to drop down on top of him. He actually gets That's a beautiful strike afterwards. Oh, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, kind of desperate, kind of sad, but it's fine. Isla tried to come in and help him for a while, but they already marked him down. One hit bash this time with Taz, make it two, now he's toast. Amber getting controlled under the tower here. Double buy back through, coming through. Taz, he's still alive, by the way. Almost made it into the base, but he does fall in the end. Walmy getting shard blocked up here. Aframush looking for a way in, but realizes there's a cliff there. <laughs> I, I don't think Aphromoosh was looking for a way no, in. I think Aphromoosh is looking for a way to, <laughs> a way, a way to the high ground. <laughs> we saw in Earth's very last game, and a kick to the fountain was the last resort. Mm. What is the last resort here? Uh, the GG? No, uh, <laughs> so we got Grobu out on the Templar Assassin for even more range. Alchemist. The Nature's Prophet, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chiefs. The Nature's Prophet has, is the second spot net worth only behind Dream of Cell currently. I mean, this is a fair and balanced hero. A balance in all things. And I, what I would like to say, though, is the Alchemist has actually managed to surpass the Ember Spirit on that one. Finally. So, uh, uh, silver linings. Chronosphere up for in about for seconds. for Slarder. He wants to, uh, he wants to get this, this slip and slide on the go. A little splash party. Halbert mm -hmm. completed on the Ember Spirit, so if you're hoping to get any right clicks in, you're oh, streaming. Punch, blink it. away from Dream Cell. Stun! Walmy with a counter plate. Now the Ember Spirit comes in. He causes three of them here. Aframush is melting. Nagato goes down. Now they no go look for a little bit more. Isla gets pulled back in by the gaze. And now it's just Mage and the uh, Taz alive. Aframush with a buyback. They do throw a little bit of damage down here, but another slight of fist. Ooh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mage dying in the fountain. Dream of Cell. You madman! Oh my word. 45 seconds on the sideline for Alchemist on Tusk. And another uh, full set of rocks to fall. Shard. Oh, the Shard doing a little tiny, tiny, sh small, ducinal bit of work there. Oh my god, so just murdering people on the kill. block line. He's like, yo guys, could you buy back so I can get a rampage? Hitting away, left, right, and center. Tier 3 goes down, Rax will go down. Already one hit dealt to the tier 4s. I think they're just gonna play with it. They will go get the tier 3 top as high, they will claim that. Jordan with one final fight in this. Maybe against Megas. 30,000 gold deficit at the 26 minute mark. All four of, well, three of the cores and one of the supports. And topping the network. Chart. Indonesia, that, that break earlier has definitely given them more than enough respite to take this fight. Guard to 2k net worth lead, 15 to 42. Toying with their food right now, but still very calculated. Oh, it's so clean as well. They're being so ultra yeah. careful. They're not getting Yeah, there we go, there we go. There still we go. The 1%. Percent. 1%, yep. It, I feel like it's been 1% for 16 minutes well, now. Well, uh, the boat doesn't really do 100%ers anymore. It, mm -hmm. We were it's, it's very rare you see the 100%. Indonesia sure. not throwing anything. They're probably waiting for the Roche, who's going to spawn up top in 30 seconds. Not going for any crazy rapier plays. This uh, Nature's Prophet with his lead, building a solar crest on top of a pipe, on top of a crimson. Still very, very okay, here we calculated. Go. And uh, play. Smoke up. this could change everything. Actually, this Roche timing is absolutely Phenomenal perfect for Jordan right now. Uh, can they make it happen? The hey, hey, Wami. Wami's ready to break the smoke though, he blinks away. He go in, they go for the Chrono, they only get the Amber Spirit and he's actually he's dying, dying to the flame guard! Oh, okay, yep. Mage is GG, dead. my friends, GG. Good Mage effort. Decay. Yep, well played. Wow, well Indonesia with a 2-0. The uh, reverse to what we expected, and oh my god, well played Indonesia, really amazing execution, so careful, commiserations to Jordan, they yeah. couldn't quite make it happen here on the main stage today.
But, uh, Very well anticlimactic, done. but still the reigning, defending, undisputed champions in Indonesia making a run for the lower bracket here, Jeez, and they're one step closer to defending their title. Yo, guys, make some noise for Indonesia! Yeah, they seem like this was a nice walk in the park, phenomenal performance from them, and obviously Jordan did an amazing effort this entire tournament, but sadly tonight was not their night, as they will be going home just with the top six. I, I mean, they can still be pretty proud given the level of, of competition that they faced against here. Um, uh, yeah, phenomenal play, phenomenal play. And we were right, it was a 2-0 <laughs> for sure that we were And uh, Jeeves, right I'm, I'm, thing. I'm just gonna assume we know who the MVP is. So I'm gonna allow myself to invite him for an interview. We will be getting Hyde in a post-match interview to tell us about how can you be so impactful as a support. You just pick Nature's Prophet. What oh. about first map? Or Bot Rider. Rider. Okay, exactly. okay, okay, okay. So Hyde's gonna come up here. We're gonna, we're, uh, they're just having a quick team photo and then we'll uh, we'll have an interview for you guys. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm, I'm stunned. I'm at a loss for words. Indonesia looked pretty, pretty inconsistent throughout the group stages, but now after losing the first upper bracket series, they are making me believe. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see them tomorrow you know, doing pretty well for sure. Um, I, I mean, after a performance like that, I mean, pe teams have to look really carefully about what they're banning out. There's no way anyone can let Nature's Buffet through again in this tournament though. Like for, for sure, 100%. But it doesn't matter, like you, you didn't get Nature's Buffet game one and it wasn't a problem. Yeah, and now they broke into the top four. This is uh, going to be their moment to keep on going. We will find their opponent just tomorrow. But absolutely stunning performance from both of the teams. Uh, Jordan will make it to the top six. Great performance from either side. But still, man, why did they give them the nature's profits? And they thought they could beat it. I thought the task was a pretty good answer, honestly. I would have, I would have, would have maybe have quite liked the uh, Legion Commander, like I said. I think he's a hero that can actually get on top. But honestly, even with even killing him, they were they were able to kill him a few times, right? It wasn't like he was an immortal, you know, uh, nature's prophet. It didn't matter. Like as soon as he responds, he TP somewhere else and he has, causes a problem. But it's the same story we've seen constantly from the nature's prophet. Like you know, the early rotation to the mid, like you do. You do, you do. <laughs> the, the Ember Spirit wasn't even involved in killing this uh, this Mage Alchemist, and we saw how powerful the Mage Alchemist can be. You know, we saw him dominate in, in previous games. So uh, it just kind of felt like there was no answer for it. I could have done at least another one more patch without Nature's Prophet being back in the meta, but it feels like he's back, he's alive, he's stronger than ever, and we will see if we're gonna get any nerfs for him anytime soon, because, yeah, he's a first, first phase ban hero every single match. The two times he's gone through, the supports have dominated on him. So, yeah, if that doesn't tell us everything we need to know about him, he feels more suppressing than anybody else in the meta. More than Beastmaster, more than Gyrocaptor, more than Phantom Assassin. He is on a completely level, different level. Those are S-tier picks. He is above S-tier. I have to say, though, the entire Indonesian team, they were firing on all five cylinders. Very you know, good. They were, yeah. they were very good. They were, played together so well. And uh, here, here he comes himself, the man of the match. Yeah, here comes our winner as we see a couple of teams, including the Romanian team, making their way out of the arena. Fantastic performance, sir. We are joined by none other than our MVP for the series. Welcome, congratulations. And uh, yeah, top four after a bit of a questionable group stage. How, what do you feel happened that you got to this point? If you want to step closer. Uh, what got you to improve so much over the last couple of days? I mean, we after we lost two time, we talk a lot about our position, like the way we farm, we should be as a group. And then, yeah, draft-wise, I feel like it's pretty good. We got a good concept. And the last time against Mongol, we didn't adjust. In the third game, we should change our game. Yeah. Oh, the stairs are a are beast, are they? So you played the Bat Rider in game one. Was that something that you've been playing before, or did you see SE playing it today and you were like, hey, that's pretty good? Yeah. I mean, I have played the bat uh, since before the patch. Uh -huh. I mean, and then today we saw Army Genius using it. Uh, and I think it's pretty good for us because the NS gives us the vision. Yep. And Bat Rider can initiate freely. 
Yeah, it was super good versus super good versus the Enchantress in the lane as well. And then I think they used like a bunch of ruptures on you. Like when you were getting ruptured, were you just like, wow, I'm position five, bro, what are you doing? Yeah, it's such a good waste of the out, right? And the next question I would have is about the second phase draft. Obviously, they opted to not ban the Nature's Prophet and leave it in the pool to ban your Night Stalker. Did you know your game was pretty much yours when you got your hands on the MP? I mean, before the game starts, we talk about the draft. They might be uh, banning the uh, Night Stalker or the bet, so maybe we have the Nature's Prophet. And luckily, they banned it down, and we can ban the Primal, so there's no counter for me anymore. So we can have a free game. Yeah, absolutely stunning performance. And now top four tomorrow. You will be waiting to face the winner between Team United States and Team Mongolia. Uh, what do you think about those two teams thus far in the tournament? I mean, both team is a good team because one team they qualify to TI. Of and course. One team we play against them a lot. And even before this tournament, we scream together. So I know what they can do and they know what we can do. So it's, it's a pretty good game. So which one would you prefer to face? Maybe Team United States because they don't know your strats? I think I prefer Mongolia because you know their strats. They knock us down and I want to revenge. Oh, All right. OK, OK. The comeback Fantastic. story. Well, thank you so, so much. You are our MVP for that series. Amazing bat rider, amazing nature's prophet. Congratulations for making it to the next stage. And it was a pleasure to watch you play. Yash, one more time. Give it up for Hype. Yay! Thank you so much. Fantastic. Yeah, they were confident and uh, very interesting. They said that they were hoping to ban Bomb Breaker themselves, but because Jordan did it, they allowed the Primal Beast ban, which is obviously Primal Beast, a very good Nature's Prophet counter. They just banned it themselves, and then we saw what happened. The rest is history. They are moving on, Jeeves. And I'm going to ask you. I think the key thing here is that they were able to identify from their defeats where things went wrong, and they were able to address that. Yeah. And then we saw how potent they are now. Do you know what I mean? They, I mean, champions last year, top four right now. And with the way they're looking, depends who they're facing. But uh, I think from the lower bracket teams currently, we have Indonesia still in, United States, and Mongolia, and I would say Mongolia and Indonesia look much better than the United States have thus far. Uh, I mean, you have to be careful because we kind of thought that about Jordan, right? But now, uh, you know, the United States are going to come in tomorrow and just obliterate people. No, yeah. I don't know. I and they mean, did have a day off today. They did, sure. Maybe they're going to be resetting in a similar kind of fashion. But I think it basically is so hype right now. Like, so it's with the. So uh, hype. No, hype, hype, hype just left. He's so hyped. Well, I thought yeah. you know, they were playing with. Yeah. Yeah, okay. iteration. No, but it's 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 going to be so hype for the next couple of days. Well, the next day at least, and then obviously we have the grand finals on the third. Yep. Um, I, I can't wait though. I mean, tomorrow I think I've got the uh, all four series. I think or uh, so. It's going to be lots of work I'm for you really to do. really excited to uh, to to get to the nitty gritty of this. We're we're getting down to the bones uh, the bones of the tournament now, on uh, you know super super hype. And, He's such a lovely guy as well. Yeah, very lovely. And an amazing day of Dota 2 here in Yasha, the World Esports Championships, ladies and gentlemen. It was a pleasure to cast and be here for you. This was Jeeves. We had Black earlier. I'm Waxen. And John was here on stage for us tomorrow. And they will be back tomorrow morning or during lunchtime to bring you another set of best of threes, the winner bracket final, two lower bracket games. And we'll see who will make it all the way into the grand finals. Stay tuned for tomorrow, and have a nice evening. Yeah, we'll see you then.